Ah, uh, welcome. Welcome, my friends, to NA. Apologies for that slight interruption there uh, in our service. Sadly, Twitch simply was not able to handle the majesty of the NA Guild Wars 2 PvP scene, which I think, I think Roy has something that is not exactly entirely unexpected. Oh, yeah. But we're, we're here to correct that. Yep. Oh, wait, we're going to correct that? Like, I mean, in, in what way? Well, we're going to get, we're going to get Guild Wars 2 Esports front page every day. Correct. Actually, that is indeed accurate. We are going to do that, my friends. That's the only reason I want to get front page is just for the NA open bracket. Like, the invitational bracket, terrible, right? EU, awful. <laughs> NA open bracket, the only good bracket there is out there, my friends. And here and we are. Stuff. Yes, that is the yeah. good stuff. And here we are, ready to go. We have another fantastic evening of exciting action ahead of you. And once again, we're going to be leaping on in very, very quickly, actually. Uh, we are pretty much ready to go with our first two teams, the Outcasts and the home wreckers here on the NA Open Bracket. I believe we have 11 total teams, actually. So we pull it all together at the last second and make sure we've got a lot of exciting games for you today. Of course, it will be functioning the same as the EU Bracket of the Day before. Four. We're going to be dealing with a double elimination situation with a top eight receiving prizes. Okay, and of course, some of the very best of the crop that we see here. We'll be moving on to the invitational bracket next weekend there as well. Do you have any, uh, any comments uh, regarding that, Roy? Uh, I just realized this is not Beetle Racing, so I have to go. I'll see you later. Wait. It's, uh... Yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought we were doing a beetle racing tournament. So oh yeah, I, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah I, 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 yeah. I almost like I'm getting trolled here, right? You know, like I mean, this isn't beetle racing. It's a bit similar to it. Uh, we're going to see players running around all over the place. Maybe some warriors and thieves. So there is a little bit of that there. There's an element of the speed. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah. there is that, okay. I suppose. But yeah. Okay. I suppose I'll we stick might around. Well. I guess. Yeah, yeah. You, you can stay and, around. Uh, I mean, like there's going to be some pretty high high speed see going, what's going on. on. It. Yeah, we'll yeah. see what's going on. We absolutely will. All right. We'll see what's going on. But anyway, in that case, guys. Let us uh, embrace the NA Omegles and begin uh, the oh, yeah. tournament. Oh, yeah. Gonna just have a Let's very quick look at the uh, the bracket here, actually. So, as you can see, we have Yeah Whatever, Outcast, Homewreckers, High, Cold Blooded Killers, the Science Fair, Loser Bracket All Stars, and well, you can't actually see this full team name, but it really is an excellent one over here. The French Canadian Worms. American Squirrels, Improvised, and then finally, Frequency as the team. So a lot of interesting team names here. And to be honest, I have got no idea what to expect it to be, Frank Roy. Uh, we're going to get right into it very, very soon. And we're going to start these games. And I'm sure it is going to be very, very intense in one way uh, or the other. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and actually just get straight into the games. Then I suppose yeah, we might as well. It. Let's do it, guys. Welcome to the Hard Set Conquest League Open Bracket for the NA region. Here we go. Let's leap into this first game here. As you can see, let's <laughs> see what are we dealing with here. We see so I think we see some of the, um, I suppose you could say some of the usual suspects, uh, I would say, on uh, both of these uh, both these teams here. We have ourselves our support core guardian for the red team. Oh, oh, hang on. At, wait, hang on a minute, Roy. We actually see a Venta oh, Ventari Revers here uh, for red here. Mendes, ooh, ooh, triple Mender yeah, we're, for the... We're uh, starting off pretty <laughs> hot there. Yeah. yeah. You see... So here, one of the big things, and I, and I actually hope that we end up having one of the actual players come and cast with us a little bit later on. Um, we might, we might not. We'll see what happens. But one of the, I think, the biggest sort of distinctions between NA and EU, to me, I mean, obviously there's a lot more teams on EU, right? And so there's going to be more of a variety just because of that. But I feel like a lot of the teams on NA tend to pretty much just run what the top teams are running, right? There's not a lot of variety in, in, in terms of, like, comp and builds and stuff, so they, they will see what Team USA are running. Uh, they'll see what, you know, whatever the second seed on an eight ends up being, and they'll tend to run that. It's not always the same case. It's not always, it's not always you know, the same thing. But I think we're going to see a lot of very sort of standard stuff for the most part uh, with a lot of these a lot of these teams, which unfortunately means, yes, probably a lot of menders, uh, which, you know, you hate to see it, but that is that is how it is. Yep, 
That is indeed how it is. Now, we do, there's a bit more, I suppose, a bit more variance on the blue team here from the home wreckers. We see a Duelist Spellbreaker, which I think, you know, a lot of Warrior fans have probably been a little bit disappointed, if, you know, in, in recent times, I would say, with the state of Warrior uh, in the game, right now, particularly with the support build getting a bit of a bop recently. And both teams actually running a Burn Dragon Hunter. Well, we saw some pretty exciting things from the Burn Dragon Hunter yesterday, like almost kind of <laughs> saving the day in a lot of these clutch team fights. Let's see if Chum. Chum the Impaler. I did a bit of a duo roleplay here, like Chuba the Impaler, Chum the Impaler. Uh, and then we yeah. have the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have less men... Okay, there's only one Mender's Amulet on the blue team. So, like, I think, you know, maybe a crowd favorite here. Uh, with the Reaper... Wait, oh, an interesting Reaper build, though, with Corrosive Poison Cloud there to try and shut down some of the projectiles from the Renegade, maybe, with some weakness. And then you've got a Power Herald, Condi uh, Burn Dragon Hunter, and a Dual Spellbreaker with a Core Guard. So, both teams... Uh, gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of team fighting here, right? There's gonna be a lot of team fighting. I'm expecting to see quite a lot of um, a lot of team fighting here from the blue team. When we're gonna see the Ventaria of go for the cross, this is not very surprising. But the thing is, like, if if the warrior can actually get the node, he might be able to hold it. And oh, he doesn't quite get it. The rev actually does manage to make the cross. So uh, the red team will go into this with a slight edge here uh, as their scourge crossing over to middle after cap in their own close node. The fight will now get started on mid. Now, of course, the uh, the red team. I'm going to find themselves in an even fight very soon as their Scourge comes in. But Blue kind of had a bit of a temporary advantage there of the initial outnumber because they did not end up crossing there. Uh, so the out, the home wreckers rather, getting maybe a good start there. But actually, Spicy Bagel, the Reaper from the Blue team, already having a lot of trouble here in surviving it. 10,000 health worth of Shroud left over, but the Guardian is going to have to be very careful to keep him supported or at least go for some kind of revive. And it looks like the tankiness of Red team is maybe just a little bit too much here for the home wreckers. Yeah, they also have split up a little bit in an unfortunate place. Good singer, though, coming out from the Guardian there for Blue Team. is going to get the Reaper back up, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough to keep his team alive. Dragon Hunter going to fall. Spicy Beagle, the Reaper, probably going to fall as well. I think even a third kill, maybe the Cord Guard himself will go down. And yeah, I mean, the team fight here is is going to be a lot stronger from Red, as you said. Straight up, this is going to be a bit of a comp differential, I think. Uh, unless, unless Blue Team pulls some really crazy things out. Uh, and, and one thing to note, I think, honestly... Once the warrior lost the cap on Hen, she should have just left. Straight up. There's there's just no reason to 1v1 a Ventari Rev on a neutral or a lost node, as far as I'm concerned. You're never gonna you're never gonna win. Doesn't matter what build you're playing. And uh, and I really I really think teams need to start understanding that. We see uh, Beast picked up here now for the first time, uh, as there were several dead from blue on the map. Nice nice little bonus to the points there. And uh, red team starting off extremely strong here, so blue team really need to look to try to regroup and come back into the map. Yeah, they absolutely do. I mean, red team is really pushing aggressively, and blue's got to be careful. I, I I don't like this move I hear from Ocular Parallax. He's just kind of feeding at this point, right? Like, the blue team is already dead, so by the time he's going to arrive, it's going to be way too late. He doesn't even have a signet available here. They could maybe attempt some kind of revive. I mean, he's going to go for it, but it's not really going to work. And in fact, that is just more free food here for the red team. Like, the red team here, the outcasts... Well, I mean, it's certainly looking very, very good for them right now. It's very strong. They're actually kind of uh, funneling back onto the map, kind of watching out if there's going to be any any kind of cross, maybe, like some kind of interception could happen there. But I don't think that's going to happen. Is Blue has, uh, they they are, I mean, like, there's no other word for it, I'm afraid, right? They are feeding at this point. Like, that's what's happening here. It is an inting yeah, situation. I, I mean, this is, this is what you see in a lot of uh, ranked games and ATs, the teams that are a little less organized. They won't regroup. They won't regroup properly. And, and to be honest, you see it in higher, higher, level games as well you know you'll see teams start to get staggered they'll they'll wipe on the initial fight they'll far very fall very far behind and they they'll start panicking they'll think that they have to get immediately back out into the map uh, or they're going to lose the game and that just ends up feeding more kills and and then they just continue to be staggered it's one of the things that i think loses teams games the most not not the most but one of the most and we see that very clearly here now. Blue team have done a pretty good job of moving into the map and getting decaps across the board. Uh, the Necro Bassum, the Scourge there from red team, going for the kill on this one here very slowly on this Mender Scourge. So kind of surprised that they sent him to do that. Vitari Rev currently <laughs> to be AFK at Henge as well. So this is now a four versus three at mid. We should see blue team get some kills. But again, due to the tanky nature of a lot of these classes, the kind of bunker classes, it just takes them a while to do it. We see mine picked up, though, by the warrior who got a free node because, again, that scourge was taking such a long time in the beast. But blue team just really struggling to get kills here and actually losing quite a bit of health bars. The trap's coming out. Wait, there's going to be three players down oh, on the middle no. node in an outnumbered fight. And that is not what you want to see no matter who you are.
Yeah, that's the that's the thing about Dragon Hunter. It always has that ability to even it's got so much damage that even in an out number fight, you've got to be a little bit careful of it. And blue team just not able to sustain and actually ended up losing the three v four. So obviously well played there by the outcast to be able to actually pull that off. But I think it's safe to say that this ha this game is certainly uh, going to be very very difficult for the uh, for the home wreckers to actually win it with it pretty almost like a full wipe here at this point. Like Chuba the Impaler comes in, but directly into the Renegade and the Core God. This actually may be like essentially a complete clean up of the blue team sending them all back to spawn at the same time the scourge finally was able to kill the beast after you know like a, a you know a, a long period of time will now be able to push back into the fight uh, and get back over there the blue team gonna go in there and try and take out the uh, ventire of 1v3 but the ventire is actually still on full health and the red team is able to arrive oh actually, oh, actually that, that, oh wow yeah. that was a lot of damage actually, actually there. i got a revno taking a lot of damage there uh from the home wreckers uh right off the bat there but yeah this is this is pretty much going to be game over here uh the warrior once again going to go for a cross and we'll be able to get at least a decap here i think red team may be zerging a little bit too hard here but i guess it's better safe than throw when it comes to potentially throwing the game and throwing the team fights over here, particularly when you're dealing with respawns. But yeah, Spicy Bagel gonna get cleaned up here as well. But it looks at like that. Chum the Impound trying to sell Fresh, but gets stomped out there by Revno. Ocular Parallax desperately trying to support the team. Goes for the Signet. Uh, does get it, but I mean, what good will that do, Spicy Bagel? How long can Spicy Bagel live in this situation? I don't think it's gonna be much longer, unfortunately. Spicy Bagel is the target right now for the red team. The Renegade Arrows, the seven shot is flying. And the stability road is down there, leading to the stomp and leading to the kill. Spicy Bagel eliminated. And with the death of Spicy Bagel, Roy, I believe the hopes of the home wreckers have also been killed. Yeah. Well, yeah. And and I mean, I said this at the beginning. It, it, this is this is a comp differential straight up. I mean, obviously, red team could be a lot better than blue team. It, I think it would, you know, wouldn't necessarily be wrong to say that. But... Uh, yeah, this is straight up comp differential. Uh, you know, I mean, Red Team is running a very standard comp. There's not really anything too crazy there. Again, the burn DH is probably the thing that kind of is is different the most from from these these builds. But honestly, I mean, we saw plenty of burn DHs yesterday on EU. I, I don't think it's I think it's still a very viable build for a lot of these games. But Blue Team are just they're trying a lot of different stuff, and obviously credit to them. You know, it's nice to see some different things. But you just you cannot out team fight a power renegade. A Ventar, or excuse me, a, a Mender Scourge, a Mender's Core Guard, and a Burn DH. Uh, especially not with a Berserker Spellbreaker. Warrior is just way too uh, unimpressive these days in PvP. I would say is, is a good word for it. Uh, it can be, it can be a bit of, a, it can be a passable side noter, but you're never going to be able to really like get in there in the team fights in the same way that you used to be able to. And that's going to be the end of that. Outcast already taking the lead there. With the ones there, and I need to fix my camera settings because my camera settings are being weird, and I need to make it not do oh. that. Yes, it is not good. And actually, wait, what? What, what, what is this? Okay, what the hell is going on here? I don't know why it's doing that. I have free camera enabled, but the free camera is not enabled. <laughs> <laughs> what is this game doing to me? What is going on here, my friend? Oh, it's you know, it's your alt account. Maybe you know, maybe some settings are weird. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd really like to see Blue Team attempt to change up some comp stuff there. I mean, again, I Warrior, I mean, obviously he was side-noting, you know, for pretty much that entire game. So, he, you know, he wasn't as relevant to the team fight as the Reaper there. Uh, obviously, the Burn DH, you know, is going to be matching there. But they just they, they just don't have the same impact uh, in team fighting that I think the Red Team will. Uh, and on top of that, they're certainly going to lose side nodes. Ventario Rev will always win side nodes, uh, if, especially if you're going to rotate into it. And they did a couple times. Although, I, I really do want to say, I think the Warrior going far off respawn, you know, kind of sounds like a bit of a meme. But uh, definitely, overall, I think that was what gave Blue Team some points. I mean, I think that was probably the right call at that point. Well, I, I mean, yeah, like, that's the kind of thing that you need, you kind of need to do, right? Like, particularly versus a team like the red team, like, that what they want to do, they want to be nice and blobby, right? They want to be on you the entire time, just fighting, having the Scourge in the fights, having the Guardian in the fights. Like, the way that, you know, you could potentially defeat them from the perspective of the home wreckers here is you've got to split them up. you got to, you know, you got to mix it up a little bit with the rotations and try... Uh, and you know, just to just shut down this like epic team fight capability from the outcast. But that it, it's going to be difficult either way uh, for sure. We may be seeing a relog here, saying as the blue player has not immediately um, rejoined. So maybe they're going to try and switch this up here a little bit. Yeah, 
And, I mean, that's good. You know, you like to see it, obviously. Uh, but they're going to, I think, also just going to have to try and, and, I mean, so Temple, of course, you know, we said this many times yesterday, uh, is going to be a much different map than Forest. It's going to be a map that, obviously, team fights are still probably going to happen, but if you do want to try and just out-rotate a team fight, you have the opportunity, or at least more opportunity to do so on this map. So I think what we're going to do is, uh, hopefully, Hopefully what we're going to see here is blue team just try and play around that a little bit better. Again, maybe maybe they end up trying to change comp. We're still waiting for Spicy Bagel to join. I uh, am not sure if he's going to be staying on that Reaper or not. But uh, apart from that, you know, I think a, a game plan change could be good instead of trying to match the team fight consistently and losing. But we'll see what happens. He's looking at the Scourge build. Oh, yeah, he actually was. Okay, there you go. Yep. Uh... <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not really a difficult build to play if it's your first time ever playing it. Uh, and wow, they're going right into it. Yeah. Wait a minute. And hold on. And the Reaper or the Scourge on the red team is now Reaper. They've swapped. Whoa. Okay. I mean, wait. I mean, let's see if this works out. Actually, wait. The the Guardian um is uh, you know the wait. No matter. Actually, the Guardian is not playing. He he was playing something a little bit weird, but now. Oh wait. Actually, no. No. It's it's actually. actually is wait. Is it you? I'm not sure. The, the, I saw the the Guardian like a uh, virtue effect on someone else that wasn't the Guardian. But never mind. That's not important hmm. whatsoever. That is not important in any way. Let's see how this is going. We're actually going to see a cross here from the red team. They're pushing the Reaper and the Ventari Rev into the Warrior. Like I guess maybe they're worried about the Warrior getting the node before they arrive. And they go, they are going to make it there before. Anyway, and now we're going to have this like subtly unusual setup here. Uh, with the Renegade coming in there as well. This Warrior needs to be very, very careful about that. Uh, blue team, of course, going to have to push into mid there a little bit more directly there. And they're actually looking to see if they can find a killer there. Now with the addition uh, of the Glorious Scourge. Let's see if blue can uh, make this work a little bit better they actually the scourge comes back to support the warrior in fact a little bit of course that is kind of a bit of a side effect of having the mender amulet you can always be a little bit of a helper to your team there and restain them like keep them refreshed in these fights but actually it's not gonna have the reaper damage combined with the reggae is too much and the lich form comes up spicy bagel not gonna be quite enough it does get the corrosive poison cloud down for the lich but it's gonna be a difficult holder in this 1v2 now he oh, it gets the transfuse but i don't think that's revival at this stage and the reaper damage is gonna come through and spicy bagel maybe about to fall and red team already having a very very strong hold over this game almost immediately just about a minute and a little bit into it yep obviously gonna be a little bit of a better game than we saw in on the forest you know right off the bat they were able to get some points on the board first but again Losing this team fight immediately, and you know something to note: this Ventari Rev getting a little bit more involved in team fights than I think you know we saw Ventari Revs doing uh, yesterday on EU. Obviously, though, again, I think I think that might just be probably because Red Team just has so much more map control than I think some of those EU teams had yesterday. But overall, you know, Blue Team just have to try something different. And I mean, I, you know, obviously we see them trying to change something uh, in terms of uh, you know the comp a little bit. We got the Scourge now instead of the Reaper, but. Again, they're doing the exact same thing they did last game, where they're just going straight into the team fight, and they're just losing it, straight up. Uh, and partially that's, you know, maybe just because red team has a stronger team fight, uh, they're just better at it, maybe. Uh, and obviously the Reaper swap is going to be a very aggressive strategy in the, that they feel they can employ here. But uh, either way, I think that blue team just have to really try and figure out a different game plan. Uh, obviously, it's still several moments before we see the first stillness buff come up, which will impact the map about a minute well, away. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, Roy, you know, they do have to figure out a different game plan. You're absolutely right, but look, they've only got about a minute to do it before this game is going to completely spiral out of control. If, uh, you know, if you do end up finding yourself getting stillness buffed while you have a triple cap, that is six points per tick, and that will put a stop to any hopes of recovery in a game when you get that far behind that early on. A decap did come through here from uh, Mit Mitswalker here uh, into the Reaper, but the Reaper's not going out. In fact, actually, the Rev is just going to die. Well, he gets his Glint Hill just barely, but the Reaper plays around it effectively, and this is actually looking like a very, very dead held right now, particularly now with the Guardian coming in to guarantee that the Reaper doesn't die. Guardian's going to move away to mid instead to try and support the Ventara, who's in a 1v2 versus a support guard. And, of course, Spicy Bagel. So, actually, you know, the Ventara probably doesn't need any help versus that. Actually, there's not a lot of damage here from the blue team. And, yeah, just, like, Red just cleaning everything up there. Chum the Impaler killed by the Dragon Hunter. Reaper gets rid of the Revenant. Revenant's going to try and maybe get something done on mid. But, I mean, look at this. Like, Red team, they're everywhere. They're already here. Renegade, uh, the Guardian, and, of course, the, uh, the, the Reaper are ready to hold on here. And, well, if they get this top buff, if they get the Stillness, 
and the game is pretty much going to end in you know in a pretty you know pretty double quick time fashion. And looks like it will not be contested even actually. Uh, the Renegade's going to go for it. OC Thunder God captures the stillness. Tube of the Impaler. Yeah. Yeah, Tube, <laughs> Tube of the Impaler's trying, man. He went far on respawn, but the DH just waited, like predicting the rotation, like the mind games, the meta game there. Kills him instantly, and then, <laughs> then moves back over to mid. So a bit of an interesting uh, situation there. Unfortunate there for the poor old warrior. But that's okay. That is okay for now because, well, maybe a little bit of a mismatch here to start off here. Looks like red team clearly having the upper hand in a lot of these fights and will be securing their victory with a pretty uh, pretty straightforward clean 2-0 here on Temple of Sons. Oh, the Dragon Hunter. Oh, my goodness, right? That is pretty disgusting. The <laughs> Dragon Hunter just yeah. wipes everyone out. And, you know, you do, you do hate to see games like this, but unfortunately that is the reality of, of Guild Wars 2 PvP and, well, any competitive match, really. You know, some teams are just stronger than others and you know we can see that clearly here with the uh, the red team they they came in a little bit more prepared uh you know again i think they had the better comp i think they had the better strategy although you know i'm really i'm really wondering if this reaper is something that they're actually trying because they think it's it could be a, a, an option instead of the scourge or if they're just trying it because they think that this game is not really difficult or not competitive enough that they need to play the absolute most tried thing which obviously is fair if that is the case uh, but yes, I mean, unfortunately, it does not look like Blue Team is going to be putting up much of a uh, fight here. And it is most likely going to be a 2 -0. But of course, Blue Team have a chance to come back up. They're obviously going to be going down to the lower bracket. And hopefully they will, you know, think about what went wrong, discuss, and uh, come back a little bit stronger. Indeed. And, of course, they, you know, there's a higher probability of a slightly more competitive match uh, there. Anyway, like, this is, this is something that I do expect to see a little bit of uh, on NA. Like, on EU, we were blessed with a cornucopia of teams, Roy. Uh, on NA, we did struggle a little bit more. Uh, so I think it's a little, it, you know, to a certain extent, it's inevitable that you will have, uh, like, a, a few weird matches like this. But that's not to say that we won't have some very, very good ones as well. For example, Red Team. Looking like they are going to be putting up a big fight and putting on a big show during this tour. In fact, uh, but yeah, I mean, blue team there. Just, I mean, they're going to go for maybe one last push here, but they don't even really have time for that, to be frank. Spicy Bagel, once again, <laughs> they're going to go for the mid push here. But the red team, they have simply gone AFK. They are not playing the game. They know they have won. They know they have achieved victory. And that is going to be it. The outcasts with the clean 2-0. Absolutely. And uh, apparently my mic is having some issues. Yes. Is what I'm being told. This it's may popping. be the case. There's a few little, little pops there. A little bit of a popping situation. And what do we see here? And, uh, you know, we see a lot of the classes that, you know, you would you might see in a 3v3 or something like that. Except, of course, for the Thief. But so the red team running the classic, the Core Guardian, the Mender Scourge, I would imagine here. Yep, and then of course the Renegade here from Kota. Then they bring they bring in a Hollow Smith there, and there was a Thief. Now the Thief may be relogging, in fact, um, to something perhaps a little bit more, maybe a bit more team fight oriented uh, there as well. Yeah, I think they may have been trying to, you know, if they wanted to see if Blue Team was going to run a Thief, and if they're not, they're probably not going to match Thief. They're more interested in maybe matching side nodes and team fight. And it does look like Edison is going Ranger, according to his name, Edison Ranger. Uh, ah, oh, so soul beast. Yes, it is going to be a soul Oh, it's beast. full one now shot. Did... Oh, you know, we saw this so many times yesterday, uh, and it just didn't really ever seem to work out. I, I, you know, we talked to to Frey about this a little bit, and he is someone who plays, you know, Ranger a decent amount. Uh, and you know, we we he was saying that he thinks the the side node build is 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 pretty good. It's not the best he was saying, but he thinks it's pretty decent. And the one shot Ranger build just it's not very. I mean, it's like every single glass cannon build. Except it's maybe one of the worst ones. You know, I think I think probably Burn DH, Traver DH is kind of, you could consider it kind of a glass cannon build. It doesn't have any stun breaks, or, you know, it might have one, but it's not really hard to kill as long as, you know, you can lock it down. Uh, but it has, you know, it deals tons of damage, especially in team fights. you know, stacking up those burns so immensely. But, you know, Solby's just, it was not effective yesterday, so I'm really interested to see if Edison, you know, can pilot it. Uh, now, interestingly enough, wh uh, who I, you know, one of the rangers that I consider currently and, and for a really long time one of the best ranger players in the game, uh, Urantian, he is playing today. I believe he's on um, the Yeah Whatever team. He might be on, on for, uh, the Science Fair. I can't remember which one it is, but he is going to be playing today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you know what he decides to bring for ranger, assuming he is playing it. I don't know if he would be playing anything else. 
But yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm very wary about this build. Uh, Edison's going for a slightly different variant. He's going for the Axe Warhorn instead of going for Greatsword um, as his secondary, which is an interesting choice. But we'll have to see what happens with this. Uh, a little bit of a, of a different comp here with the Hollow Smith and the, and the Soul Beast. Indeed. So, you know, those are, th those are a few cards. We, actually, we saw very few Hollows yesterday, actually, I believe. Right? One or two, I think. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot. We're going to see the Stealth Blasting coming out, although the Guardian's not going to make it. So it is going to be three DPS players going for the Stealth Blasting with that smoke skill early on. It's going to be pretty similar splits. Hollowsmith going to be taking the home node there on the dock for Red Team. It will be the uh, Necromancer taking, the Core Necromancer that is, taking the Bazaar. Already the Condi uh, Herald is going to be taking quite a bit of pressure here over the middle node. He's going to just kite back a little bit, but that will give Red Team an advantage onto the node. However, he's going to be pushing back in. Glint Hill available, knocking Edison back. Edison is going to be able to avoid that, though. Glint Hill now going to be burned by the Herald. So this might be a target here for the rest of Red Team. He is a little bit isolated from his team as well. Damage coming out onto him. He's going to get into Sword 3, but he's deleted! And he's going to be taken out quickly. Uh, spectate bugs. So it is actually a power herald, excuse me, not a condi herald. But nonetheless, that's going to be the kill. Transfusion is good, but the stomp from Kodo, not going to be good. It's going to be interrupted, actually, so they will get the hard res. A lot of damage coming out on top of it. Edison, though, getting peeled out in the back line. It's going to be the power herald again going on to him. Edison might go into downstate. He's going to be pretty low. Heal's coming out for him, so he is going to be okay for now. But pressure's still going to be coming back in from blue team. Red, do you need to be careful that they don't just throw this fight away that they already had. Glint Heal going to be used a second time in this fight. Now Edison getting under pressure again. He's probably going to go to an out of here. That's going to be a kill now for blue team. Is the cleave going to be good? Butch coming out now from the necro on the side of blue. The cleave looks like it might be good for now. Staff 5 on top of the downstate as well. And that's going to be a kill. First one for blue. I just love this, Roy. It's an all-out 5v5 and so back and forth as well. I just, that was such a brilliant revive by the blue team. The stomp was just denied by the transfusion and all of them were pressing F at the same time. That was really, really cool to see there. What an awesome, we've got to get some deathmatch going on here. When are we having the 5v5, to, uh, 5v5 tournament, like the full-on 5v5 unranked arena? Koto now under so much pressure there. The blue team trying to go for it. Great peeling out though here from the red team and they're actually handling this deficit quite well and i also really like the rotation from the horse with like that fight is lost immediately rotate out and try and pressure that and as a result of that they're kind of getting away with this and and maybe blue team uh kind of forgetting about the nodes here maybe a little bit too much but they but they do get the kill though to be fair actually however the signal i think is much more likely to happen this time yeah there we go, and like the momentum of blue team is now kind of halted, particularly as the Necromancer of Charbara is going to be 1v2 with the Ranger and the Hollow, and that's going to be a difficult thing to hold, considering that the rest of the entire team is on the other side of the map. Not an easy affair for that minion, minion monster, of course, Necromancer Holder. That is going to be the kill confirmed by the red team there as well. So I think our red team making the best of a slightly unfortunate uh, situation there. It's not there, losing that initial team fight. And, you know, the big the big takeaway from that, obviously, you know, a very drawn out, you know, kind of exciting little bit of back and forth fight there in the beginning of that. But the, the thing is that they didn't really get anything from that kill on the Ranger. We saw the Hollowsmith as soon as uh, Edison was confirmed to killed. You know, he actually started pushing far. He brought some pressure away from the rest of the fight. And, you know, Blue Team was unable to really find a follow-up kill quickly and effectively. And so they, they didn't really get any value from that kill. And that's honestly really important and a, and a credit there to Red Team. However, we are going to see side nodes picked up for Red Team now as the first bell is going to be picked up. It's going to be contested there between the two core guardians. Blue Team going to be able to pick up middle node. And we're going to see which team is going to be able to get an advantage around the bell. Edison at the moment getting pressured up pretty hard. It's going to force his core guardian to come out off of the bell and start to heal him up. It's going to be some cooldowns burned now as this fight may begin. Blue team outnumbered, though, as they're going for decaps and, and map pressure around it. Nambia going to get absolutely deleted too far away from Core Guardian. Signet is available and is going to happen the last second there. Very nice Signet going to be casted by the Core Guardian. Edison now again going to be under pressure. Let's see, he is going to be brought down. Is there Signet available for him? No. It's going to come up in a second. Can he get it out? The cleave going to be there, but the knock's not going to be good enough, and the Signet will be better, so Edison gets right back up. And this fight around Bell is still brewing for both of these teams. Neither one really had an advantage as of yet. Both Signet's going to be used, though, so the next downstate most likely will be taken out. RF going to be burned by No Heal for you. Core Guardian inside of Red. Code at the moment going to be a little bit under pressure away from his core guardian. He needs to be careful he doesn't overextend. But again, neither team really getting an edge on this bell. Lich coming up from Charbra. 
and then apply quite a bit of pressure onto the node if they can connect it. And this Guardian now getting CC it out. He doesn't have any cooldowns left, so he needs to be careful. Again, Kodo kind of getting pressure, but it's going to be the Scourge. Going to be the one going downstate, most likely on top of this node. No, he'll be also Guardian. probably going to drop on top of it. That's going to be two kills picked up for Blue, just like that. Kodo really low off the side as well, so the rest of Red Team cannot continue to pressure this, and Blue Team <laughs> take another fight. I knew that. They is actually world ver This is GVG. This isn't PvP, dude, okay? They are just moving on as a giant blob running around and stomping everything. I don't believe this. This is such a ridiculously insane game. I haven't seen anything like this the entire tournament. Red team do rotate out quite nicely, but that's not going to be good enough as the power up comes in and obliterates the ranger. And they're looking for another kill to Kota there as well. They might be able to find it. That's almost like a full wipe there for the boot and they're going to be able to bleed those two kills out. They get the bell. They get the middle node there with Charbro, who's going to be shoving away no heal for you. The Guardian now actually very exposed off respawn. Red team incredibly staggered right now. The cold-blooded killers, while well, they're living up to their name here, they're doing a lot of killing in this game. I mean, we're five minutes in, there's only 141 points. That's because they have been completely ignoring the objectives, and they've only been caring about killing the other team this entire time. And honestly, I love to see it. Yeah, and, and you know, I think the the biggest difference between that fight and the first one that we saw, Blue Team won both of them technically, but they weren't able to find, again, like I said, a second kill after that after the initial one onto Edison in the beginning. And so Red Team was able to spread across the map and get map pressure and end up getting more nodes and, you know, moving ahead of Blue Team. But this time, they lost both their Scourge as well as their Core Guardian. Kodo as well was going to be really pressured out. They were all kind of forced to go into one side. They, they couldn't really get anywhere. And, you know, that's just a much more effective fight and a much, you know, much more decisive fight as well uh, there for the Cold-Blooded Killers. Second Bell will be coming up now as well. Charbro already going to be pretty low, though, so doesn't mean to be careful. We're going to see if Red Team are going to be able to find a fight for the first time this game. However, they are very split across the map so far. Yeah, Charbra under some serious pressure. Need to see the Core Guardian come in there. He's trapped on middle, actually, right now. Of course, is matching the enemy Core Guardian, but ah, that does lead to the left. But the Scourge actually finds the revive really nice right there, but the pressure is still good. But in fact, the Hollows with the blue team now in trouble there. There's the kill. The signal's going to come through. Is there an interrupt? There is not. Oh, but actually, the interrupt, it, it, there's no interrupt, but there is a kill onto the Guardian, and that is going to be massive for this Bell fight here, actually. That's going to be amazing for the Cold-Blooded Killers as they're going to make their way over there. And without the support, Port here uh, for the team high. How are they possibly going to win this fight? They actually do return the video. Like Chabra gets caught before uh, they're able to make it over towards the bell, but still losing the Scourge now as well. And the Core Garden just now barely coming off respawn. This should be a very solid victory here for the Cold Blooded Killers. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely looking pretty solid right now. Red team just struggling a lot in these team fights. And to be honest with you, you know, I think, I think part of it is going to be. You know, I don't want to just continuously say comp. I think Blue Team are playing a little bit better. You can see that they're, they're a little bit smarter about picking their, their targets. But, I mean, Edison is, has not been a very hard kill for them. And again, I really don't see the effectiveness of this, you know, one-shot Soul Beast. I think it's a very gimmicky build. And I think if, you know, Blue Team or whoever you're fighting against are aware of it, it's going to be exploited. And that's exactly what they're doing. We do see Kodo going to downstate, but Nemia going to be pretty low. Kodo is starting to get hard res by the Guardian. Unfortunately, though, Soul Beast not going to be able to find a kill. Not going to be able to find that res, and Edison now going to be in danger himself of going down. Not sure if there's going to be a signet available. There will not be. Scourge coming in there trying to get the transfusion res, but I think this is just going to continue to feed the blue team's bloodlust. And red team, you know, they, they've they got to change something up here. They've really got to figure something out, and I'll be honest, I actually would have preferred Edison staying on the Thief. I think he would have had more impact on the map at this point than on this Soul Beast, where he's essentially just a free kill for blue team. Yeah, it certainly is not really working out there. Like, particularly the way these, these fights have been going, right? They've been unbelievably team fight centric, and that's not really, really where you want a Ranger, right? Like, the Ranger is not going to be able to contribute. Oh, nice, actually, Cheeky Res there. They were bleeding out the Scourge there. Uh, so, in fact, we do see the immediate revival there from the Guardians that comes in with the Signet. It does burn the Signet, but can maybe stabilize the game a bit. There's a bell in 30 seconds, Roy. And if we see another team fight going in the direction of the blue team, then this game is pretty much entirely over. Yeah, I mean, about 400 points, double cap as well. Red team, you know, I'm actually kind of surprised they have as many points on the board as they do because they really haven't won any fights, and I really haven't seen them significantly hold nodes. I mean, obviously they gained a decent amount of points in the beginning of the game after that first fight, but, you know, that really just speaks to their more, I think, ability to be able to rotate uh, a little bit better than blue team, or at least in the beginning of the game they were. But again, just it really shows that they're just not winning fights. And, you know, on a map like Capricorn, where there is that map objective that kind of forces you to either contest or, or win those fights, you know, it is going to be a little harder for you to do that. 
uh, Koto calling GG. I guess yep. uh, I'm not sure if that's confirmed. Well, I mean, it, it, sure it, is, but it'll be confirmed it very is, soon, Roy. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be confirmed very, very soon as soon as this bell gets cut, as soon as this bell gets captured here. So get ready for that. Yeah, Edison, yeah, Edison's essentially GGing it by not contesting it, and that's going to be sending up points, and that is yeah. going to be it. Cold-blooded killers. I mean, what a game. That was such a great yeah. game to us. That was so entertaining to watch. An absolute bloodbath here on the, uh, the range of the Capricorn. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm honestly a little bit surprised because... I, you know, I thought coming into this, certainly red team, maybe not going to be 100% better than blue team, but certainly not going to be that one-sided. And again, I, I'm, I'm really looking to see if Edison's going to be able to change up what he's playing. Uh, you know, if they're also going to change up maybe, uh, of course, Legacy is not going to necessarily be a map that they can do this, but potentially try and out-rotate blue team. Uh, but I mean, uh, Legacy is honestly, I think, exactly what blue team want to see here. You know, we saw them win every single fight and they only actually got better as the game went on. The first fight, they got one kill. The second fight, they got two kills. And then they just started farming basically the rest of the game. And Legacy is the absolute perfect map to do that on. So if they, you know, if the game goes the same way, then uh, this is not going to be looking good for Red Team. And Blue Team are going to have a very comfortable time here. But we don't see Edison on the Ranger yet. And, you know, I do think getting Thief on this map could provide some value as long as Red Team are, you know, they, they, they take advantage of that, especially because Blue Team don't have a uh, thief so hopefully hopefully we see something uh, a little bit of a change here and something that will be significant enough edison going vegan now and it is going to be that thief so let's see if they try and switch this up a little bit here because well i mean they could, I, in fact they definitely are saying code go for as you say for that con the herald there it's going to be the elixir gun laser disc holosmith then there with the thief so i imagine we're going to see more of a stalling place i'll probably more of a three node style here uh from team high right now they're going to be trolling uh probably like trying to stall out mid as much as they possibly can with the scourge and the guardian and they're going to try and rotate Probably the thief between the uh, the revenant and the hollow. So the hollow is going to be one v one stuff. So is the rev, and they're going to move the thief around and kill stuff, and then they'll take that numbers advantage and actually try and push the uh, and push the fights in their favor on that basis. But it'll be the same old plan. And this is going to be it's going to be a scalpel versus a sledgehammer, is what this is, right? You know, it's going to be can uh, red team finesse their way around this team fight uh, from the cold blooded killers. It's a scary thing. It really, really is. You know, it is going to get scary. I, I, absolutely. I think, I think, you know, we should maybe see red team try and do that. But at the same time, I would also be interested to see how their team fight goes now that red team, excuse me, blue team don't have that soul beast to just focus because every single fight started off with Edison dying and started off with no heal for you burning his signet on Edison, more or less. And that obviously put them behind. Now, Edison shouldn't really be involved in the team fights as much. If he is, then he might just go in to try and, and one shot and burst down you know, a specific target, maybe the Power Herald, uh, maybe the Renegade, maybe even the Guardian. And, you know, if they can do that, then that will be pretty good. But, you know, if that's not the case, and if they are 4v4 and or 3v3, then I'll be interested to see if, you know, if they have any sort of, you know, better time in these team fights without Edison kind of, you know, forcing them to lose, use a lot of cooldowns on that Soul Beast, on that easy target for Blue Team. But let's see what happens. Again, we are going to see the Stealth Blast. Smoke going to be provided there by Edison as both groups start to group up around mid. However, red teams seem to be going for a little bit more of a split here. Edison as well as the Hallsmith looking to maybe go towards Waterfall, but they're going to be hanging around mid nonetheless to make sure that their team doesn't get taken out there immediately as it's Kodo and the Core Guardian, two versus three on middle nodes. Side nodes going to each team. Yeah, very wisely, like the blue team, they kind of saw this play coming from red and they actually defended it. They had the renegade actually kind of defend the push and that denied the Hollismith and Thief from getting on there. Now they're just going to straight up start. This is what the blue team are probably looking for. Edison immediately goes for decal and that is going to force the renegade to leave here, I believe, or at least the necromancer. Yeah, it's going to be the renegade going there to intercept and then the necromancer will probably take over that 1v1. But this does actually give the red team a slight advantage on mid. They're going to have an outnumber there while the you players are kind of swapping out there. Let's see if they can make some work. They've got a little bit of time to see if they can get some pressure onto some of these blue team players here can they make that work here yeah blue not maybe connecting quite as well as they want uh so far here and red as you know you know they have managed to actually secure them a slight Ooh. advantage Ready in the game go down yeah most likely yeah and emdrix is not really oh he does get interrupted there so the signal not going to land the first time they're going for the hard res on top of it it's not going to be good though and this is the first time we've seen red team take a team fight and I mean, a huge part of that was, as you pointed out, Edison bringing some players away to Waterfall. They they overcommitted trying to stop that decap. He went right back into the team fight, got some pressure onto the Renegade, and they got a kill. 
Yeah, that just that outmaneuverability, just finding those favorable fights, abusing the thief to draw players out of position and get the aggression on these key moves is really working out right now for Team High. Dusk Dawn actually in a little bit of trouble here as well on the Scourge and maybe about to fall. Is there a signal? There is still a signal because it was interrupted last time. Of course, that's another advantage of having that thief. Looks like this one will land, but I think they're just going to keep piling on the pressure once again onto the Scourge. The gun in very low on corner is going to have to maybe pop Renew to go in again, but actually, no mind. The Scourge is able to recover his health quite nicely and recently. So nice hold there by the blue team to kind of stem the bleeding here, at least for the time being. Oh, and actually the Scourge uh, of the red team now ending up falling there to the Cogni Rev and the Renegade there, but a Signet is mirrored there by the Core Guardian there from the red team. No heal for you. Gets that, and in fact, looking that they're going to turn this fight that they get the kill on Demia there as well. The Renegade going to have to think about disengaging here, I think. Blue team trying to rotate in time, but the Stomp comes out before they are able to make it in there, and Alfie is going to have to back off to the Scourge and the Renegade. I mean, this is this is the impact of having a thief on the map, straight up. This is, you know, and honestly, I, I should also highlight that was a very nice rotation from the core guardian on the side of red. He, you know, he recognized the scourge needed help. Currently in a one versus two, made the rotation over, got the signet as soon as the scourge went down. Edison was right there to follow up, get that kill onto Nemia, and basically make this team fight at least even for them for now. Uh, but really, what we should see from blue team is they they should understand at this point the thief is the one that's winning the game here for red team. They need to have one of the revenants on top of it. Make make the uh, the power herald or the renegade match it, so it's just not getting these free rotations, you know, for absolutely nothing. As again, we see Edison come back in after he got some pressure on the mid. Again, the scourge going to be very low here, maybe even possibly going down. No heals really available, but Edison after plussing this should be able to provide enough pressure onto the blue team DPS players to keep that Scourge alive and healthy in this fight. However, they're taking quite a while outnumbering this four versus three. They need to get a kill and they need to do it quickly. Otherwise, they will lose the rest of the map because of this four versus three advantage they have. Yeah, the Scourge is barely able to hang on uh, right there. And now that like, the full-on fight is commencing, and you, you immediately see that, right? Like, you know, the like, Blue Team's going to commit into the fight, but immediately the Thief just is going to draw more players away. He's going to push for that decap again. And this just leaves this core Necromons in such an awkward spot right now. Blue Team actually yep. does rotate quite well here. Actually, they get their Renegade over there to mid, but they're still going to lose that cap. And then again, the Necro's going to be forced to recap this, and the Thief immediately leaves. And now this Renegade is going to find himself 1v2 versus both Koto and... And uh, Edison here as well. And that is a bit of a scary situation. The Necromancer will be able to get in time. But will it be actually be enough here? In fact, if this Renegade goes down, that could be very, very scary right now. The fight is stalled. Meanwhile, on the quarry, red team a little bit ahead. Oh, looks like the, the Renegade here of Alfie is actually kiting very well and is able to escape there to the Necromancer. So no luck here for the red team in terms of finding that kill. So they've just got to keep this game stable right now. Well, oh, actually, we, we have a DC on red team. We are down a play. The Holosmith is gone. Um, actually, uh, I don't read. Really, I think the Necromancer is actually respecting that, which is which is nice. Yeah, he's honoring. Uh, yeah. Yep, that is good. So hopefully we can get that player to actually come back uh, ASAP. I believe we're actually past the time for a restart. Um, oh, yes. that actually, yeah, so, I mean, we just have to kind of continue there and hope the uh, the players are able to reconnect. Obviously, you know, big respect there to the Scourge of the Blue Team for actually respecting the uh, 4v4 now. Uh, but hopefully they will be able to actually get back uh, into the mix there as well. I mean, Red Team, to be fair, they are winning, uh, nevertheless, actually, particularly with the Scourge dropping out. Uh, and they're looking for another kill here onto Charbro with a Thief and the Renegade. However, Renegade of the Blue Team actually comes in there as well and massively pressures the Red Team and actually gets the kill onto Koto. So, very... Very nice little spike there from the blue team. They're looking to get back in. It's, of course, just 60 points in this. It's still a very, very close game with everything to play for. Very much so. Yeah, and obviously unfortunate to have the DC, but very nice from one of the blue team players to honor it. As people said, it is just too late into the game to restart at this point. Already about five minutes into the game when that DC occurred. So we're going to hope that the Hollowsmith comes back, but at the moment it's going to be four versus four on the map. Water wall going to be going the way. But Edison getting so much pressure, actually doing really nicely into this core Minion Mancer Necro. That's going to be his shroud keeping him alive for now. But as soon as he drops that, Edison will be looking to try to find the kill. Unless someone can rotate back in and keep his Necromancer alive. At the moment, though, it doesn't look like that might be the case. And I think we're going to see a dead Necro here for Edison. He's going to go for it. Good evasion here. And actually, that thief just not quite having the muscle to do it. The shroud's going to come back off in one second. He's got to get this kill now. Oh, no. And yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm a pretty of a smart move, though, by just not to push his luck there. I think maybe he was aware of the renegade coming in. It would have been very risky to go for that kill. So he might go for it again and try his luck. But this is going to be a very difficult thing to actually find this kill with shroud available right now. Like 14,000 shroud available. Oh, oh, the necrochy doesn't manage to press shroud time. Is there a stomp available for Edison? Yes, there is. Wow. 
Oh, the oh, Necromons wow. are not expecting that. Angie gets taken out there with a cheeky stomp from the Thief. You love to see it. Uh, the Guardian coming in to support the Thief, actually, to help uh, pressure and hopefully kill that Renegade there. But uh, some slightly weird things happening in this game. No sign of the Horsemith uh, just yet. But of course, when things get to a 4v4, like it gets a bit weird when you've only got you know one less player to rotate around these three points. And Blue Team now are actually taking the lead here. They have those side nerves there. Of course, got the kill on the corner. Necromancer, not quite enough to actually liberate this point to get it neutral going in the favor of the red team here. Yep, and I think I think this is blue team, you know, I mean, part of it is obviously, you know, red team maybe being shaken up a little bit by, you know, the, the, the DC that they had there, but I think it also is blue team just deciding to not try and, and go across all three nodes. They, you know, they have the thief in, or the red team has the thief, excuse me, and, and you know, they, they, Trying really hard, I think, to just avoid getting decapped by. You know, we saw Edison getting a lot of value when he was able to just freely roam across the map, get a decap on either side, potentially go look for a plus one and get a quick kill there. But we haven't really seen him able to do that. Obviously, he had a nice 1v1, 1vx almost, you know, and get that kill onto the Necro, but there just wasn't really any follow up from it, and his team didn't really get any value elsewhere on the map. So we're going to have to see if Red Team are going to be able to answer, but Blue Team at the moment doing a nice job of just really focusing on holding down side nodes. Uh, and not giving this thief as much value as he was getting early on. But Edison will find a way to do it nonetheless. I'm going to put some pressure onto the quarry. But I mean, again, he, he's going for 1v1s a lot instead of trying to outnumber or go for a plus until we see Kodo rotating in here. Yeah, I think it, I think it's a little more difficult to get value out of a thief in a 4v4 rather than the 5v5. There's going to be a lot less opportunities for him to outnumber in the same way, particularly seeing as the other two members of the team that aren't the Revenant uh, of Koto are going to be the Guardian and the Scourge. Which you're not, I mean, you know, they're going to be going to be doing their own thing for most of the game. So he does. I feel like he doesn't have as many options to actually get much done here. And this is a bit of a really rough spot here for the red team. They're going to soon be a little bit behind in this game. There should be a free decap there for Edison actually because the Necromancer is going to be a little bit locked down. So Chabra not going to be able to match that, I don't think, in time. So that should, at the very least, be a decap. Yeah, that's going to be happening there right now. But it's not going to be enough, actually. Like, Blue team are now officially in the lead by one point, uh, in fact. However, with the Necromancer coming in, there needs to be some kind of response in from the red team. How are they going to handle that? It is going to be Kota there coming in on the Condi Herald. So this is going to be a very unusual 2v2. The Lich comes out, and Edison's going to have to back off there. And Koto needs to play very defensively if he wants to survive this situation. The Guardian's coming in there uh, once again. Then Scourge going to be holding down middle. But oh, these team fights are going to be a little bit awkward, I feel like, for the red team here. Like with the Holosmith, it does have that ability to get some a lot of AoE great damage with the Elixir gun and the lasers. And obviously, the Hollow Forge abilities can be great cleave there as well. But they just don't really have the muscle that they had with that fifth player, which it's a, it's a very unfortunate DC for them there, I think. Uh, you know, despite them even leading there, they're going to try and try and hold on here. Uh, the Condi Rev and No Heal for you going to do their best there, but they're going to be 3v2 right now with the Renegade coming in there. Oh, and look at this. The Rev is just planted here, Roy. Edison can't do anything into this. Yeah, I mean, again, they're they're really being, you know, effectively shutting down the value from the Thief. He just cannot find a real place to go because they're completely ignoring mid. They're not pushing into it. They're not leaving open one of those nodes. I mean, we did see him get a decap onto the Waterfall, uh, but certainly, a especially after, you know, Shortbow 5 has gotten, you know, nerfed, it's just it's a lot harder for him to get to those side nodes a little bit faster. Uh, we see, oh, we see the Hollowsmith back in. So oh. Hollowsmith has come back, so it is going to be five versus five yet again, and that's going to be the, uh, yeah, it's going to be the Scourge coming back in. So let's see if Red Team are going to be able to come back into it. You know, obviously they're now down by five points. That is certainly not an insurmountable distance <laughs> at all. There's still four and a half minutes left in the game. So if the Hollowsmith was really the difference here, see if it works out for them. Charbro now getting plus. <laughs> Here's the Thief getting immediate value as long as soon as he's freed up from the rest of the map. You know, now that the Hollowsmith is back, he's able to get that uh, that value on the side note. Emdrick's not going to be able to get that Signet. The kill is going to be good. Waterfall goes the way of Red Team as well as a kill. Uh, no Signet there too is a bit unfortunate. In fact, this Guardian now, is now left completely exposed. No support from the Renegade or Scourge will be available. That should be another kill secured for the Red Team. And I, I mean, seriously, I think that, you know, as you say, like now they have that fifth player. They've got a little bit more ability to kind of take these bruisery 2v2s, right? 1v1s there and actually get value out of that Thief. And I think we're going to see them get back into the lead. It will take a little while, of course, because they're going to have to reset the map to an extent. But I think we will actually see Red Team come out ahead here in a little bit. Especially with this 4v2 Absolutely. on mid. Pretty brutal here, actually. They should be able to find a kill. It's into a Scourge, which is difficult um, for sure. But the Guardian is now just respawning. So there'll be no support coming anytime soon here for the blue team. And yeah, the Scourge is going to fall. Alfie will be following suit in just a moment, I imagine. Yeah, that is going to be a die-on-node situation here for this Renegade. 
something that I really want to point out here is Ooh, I think it's done. so important to note that Edison and Kodu, they made the choice. They made the, the, the distinct choice to stay on that waterfall and get the kill on Emdrix. Instead of immediately, as soon as they got the kill on the Necro, one of them rotating out and just holding onto the node. Because that kill set them up to get those two kills in mid. They didn't have the Guardian support there because he was still being blood out after Kodu and Edison killed him. And even though it meant it took them a little bit more time to eventually win mid, it gave them those two kills, not for free, but it was so much easier for them to do it without the core guardian there. So I, I think that's a huge point to make. And I think that you don't see that all the time. I think you see a lot of players, especially, you know, thieves, revenants, will just immediately rotate out after one kill is gotten instead of confirming the follow-up kill, which is very impactful. And we see them now holding this two cap pretty hard. It looks like that's probably going to be their game plan. We will see a little bit of pressure on the mid. But this is actually not a great place for blue team or for red team. Excuse me. There's core guardians on mid. I'm not really sure why he's the one holding this 1v1. He's now out of the team fight, but blue team have their guardian in it. They're just going to go for it anyway, though, nearly getting uh, the Renegade down there. But in fact, as you say, the blue team get the resustain very nicely. They're turning that they've got to replace. It looks like they're going to try and swap out the hollow. But is it going to be in time? It's I don't late. think it is. Yeah, it's already too That's late. A huge throw. Ooh, it's actually very spicy right now, actually. WHS about to fall here as well. Oh, two yes, kills at this know. stage. That is a very, very scary indeed. He's going to try and hold on this, but again, the core guard is coming, but no, he knows he can't make that. And there's no potential for a decap. I, this Revenant, I, I was actually going to kind of point out how it was a bit ridiculous. This Rev has been AFK on the quarry the entire game, pretty much, but it's almost working out right now. The core guard from Blue going to get in time there for the reset there, and Chabra holding down the waterfall. Red team, a, it's just a slight rotational mistake here. Might be punishing them here. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't understand that. That's that is that lost them the game right there. If they can't get one of these side nodes decap, they have to do it now. And as you said, Nemia holding down Corey very hard. They will be now moving back towards the waterfall with their scourge coming back in. It's not lost yet. They have time to do it, but they have to make sure they do it quickly. Nemia realizing the scourge isn't back on the map, real, you know, is going to be able to counter that rotation. And WHS now going to be out of this team fight. This is going to be again a, a probably a better team fight for Red, uh, Blue Team. Excuse, wait, Edison going in for the plus. Let's see if he's going to be able to find the kill. If they can get the kill onto Nemia, but again, the rotation is just a little bit better for Blue Team. Yeah, the and Renegades now they're, they're here. almost ahead. And it's going to be so close. This might come down to kills. Yeah, kills are actually relevant here. It's only 50 seconds left on the clock. So if they could just get four kills, that will, of course, win them the game, even a little bit less than that. But here they are. It's even blue getting a little bit ahead right now. Can they try and find something here? Oh, no, I don't think they can. There's too much tankiness, too much durability. Cold-blooded killers are actually going to be able to bring this game back here in just two takes. Oh, what a game. 500 to 491. There it is. That is GG. Cold-blooded killers. Just one slip up there, having the core guardian in the wrong place and just ending the game can't pretty much that. off the back can't of that. can't do that. Yeah, I mean, that, that team fight straight up just lost in the game. They, they, I don't know what that was. They were so worried about losing mid and they didn't rotate the, uh, the, the Holosmith out. You hate to see it, but that is the game, as you said, and Cold-Blooded Killers will take it 2-0. Obviously, a much better game from Red Team there on, on Legacy. Very unfortunate we saw the DC earlier on. But, you know, of course, we did have the honor from Dusk, so, you know, it wasn't even 4v4. Obviously, a bit more of a struggle without the Holosmith there for Red Team. But still, you know, they were able to come back and, and take a commanding position. They just, they threw it away on that one team fight. Yeah, I, the, the game can be punishing that way. And if you're in a close match... Uh, you know, particularly with the meta as it is, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of pretty tanky stuff with the Scourge. If you make a misrotation, it's going to take you a while to be able to correct that, right? Like, you know, because the enemy team's going to have to sit on the nodes and it will take you a while to shove them, and that's, shove them off. And that's exactly what you see at the end of that game. Uh, you know, the cold-blooded killers, they were able to get themselves into the situation where they just had it locked, right? They just had it locked down and they were able just to push forwards there, just crawling to the end of the game with a nine-point victory there. American squirrels coming in right now. And look, Roy, I can see it. I can see it in the spawn. I see a minion man to Necromancer. Uh, <laughs> I can see the bone fiend. There it is. I mean, look, like, you know, this is actually something that you do see. Now, a few, there were actually a few teams that were experimenting with uh, minion mons, I believe, actually, uh, on EU. But on NA, it is a much more ingrained build. And I believe it was well, kind of like the origin, actually. Of the, uh, yes. the Minion Monster yes. style uh, was Seacott. actually... Yeah. Seacott uh, is the, the, the... Well, I think Genius might not really be yeah. the right word to use uh, in this case. Um, but he was certainly the creator of this build, yes. Uh, uh, yes. 
the yes. minion monster. Okay. Oh, wait. We I, we actually, I believe, see... Wait, this is an EU team, is it not, actually? Uh, so it's a kind of a hybrid, hybrid. team. Um, so this, they were actually originally planning to play on EU. Uh, and then, I guess, they decided they wanted to go to an A. They, so this is um, EQ. I don't know if you if you, uh, they were in the uh, the moda. Yeah, yeah, exalted uh, quality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, EQ. Yeah, which was of course you know, named exalted quality after the player exalted quality who was the captain of their team or one of the players in their team. Uh, and it isn't exactly EQ. You know, they have Thermite, they've got Ryan, um, but they also have a couple of other players. So we got Sequoia, who I believe obviously is is you probably uh, recognize the name from EU. Uh, and of course, Dry Dude, who is a a player that we're very familiar with, who we you know we we know uh, from from you know just playing on on NA a lot. Uh, and then Alada is uh, another pretty standard uh, ranked name there. So yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a strong team, a team that like we said, uh, you know we we do see them on EU sometimes, but they are playing on NA for this tournament. Uh, but and uh, the other team, blue team, um, some very strong ranked players as well. Uh, Frindy actually a a GVG player. Oh, yeah. Ah, so they're going to be very much at home on the scourge then. In that case, uh, in this situation. Yeah. Oh, and we we actually see. Oh wait, is it? This is almost a mirror, I believe. Actually, into actually not quite. Actually, never mind. I was like, oh, I was getting excited there for a mirror matchup. But we see the thief on both sides there. Of course, a good little bit of core guardian action there with a revenant too. It's a condi rev on the red team. Is it the same hit? It is actually. So we have a condi rev on both sides, a thief on both sides, a core guard on both sides, a scourge on both sides. The only difference is we're going to be seeing a renegade versus the prot holosmith from the red team which it, it, to it, it's a a somewhat similar role i suppose like the renegade more of a roma bruiser and then the uh, the prot holo more of a duelist so i i mean we're gonna see a lot of team fighting here i would imagine from both these teams they both have the composition for it but i imagine that red team is probably gonna lean a little bit more into side node play and uh, allow their prot holosmith to be outnumbered uh for a lot of the time and and kind of leverage that start a little bit more so. Whereas we're going to see blue team just try and just force the issue and get kills as quick as they can uh, with their thief and renegade kind of roaming around the map a little bit, I would imagine. Absolutely. Uh, I was waiting for these guys to ready up. But, I, you know, I mean, we've seen a Holosmith in every single game now uh, on an A. And clearly NA just values the Holosmith more than EU does. Uh, which is, you know, interesting because you have a lot of those really well-known engineer, you know, mains on EU. You have Floody, who, you know, obviously we spoke to yesterday. You have Zan. I uh, know we haven't seen Zan play yet, of course. He he was in the Invitational automatically, so we will see him next weekend. And he might be piloting some form of Hollowsmith. You know, that's what we expect. And Floody, of course, you know, we didn't see him play either. We spoke to him, he cast a little bit, and he did talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Mender's Scrapper, which we're not really excited to see. But it is nice to see all of these, you know, these different, these different Hollowsmiths, even if... This, in this case, it is a little bit more of a tanky build, not the DPS haul we saw from the last two games. But here we go. Game number one coming out on Capricorn. It's going to be Red Team making a little bit of a crossover. Step Bro God X Dry Dude going to be making the cross. And actually, Depressing, not going to contest that. Just going to go back into the mid fight and look to try to get some value there, outnumbering on his on this thief. Mm, I think they've... They, uh... I, I think that's a very risky thing to do here. Like they're they're assuming very heavily they're going to be able to win the team fight quickly. I'm not sure if that's a particularly sure bet against this composition though, Roy. Like this is a very like tanky comp here with the Guardian, the Scourge, the Condi Rev. It's not going to be easy to secure those kills immediately. However, though, free neutrons in a little bit of trouble already does manage to get some recent. They're actually turning it around a bit there, getting some fantastic pressure there onto Souls Bride. If they could find that kill that would be absolutely massive even in the outnumber. They now have the sides of the Hollow pushing in here. This could actually be a little bit scary for Blue. Team was free neutrons going very, very low though. Cranach's gonna go for some big, big healing there. Signet is well, but he's actually not got line of sight. If the scourge dies now, that's very, very bad here for the red scourge. He goes all the way around there and drops back down. It looks like he is gonna be able to get resustained. But now, once again, the thieves are gonna maybe try and decap each other. Actually, no, the blue thief is gonna get more value. The red thief predicting him going to the dock, but in fact, it is gonna be the bazaar. Maybe the thief can catch up there just in time there as this team fight continues. Rage blue team actually going very, very low. Red team now with the lead in his, uh, both guardians uh, trying to contest there. Actually, it's the guardian and the scourge there, but so Brian's is going to get so solo. Is he going to go? And red team actually end up winning the fight. But the blue thief actually generating a lot of value here. In fact, able to kind of decap them. They're forcing the horde to rotate out. Can they actually get that kill? Here comes the stomp. Yes, they do. There's the stomp. And that should be the collapse of the team fight there for the blue team. And mid should go in direction of red. And you can kind of see that blue team's gamble of assuming they're going to win the team fight kind of backfired there really hard as they lose the map and the fight. Yeah. And... 
Uh, just a slow start there from blue team. You know, they were unable to, to get any value from outnumbering immediately on. They weren't able to do it for very long, and yeah, you know, they weren't able to get that res. The core guardian being the focus target there as well just prevented a lot of comeback potential for them. This is an interesting choice from the core guardian. You know, he's trying to go right off of respawn to get the decap, but his team is still fighting, and they haven't left the fight. So I don't really know why we don't see the core guardian going back into the fight. Again, you see this kind of misrotation from a, a Guardian. Res is going to be good, though. The uh, transfusion there on the blood res coming out from the Scourge obviously going to be very potent. They are going to be able to get the hard res back up. But now the Guardian has forced himself into a 1v1. This is not where you want your core Guardian to be. And the Thief dies up as well. Very nice 1v1 there from T there, getting that kill there onto depressing. <laughs> depressing, rather, I should say. Uh, so yeah, that's a very, very nice kill. That's going to massively free up the map in favor of Red. And this fight on mid, as you say, there's no core Guardian there. This is going to be a disaster. And moreover, this uh, Guardian is, is now incredibly vulnerable to a plus. If anything happen, he's not going to do anything in this 1v1. He can't really be plus effectively by the Thief because he doesn't do any damage. And his team is dying at the same time. The, this is a bit of a, a, a bit of a misrotation here from Blue and they're getting punished hard for it. Yeah. And, you know, it's... I mean, yeah, I just, I, I really, I think that Blue Team got locked into this mid-fight from the beginning, and it basically just ended now, although we do still see Frindy contesting that node. But Red Team, they have not needed to cap this node at all. They've had side node pressure, and, you know, obviously, as you mentioned, D did get some decaps there, but for the most part, they've been able to hold down at least one of those nodes, Doc being the, you know, the one in particular, and they've been the only ones getting kills, really, so... You know, they're fine. They're content just holding on to this lead, and Blue Team really have to start making something out of this. They haven't been able to really put points on the board yet. They haven't been able to have an effective team fight pretty much since their core guardian died. And they're also not able to really unlock Dry Dude from this bizarre node uh, on this on this pretty tanky side node hollow build. Uh, he is going to leave now after the rotation comes in. Uh, Kranax and Neutron's not going to be 2v3 ing there. Serecto is going to leave not far after. Oh no, Serecto is going to continue to stay and outnumber this, so they should be able to find a kill. But, I mean, the Thieves at the moment, actually the only ones paying attention to the bill, you kind of see the opposite of what normally happens on Capricorn. Uh, but, nonetheless, it is going to be the, the Thief team fight there, around the bell mechanic. Yeah, that's, it's not something you typically see often, but, you know, if you got to hold it, you got to hold it. I mean, blue team certainly can't afford to give that up for now. However, red going to rotate their way over here uh, and try and get something, but bandana already very, very low here. The Connie are going to pile on the pressure. The Guardian is here to stabilize it, so I think we're going to see this fairly stale for a long period of time, but actually, maybe not, actually. The Renegade, unbelievably low, getting a little bit trapped and getting caught in some of these damaging fields uh, from the Conditioner, and blue thief manages to get the decap reset the map, but they're still only on six points, and I, I don't know. Like, a lot of these matchups, they kind of aren't going. The game is fairly stable right now, I suppose, because everywhere is not really going to go anywhere, uh, at least for the time being. But, I mean, they've got to find some way to crack this deficit. Otherwise, they're just going to end up losing the game. And already the Red Thief looking for some value here. Sees that. Konyarev wants to go for that kill on the Sir Ecto. However, depressing is coming in there to try and save the day there a little bit. But it's not going to be in time. And there's the kill on the Konyarev. And that is going to be no recovery potential there from the Thief. Yeah, absolutely. Sir Ecto gets taken out, and it's just a little bit of a faster rotation there from Aluda over Depressing, and it's going to be a nice bleed there. So, you know, I think for the most part, we haven't really seen any fights go drastically one way or the other. Obviously, Red Team pretty much the only ones winning fights at the moment. Blue Team not really able to find kills on the map. But Red Team hasn't, hasn't won a fight so significantly that they're able to either get the bell or, you know, get a double cap or even a triple cap for the most part. But it is really just up to them rotating around a little bit more, getting some value from having one kill advantage here in some of these fights. As D currently is going to be chased down by a lot of fear coming out as well. Going to potentially find the kill onto this Thief. Souls Bra, though, in the fight. Again, the target here from this red team. It seems to be very effective so far. The core guardian, the support, going to be going to announce it. The same time as the Thief Breach, going to be dropped on top of that bandana. Now can do nothing but attempt to flee on this power renegade. However, he should be a red, relatively easy target, I think, for red team to track down. And that will be the first bell of the game and potentially even second bell going their way as well. So yeah, Red Team obviously looking very, very confident here so far in this match. Yep, there it is. There is going to be pretty much the, I mean, the, kind of the end of the game here. Really. The second bell now being captured there by the Red Team, getting themselves even more points. And Blue still a little bit stuck on just six here. I mean, I think it's going to be a case of just reset and try again next time. I think Blue Team, they've got to seriously reconsider themselves if they want to be able to take down this very formidable team of the American Squirrels here. Yeah, they're looking pretty confident. And, you know, I think a big part of this is that, you know, we saw in the last match, we saw obviously the high team 
Uh, originally, they were planning on playing Thief. They ended up not doing it. Uh, Edison going for that Soul Beast. And they were losing team fights. And they straight up pretty much just lost every team fight on this map. And they lost the map for it relatively hard. I would say it was a pretty, pretty one sided game. Legacy, however, was a much different game. After Edison went to Thief, he was able to have so much more impact on the map. And so, you know. A lot of the times, I think we would be talking about the Thieves here a little bit more, but the thing is, Eludra is just doing an excellent job of shutting down D very, very hard. Not only are, is, is Eludra kind of just out-rotating D a little bit, but anytime D tries to go for a decap, as we see right here at Far, Eludra's there and is winning this 1v1. So D just getting shut down very hard right now, not having the impact of the Thief normally could. And on top of that, Blue Team just is not winning, or they are not winning any fights, excuse me. And I think, I think honestly, this, this tactic for, for, you know, for them to be going onto this core guard in every single fight, he's usually one of the first to die and, and certainly get very pressured, is smart. They're completely taking out that possibility of a Signet Rays coming through and turning the fight back in their favor. So, so far, Red Team just, they they put everything out on, on the table. It's working very well for them. And Blue Team aren't really doing anything to try to force them to change, force them to, to have to adapt to how they play. And it's, you know, if they do the exact same thing in Legacy, we're just going to see the exact same thing here, and it's going to be another almost 500-0 game. Yeah, I, it's, uh, to be frank, uh, I think there you know, maybe some misrotations here from Blue, but also very clean execution, I think, from Red, actually. I think they, they know their comp. They played their comp very well, I think, uh, in this game, and this is absolutely a very strong team. So, improvised, they're going to have to... I mean, they might have to improvise a little bit, Roy, uh, if they want to <laughs> yeah. get this done, because there's a triple cap, and Bell up in 30 seconds. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see a GG call uh, somewhere near as well, because... This, this is hopeless, or this is not going to go any other way uh, than a victory in favor of the American Squirrels. No, absolutely. It is it is certainly looking that way. And uh, D actually, I don't know, not AFK. I think that might have been a little bit of a lag for a second there. But yes, the next bell will be coming up. This will be actually only 50 points, I believe, for a team since they technically missed the second bell. Uh, but that is going to certainly be enough, especially with the triple cap. I mean, six points on the board from Blue Team when they originally got that cap on the Bazaar before we saw Dry Dude to get that decap. I mean, yeah, it is game. I think I think GG go next is probably going to be the best call for them. Uh, and, and just try to have a different game plan there for Legacy. And it's not even necessarily having a different comp, because I think their comp isn't really the problem. I I really think it's how, how they're playing these fights and how they're playing the map a little bit. And, and Blue, Red Team is just playing it better. So they really yeah. have to try and, and change something up. Yeah. They absolutely are. I mean, I, you know, to an extent, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people would see the Renegade on the Blue Team and say, oh, wow, dude, Renegade, that's a pretty good class. How are they losing? They've got more Revenants. How are they losing, Roy? It's not possible. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think it's not composition. It's going to come down to execution. Just good execution there from Red Team. Like, that's that's all there really is. Like, very clean, very clean game. Not much to say about it. Well played there to the American Squirrels. Improvise. Absolutely. Need to step up their game. Otherwise, this is going to end up being a very, very brutal. What, honestly, one of the most brutal games I think we saw in the entire tournament, in fact, uh, on EU or NA so far. Here it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's... Oof. It's... It, that was, Yeah, I mean, that was not a, a close game. And, you know, to be fair, I don't think that the first... The, the match we saw on Capricorn right before this was that close either. I think that, you know, the high team, they were able to get a lot more points on the board, around 200, 250, something like that. And, of course, that is going to be, you know, it's going to look like a closer game. But I think that's mostly just because they were able to rotate a little bit better than we see this improvised team doing. You know, they 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 lost probably the same number of team fights that improvised did. Maybe not quite as many, but certainly a lot of them. Uh, but, you know, they, they were able to out-rotate a little bit more, I think, and that put points on the board for them. But, you know, it ended up just, unfortunately for them, the map they were on really kind of forced them to team fight a little bit or at least contest that bell mechanic. And they weren't avoiding them quite as much as maybe they could have, so they ended up... Falling into that trap there. Legacy, though, you know, I said at the beginning of, of the last game that maybe, you know, Legacy was going to be a little bit easier for their opponents. And it ended up obviously being an extremely close match. So maybe we're going to see something here. We already see some changes coming out, which, of course, I like to see here from this uh, this blue team. We've got one Whoa. player restarting, so we have a minute to wait or so, but that's fine, of course. So they're gonna try and they're, they're gonna try and go for a miracle here. The blue team improvise yeah. <laughs> the dragon hunter. Is there now this could potentially be this is maybe uh, not quite uh, like the map for it. You have like that giant node, uh, which might, you know, significantly reduce the impact uh, of the Dragon Hunter, or at least on mid, but on the sides, it can still be very, very scary indeed. So we'll have to see what they, if they could make this, uh, you know, slightly differential composition. Now though, they did, um, you know, they have like slightly dropped, uh, they dropped the Scourge right for this, right? I believe. Uh, this might be or the first team we've seen without a Necro. 
You know, it's there's no Necro. There's no Necro on the team. I'm 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 kind of confused. What are we watching? Is this Guild Wars 2 PvP? I don't know. There's no green class. What's going on? Yeah. I've got no idea either. I don't know what the hell is going on. The Scourge well, yeah, I am, is well, I mean Scourge is clearly off. bad, dude. Like Scourge is clearly just trash. Oh. True. Yeah. That's what sure, it is. I think we should be we should be seeing uh, we should be seeing Firebrand Guardian uh, Core Guardian Dragon Hunter in every single team comp. The triple blue class. It is it is Guardian's time to reign. Finally, after so many years in the dirt, Guardian is going to be good. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's, well, I mean, the, to be fair, there are the, the core Guardian is very good. I mean, there is that. There's a lot of core Guardians here, so I'm not sure we can say Guardian's been in the dirt. I mean, Guardian is, you know, it's, no, it, it has it's, been. It's, it's, it's terrible been, right now. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, Guardian very bad right now. Just like not good. Like it's very very weak. But wait, do you think there's a potential Lord play here? Potential from, from are they going to try and like really throw yeah. it in there? Like mix it up a little bit, try and troll the red team, and just go for a very very like hail mary I mean, play here. It's always an option. It's not something that we see that often. But you know, if it ends up being the play, they may have the advantage because of the burn DH. Uh, yeah. just, I'm I'm going to be really interested to see if they actually go for straight up team fights. Which, I mean, I know as you were saying, you know, the middle node is going to be a little bit maybe less effective uh, for the DH than uh, you know than you, you might see on another node. But of course, we we could still see uh, you know significant team fights happening on Waterfall and Quarry. They may try to just force those two you know those two side nodes. But here's the thing: I, I really think that it's going to come down to D try you know, having to play a bit better because I, I think that Thief can have a ton of impact as we saw. Edison, honestly, I think, was winning his team the game on the same map, you know, the in the last set. Uh, but you know, I, I think that D got out thiefed last game straight up, and I think that D's gonna have to really step it up a little bit and and try to put in a little bit more work there uh, to to match Aluda. And, and potentially win those 1v1s if he, if he gets forced into those situations. But we'll see how this trap DH ends up matching into what red team have. It's actually going to be an outnumbered at the moment for him on Waterfall. Dragon's Maw going to stop a little bit of pressure for the moment, but he's going to still be outnumbered here. No one from his team rotating in as of yet, so Soul's going to have to be very careful. He doesn't just die very quickly into the game. Yeah, indeed, and Red Team already pushing that there with the Engineer planting that prot hollow on the waterfall while their own Revenant holds there. So, again, like, Red Team... They get a good opener here. This is a great opener. Like, they, the outnumber on mid for blue does nothing because it's going to be into the Scourge Guardian. So, this is not enough damage from blue to really break through that. Thief going to try and do something here, but the, the Pro Holo will be able to get back into position to prevent that. And honestly, the Pro Holo is going to be a difficult thing to actually kill for the Guardian. Like, there's going to be a lot of cleanse uh, coming out from here from the, the Red Engineer play. It's, it's not going to be easy to break through that. And yeah, he knows he's going to try and move away here, I think. He's just getting the hell out of there. And already, Red Team just... Looking in complete control this game, Roy. It does, in fact, look like... I mean, it's pretty similar to what we saw, you know, in the last game. Blue team, they have a little bit of a slow start. They don't really... You know, they're not able to confirm a side node very effectively. They start pushing into mid. They're not able to find a kill quickly in mid, even though they may be outnumbering elsewhere on the map. And it's... You know, they're just... They're getting locked into this mid fight now while the side nodes are just slowly ticking up there for red team. It is only a waterfall at the moment. Corey still is going to be contested there. But it is outnumbered right now, so the mid fight should essentially just be free win here for red team eventually. Uh, Stepro got X taking a little bit of pressure, but Soulsbra going to have to start rotating out of this fight. And Illusion actually going on top of him. No stun breaks available for the trap DH. So he's going to start getting pressure down. Red team sees this, and that should be a kill confirmed. Signet is going to be there, and it is going to be good, but he has no cooldowns available to him, and I think he's just going to go right back into downstate almost immediately. Nice CC chain coming out there from the Renegade, actually, to help peel for his teammate. That was actually beautifully played there by the Renegade. Just barely keeping Soulsbra alive. Heal trap going to be enabled, but I don't think it procs quite enough. He does get the F2 leap away, and I cannot believe this DH survived that. 100% due there to Bandana having some excellent CC in that. That was very nice, and he gets the out of combat. He is resetting himself, no problem. Meanwhile, we actually do see a Vent... Which one of these is Ventari, actually? Ooh, Sir Ecto on the blue team is, in fact, the Ventari of into the Colony, but that isn't really going anywhere. Now, Solzbar is going to come in there, so the Colony is going to have to be a little bit careful in this situation uh, to try and hold on here until there's some kind of assistance, but... I don't think he's very likely to die because, like, the Ventire is not going to be able to bring a lot of damage, only sustain to the Dragon Hunter. So, I think once again, Sakura is going to be able to survive fairly effectively here. And there is going to be a Sins coming in now with Cranox to make this a nice 2v2, a very slow 2v2, but a nice one indeed there. Meanwhile, Bandana on the other side of the map, maybe about to go down. Yes! Is there a Guardian to run that? No, because he's trapped on mid. There's nothing he can do about that. Uh, and th this, I mean, this 
could potentially be a 500-0 game. I mean, I think the, you know, the only way they're going to get any points is going to be from the Lord here, perhaps. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I, I think the fact that they went Ventari Rev... I mean, look, the, the thing with the Ventari Rev is, if you give it the node from the start, it shouldn't really lose it. Unless it gets plus, you know, it gets rotated on extremely heavily, which... Again, you know, I've been saying for a while, I think I think it, the correct way to play around Ventari Rev is basically just to completely play around it, not go into it. So that shouldn't really happen. But they didn't give him the node, so it's going to be take him a while to eventually get that decap. And then they tried plussing him, and they just got over-rotated on, and it ended up losing almost the entire cap that they already had on this node. So the Ventari Rev really locked into a position that I think is, is just not great for him because it's taking him so long to get this cap. And at the at this moment, you know, he's just not really able to force this Kani Rev, which is very tanky, maybe not quite as tanky as the Ventari Rev, but he just can't force the cap quite quite effectively. Now D finally coming in, and if they can get the node here, D should immediately just leave and, and find some value elsewhere on the map. But so far, they're again, they're locking themselves into a very neutral map position, and red team are just fine with one node. They've gotten 125 points from a single node this entire game. Soulsbra goes down. There will be a signal, I believe. Actually, no, I believe it got, no, it got interrupted, actually. Uh, yeah, nice play there by the Thief there from Red Team, just shutting that down immediately. And yeah, the, the, there's just no breaking this. Like, it's they're going to slowly keep hemorrhaging out players and then lose the game. That's basically it. Mid is going to be capped soon as well. Red Team can't hold that anymore because they're outnumbered. Depressing is going to end up falling there. There is a signet potentially, but I'm not sure if he's going to He's going to go for it. And should she land there? No. Gets interrupted again, actually, once again by the Thief. Nice steals here from the Thief to being really aware of that, like managing that cooldown to guarantee that it will always be available. And all they need to do is to complete the set now and go for a cap here. Maybe, like, get some DPS in here and try and force this Ventai Rev, but they don't have to. They're winning the game anyway. So if they, you know, if they're just saying, you know what? We're going to play safe. We're not going to try and force it. We have no real um, need to do that. They'll just slowly win this game on a two cap. Uh, just, yeah. It's just good gameplay here from Red. No kills secured by Blue, even with the addition of that massive uh, nuclear warhead that is the Burn Dragon. So this is, this is kind of it, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, you're right. I mean, it is kind of it. And, you know, I think it's it's interesting to know as well that, you know, having having a thief, again, is going to be really good. But one of the things that I think is kind of an issue with this comp that they're, they're running, they're running the thief and the Ventari room together. And, and I can obviously, you know, maybe better players than I can, can say I'm just an idiot here. But to me, when you have your Ventari room planted on one side of the map, it basically means that, you know, red team, again, if they're playing around it properly, they shouldn't plus into this. So, we, you know, they really shouldn't be going over to this Ventari Rev's node. That's his home. If you leave him in his home, he'll be happy, and you can win the rest of the map. And so this means that D, the thief, is basically forced to either go to Waterfall to get either a decap or a 1v1, which he, we, we've seen D lose every single time into Aluda, as he's doing now, or try to get value into the team fight on mid, which, again, is just not really the ideal place for a thief all the time. So... It almost feels like they're locking them, their thief out of half of this map with this Ventari Rev, and they've gotten zero value from the Ventari Rev to begin with. In fact, we see them now actually losing a 2v2 with the Ventari Rev in it. That should never be happening. So I, I really think that blue team, they're having a little bit of, you know, they're, they're not 100% sure how to play around the comp that they're running. And I really think they're having a little bit of trouble sticking to a game plan and, and really trying to, to make it work. And we saw that in Capricorn, and we, saw, we see it here now. And as well, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to really, you know, call one specific person out overall. But if you're going to play a, a a class, a spec that has insanely high impact on the game, like Thief, you have to be able to pilot effectively. And right now, D is straight up getting out Thiefed by Luda. Yeah, the Thief Diff memes, they have arrived, that's for sure. And it is one of those things, right? Like, you know, if you do have the better Thief, it's not only that you have the better Thief, it's that the enemy Thief will be significantly less effective as well. It's something that you see a lot, actually. Yep. Uh, particularly if you're going to end up taking 1v1s, which is what we're seeing here as well, uh, is that these Thieves are, uh, you know, they often find themselves, you know, engaging, engage in a 1v1. If you consistently win that, it just completely deletes the enemy team's map pressure. Well, oh, hey, hold on. Are we going to see a kill? Five points. There Five points on the board, baby. There it is. Kranix getting <laughs> taken out in this fight. There's a little bit of lifeblood. What if, okay, what if improvised wins here? That would be the in, like the biggest meme. We've, we've been talking about this game like it's been over for the last five minutes. Because it has been. 
But what if that one? I'm obviously I'm I'm kidding. That one kill is not going to give him the game. Yeah. But you know what? It would be nice to it would be nice to pretend for a moment, right? And I think the Rev and the Scourge are going to be able to hold out actually until Cranox returns. And that's yeah. kind of the, that's kind of Dragon Hunter though, right? That's the magic of Dragon Hunter. Like Cranox, he didn't have stability. He just got locked and exploded right out of nowhere. There was just no real way to recover that oh, situation. Wait a minute though. Neutron is going to go down. Cranox is Signet. there for the Signet. Is there going to be an interrupt from D? No, there's not. And unfortunately, the CC is just not going to connect. They do. I mean, that's pressure, but. You know, 400 points on the board at this point for Red Team. They cannot get the kill. They forced the Signet, but at this point, it looks like Bandana may actually go down. I think there is a Signet available for Sadness, but, I, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, they got a kill. Awesome. I think maybe Red Team were maybe falling asleep a little bit, and then they, you know, now they've been woken up a bit for a moment. Uh, but this game is essentially over. Uh, yeah, and, and it has been. Yep. It's, so. I mean, if, if they end up winning this team fight, it will just end up being uh, just a complete three cap here as well. That will end the game much, much quicker. But I don't think this this fight may just kind of continue. There's a lot of durability here from Blue. Having said that, Sad is maybe about to fall here. He's got no cooldowns, actually. He's trying to re empower that to get some health back. But no, the pressure, the sustain train is good there. There's no way to signet because he's the one who's got the signet. He gets knocked away. He gets ended. And this fight is probably going to dissolve fairly soon. And the thieves chasing each other around. But once they Again, D having a lot of trouble against his opponent in the 1v1 may end up falling there. And the Thief will simply rotate back over to clean everything up. Going to clear everything. There's Bandana going down. D ends up falling. There's a Sir Ecto and Souls, but are desperately trying to hold on. But it's 40 points to go with two kills on the board and just, yeah. And it's impressive stuff. Like, I, you know, I can't wait to see this um, this American Squirrels team uh, continue moving forward. It's looking very, very clean indeed. It's just that it is a very methodical style they played. They have clearly thought about the way they're playing their openings out with the Holesmith and the Thief. They're getting great value on the map with that. And they're also consistently winning the team fights, holding the outnumbered there with the Scourge and the Guardian there. Yeah, they're and making it happen. Well played. That's it. I'd like it. to point something out to the people who are, I mean, yes, obviously, a very, well, I got top healing that game very nice uh obviously a a very you know one-sided game absolutely but i would just like to point out something that uh, and kind of echo fray a little bit from yesterday the team with the ventari rev lost all right team with the ventari or without the ventari rev they won 500 to 5 so uh you know ventari rev that people have been so worried about maybe not quite as good as uh you know as good as people think maybe yeah. I think its effectiveness is significantly mitigated when you ca uh, when there's no uh, spec stacking, right? Like you can't um, stack specializations. That makes it a lot worse because it means then you can't play a herald uh, at the same time, and I don't know that that, that kind of sucks, right? That's not where you want to be, and you just lose so much damage that like you already need quite a lot of damage. You need to dedicate quite a lot of your players to be able to do DPS. And blue just didn't have that. I mean, like I think the, the, the really big thing we saw there is that they just were not able to get kills like just at all they couldn't get any kills the entire game well i mean except for cranox feeding into the dragon hunter but other than that they red team was completely untouchable there was just not enough damage again they couldn't find these good 2v2s these good 3v3s and because with the ventara up there there's just not really any damage right in these in these sets so like how do you plus something like that it's very difficult to actually do that all right and with with that in mind, we have uh, our first semi-final of this uh, NA Open bracket, uh, which is, of course, going to be very exciting. We're going to see our fir our top-seeded team as well for the first time. And even better than that, we've got none other than our, our good friend from yesterday joining us, Capablanca. Welcome back, Capablanca. How are you today? Well, I guess. Hello. <laughs> Look Where who it is. Once again. Yikes. This time, Hello. NA. Hello. It's time for NA this time. So, what have you thought of the yeah. game so far? Yeah, we're then, bringing course, EU to NA. Yes, we've I'm, moved over. I definitely have seen that NA is the superior region overall. Oh, and that's pretty obvious. Wow. Over there. Okay. Pretty nice. I saw a lot of like uh, veteran players coming back. Like Marvin was playing for one team, I think, with Capehart and uh, Countless. So, I'm pretty happy to see the games. I, I, I have to exactly mirror that, to be frank, actually. I think we are going to have some really, really fun stuff. We're going to be moving on to the next round uh, very, very shortly. Uh, what is that? I, I believe we're going to actually... Are we going to the next round, I yeah, think, actually? Yeah, whatever. Ooh. Yes, yes. 
Yes. So it's going... Yeah, whatever versus Cold. Oh, oh, yes. Now, I believe Yeah, whatever is actually a bit of an anticipated team, as I understand it, Roy, actually. Like, there's some yes. uh, pretty big gamers yes. on that team. But the Cold Blooded Killers, like, they have demonstrated themselves to be a force to be reckoned with, very much so in the team fight there. So let's see if they're able to replicate their performance, uh, uh, you know, uh, once again against this team here as we get the players into the matches. Of course, the new map rotation. We're going to be starting off on Kylo here. Getting a little bit of variety here. I mean, look, we didn't see any trebuchet yesterday. Yeah, I know. What's going on with that? I, I what is going on with I that? I go to Kylo, I, I just sit on the treble the whole game. I, yeah. Is that not? Is that not? I mean, I, I, I mean, I am. I can't believe the players of this caliber would miss that, Roy. I mean, obviously, you or I know that the treb is key to every game, but clearly, the EU noobs were unaware of this. Do you think we're like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, EU sucks. You're right. <laughs> I, I you guys like, heard it here first. Teapot, te yeah. quote Teapot on this. EU sucks. Yeah. They're the Whoa. inferior region. I mean, like, yeah. I want to, I want to see Trev gameplay. I mean, I think it is unlikely, but you know, maybe get one shot off when if you respawn, boom, get a shot off on the Trev, move on to the map. Like, maybe a little bit unlikely. But we'll see, I guess. We'll see how things go. We'll see how things transpire in all these games. We actually see the players starting to actually load in. And uh, uh, Roy, I'm surprised to see that you're actually playing on this team. That's a little a little curious there, isn't it? Yes, well, that's why I called Floody in. So he could take over while I go and play. Uh, and, and don't forget to subscribe, guys, uh, at Twitch TV Roy. Not this budget stream. Um, as you can see on the, on the, on the stream there. Yes, uh, the, the, the name is, is correct. Uh, but yes, I'm going to go and play now. Uh, and Floody will be taking my place for this match. So thank you very much, Floody. Uh, you will now see me fall asleep at my keyboard while I play Mender Scourge. So. Oh, you're going to be having a lot of fun while you're doing that, I am sure. The Mender Scourge is here. Ooh. Ooh. I'm seeing... Uh, yeah, yeah. We're seeing a bit of Deadeye going on here, guys. How about that? So it's going to be the core guardian, the Kondi Rev here from Zin, Twitch TV Roy on the Mender Scourge, Viva here on the Burn Weaver. And then finally, this is exactly what I'm not, this is what I'm talking about, guys, okay? You know how we said you don't have to have your name, just make sure it's something vaguely pronounceable, right? Uh, what the hell is this, right? What's going on here, right? This is not even a real name, but... It is a real class. It is the Dead Eye here, which is something that we did see play by the Valerians. I was actually a little bit surprised not to see it actually get played by any more teams than the Valerians because it is it is terrifying, particularly actually with the prevalence of Scourge. Like Dead Eye is something that just absolutely farms Scourge unbelievably hard, actually. And, well, let's see if they are able to leverage that effectively here. Um, it is a slightly different approach there. Like, we haven't, we didn't see many weavers, actually, um, uh, at all. Uh, you know, but you do still see it. It is one of the favored side noters in the current meta here. At least we're on. We just need to wait for, we need to wait for the additional team to come in here because it's going to be, yeah, whatever on the red team. Uh, yeah, whatever. Versus... The Cold-Blooded Killers. We're going to be seeing a very teamfight-centric composition from the Cold-Blooded Killers as they load in. The Minion Mance, the Necromancer, the Core Guardian, the Kondi Revenant, the Renegade, and of course, the reliable but deadly Scourge. Of course, Red Team no slouch is either there as well, but they've got the Thief, so we are going to see them abusing that mobility significantly more. Now, there's going to be a dynamic here that might be a little bit scary, actually, uh, for the Red Team, and that's that they have their Weaver. Now, I think one of the reasons that the Minion Manza Scourge even existed, okay, was because it is able to kind of have its way with weavers very effectively in a 1v1, right? It will just walk over to it. The minions are going in there. The minions are going crazy. And then everyone, uh, <laughs> then the weaver just kind of dies, right? That's kind of what happens over there. So it is a bit of a counter pick there. So the weaver is going to need some support if he's going to be taking this 1v1 uh, into the core necromancer. And I imagine that we're going to see uh, an attempt by the blue team to actually push that 1v1. But actually, having said that, we are seeing, what is his name? <laughs> A slightly different wait. What this is interesting actually. We see the duelist soul beast come out from blues. They're actually going to swap their comp up a little bit. How very 
very interesting. Very interesting, definitely. Like yeah. We talked about the Condi Sobis yesterday. So it should be pretty interesting to see how it actually performs on the side nodes versus the Weaver, for example, or versus the enemy Condi, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah, it should so. be pretty good matchups overall. But yeah, I guess it will depend on what young Jaden over here can do. Yes. That I from your team. Indeed. Absolutely. We will see. Yeah. And there we go. We're going to wait for the final player from the Cold Blooded Killers actually load themselves into this game so we can go ahead and get started in this matchup. But you know what? A, a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a switch up here. I'm surprised to see that actually. Uh, seeing as I am, I think that their previous comp would actually be very good. Like it's, it's a small map; it'll be easy for them to rotate. So I'm, to, I'm surprised to see the, um, you know, the, the thing that I guess maybe they're really worried about the dead eye uh, also farming the minion monster necromancer as well because you know necromancer in general is something that is shut down by Deadeye in general. Like, Necros are kind of slow and fat, uh, and, you know, like, the Deadeye is very nimble, and with that uh, massive range on the rifle, there's not much a Necromancer can really do uh, to shut down a Deadeye. So that could be potentially the reasoning uh, behind that setup. But this does mean that their dueler spec here, um, you know, well, you know, them dedicated dueler, of course, the Condi Rev might be doing a little bit of dueling here as well. Uh, it is going to be a slightly weaker uh, option compared there, but we'll see how it actually ends up working out. Maybe they'll be able to survive the devastating attacks and disengage away from the Deadeye a little bit more effectively uh, than we would otherwise see. And I, I'm, we might actually, we actually see triple wells right now from the Scourge on the blue team. I wouldn't be surprised to see a change over to maybe like a corrosive poison cloud or something like that, actually, uh, just to try and deal with some of the projectiles. Because if this Deadeye comes into play and just really gets a few shots off, particularly on this map, the Deadeye is going to have a lot of just great room to kite around and just ha kind of like have a really good time just firing down into these team fights so there's got to be some kind of shutdown there and blue team they're going to struggle to have an answer to that like their renegade is going to have to really train down that dead eye otherwise things are going to get absolutely terrifying for them and that dead eye is just going to basically be carrying this game unbelievably hard by just killing absolutely everything what do you make of this from the composition study like who do you think is um i think there's a favored composition between these two teams on this map um I would assume the blue team would have like a better chance on this map because it's rather uh, rather small, so they can kind of even out the dead eye plus ones pretty fast. But I guess we will see like how effective the dead eye is gonna play into them. That's where he's. Yeah. Yep. The two v two starts up here. Dead eye and the weaver looking to deal with the Soviets. However, the renegade from the blue team is here, and I think we we may end up seeing the thief probably leave and maybe try and get something done uh, elsewhere. It might take a little bit too long for that. Meanwhile, we also see a push here from the scourge and the condi rev uh, from the cold blooded killers. They are, however, into a very slow match. Yeah, in fact, they're actually a mirror match. They're on enemy. No, that's going to take a while. Actually, the soul, uh, the, the dead eye nearly dies here. Two bleeds. The renegade wants him. Oh, but a great heal there from Barrison, keeping that uh, Deadeye alive, at least for the time being, and the mobility should carry him to frame there. Now, he's going to have free reign to obliterate this Scourge here of Dust Drawn. A lot of damage is going to come through here. However, he line of sights very effectively, and there'll be no kill there to be had, at least for the time being, allowing Blue Team to re-push into this fight and actually rotate their Guardian in as well. Meanwhile, the 1v1 Fiesta has continued over the middle, where the Soul Beast is going to be playing into the Weaver. However, that does allow the Deadeye to actually go for a sneaky decap. However, the, I've got to say, like, the blue team is honestly doing a great job rotating it. They actually track that Deadeye perfectly, and Alfie yeah. denies the decap. Very nice play there by Blue. He's doing a really, really good job by just keeping track of the Deadeye to pretty much negate his impact on the map. Like, um, when you saw the opening, pretty much, they tried to, uh, they tried to outnumber with the Ellie onto the onto the enemy final, but the Revenant instantly came in to, like, to be 2 that and pretty much make it a winning setup for, like, the blue team. And then now he's just chasing, and pretty much, yeah. Denying the Deadeye from having any impact on this map, and you pretty much see that the Deadeye can't really rotate around. He's constantly pressured, can't really rotate freely, while the Renegade just... Yeah, and uh, there's the kill! kill. He even finds the kill! Yeah, Alfie, he is just a man on a mission right now! He's just holding W on this Deadeye! He doesn't even care about it. he's just like, you know, there is there are no nodes in this game, there is only the Deadeye. And they did, uh, your blue team did end up losing, actually, the mansion cap here. The Weaver was able to just get there a little bit in time. But the Soul Beast contested it. And now with that kill on the Deadeye, the Renegade is free to do its thing. However, the team fight on the other side of that doesn't go in blue team's favor. That is kind of like the first big loss here. That's pretty bad. Then we're going to see Emdrix and Nimia try and survive as best as they can. And the Core Guardian is going to have a very tough time trying to disengage. In fact, they are very likely to die here. I think Emdrix is going to go down and that... 
is a little bit scary, but they do manage to actually return the kill and find a kill on the Weaver. So they should be able to maybe slow down the progress of Bleeding. Yeah, they're trying to troll as best as they possibly can. Thief is going to have a bit of rain now to actually get there, but immediately we're going to see the Renegade look to try and shut that down. But she is not going to get it just yet. However... Uh, the Necromancer has now respawned there. So he doesn't manage to get to mid in time to decap. And, oh, this thief might be able to actually reset the map fairly effectively. Um, oh, maybe just barely. Yeah, the Necro. I don't think the, the Necro is going to be able to get here in time to deny this, especially if there's a knockdown here. But yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, that was... You can just see it how, like, if you lose those team fights, it's very, very scary. We gotta see what happens now, pretty much. Like, that's what I said in the beginning. Like, the map is so small that, like, the blue team can pretty much rotate around the Deadeye pretty efficiently. But now they pretty much created some space for the data to rotate because, like, the Renegade is not watching out for the data rotations right now. So we gotta see what happens now. Um, they're rotating the Scourge into the um, into the blue close node. It's pretty much to be two that. That's pretty much a nice to be two for them. I know the thief can just go around the map, focus on Emdrix now. They got even the full cap on mid, which is perfect. Mm. I don't know what I would do here as Jane. Like he can kind of ah he can actually get the kill on Elfie maybe and then push for that far node. Well, for their close not actually kind of uh, they should be yeah, he's looking for it does find it with the help from the weaver very nice kill there a rough start for red but they are absolutely getting back into the recovery great revive there with the blood res from dust drawn onto the soul beast bit of a tricky 2v2 here like that condi rev and the scourge just brutalizing so much damage out here from the uh, the red uh, from the red team however the guardians from both teams have now rotated over there to mid but red team uh, absolutely closed that gap in an extreme way. Also still have this 1v, uh, 1v2 into Nemia there with the Condi, uh, the Condi Revenant going to be outnumbered by the Weaver and the Dalai. It's going to be very hard to hang on here. He's almost certainly going to have to concede this note and kite the hell out of there. I don't think the Renegade of Alfie is going to be able to make it there in time. And no! In fact, there's even the kill not able to wriggle away from the extreme damage of the Thief. And Red, now they've got a good map state. They've got that map state. All they've got to do is hold on to it and they're going to be in the lead in this game. But... There's still plenty of time for Blue to come back into this. It is not even remotely close to being over here. About five minutes in. Definitely, definitely. They're trying to be 2 now with the Condi Soul Beast and the Renegade. I actually am kind of interested in how that goes. If they just focus on the Dead Eye, it should pretty much be enough to like kind of force them away. But they're actually going for the Weaver. Yeah, the Soul Beast. The Renegade is pretty much. They're just pretty much. They're not watching out for the Deadeye, that's pretty much the problem. If you let the Deadeye free cast, he's gonna kill your teammates. That's just the outcome of that. Yeah, maybe the Soul Beast uh, kind of greeting for the node a little bit too much, and the uh, the Renegade got isolated, kind of fell, you know, and got a little bit out kited there as well. There's a nice port by the Deadeye to teleport back up there. Nothing available um, for the... Actually, the, is this always going to 1v2, actually? He may be about to. He actually does! Oh, oh, oh yes. that's a really nice recovery. But is there a signal? Yeah, Barrison should be able to signal that, I believe. Yeah, nice recovery. But to be fair, a very nice like a 1v2 situation there by the Soul Beast, even after his teammate had fallen in battle. So a Soul Recovery burning that cooldown. But but blue team lose their core guardian over here as well. Uh, Zin is actually a little bit low, so maybe they can get this some kind of revival there with the thing. He's gonna go, the, the symbol right there. They're gonna go for it. However, is there gonna be a stomp coming out? No, there's not. There's gonna be a revival. But I think Emdrix should be able to be revived there. Maybe just barely. No, Alfie and Dustron are not gonna be able to find it actually, and that is gonna be a confirmed kill onto the guardian. That is gonna be the end of that. There it is. And by the way, just guys, just to clarify, this is not Roy. Uh, actually playing here, guys, right? This actually isn't Roy. Uh, this is simply a hilarious meme by one of the players on the red team. It is not actually a uh, wonderful and incredibly handsome host here on the, the tournament blue team. Do manage to get that kill on the Weaver. That's going to free up the Soul Beast to go ahead and grab the free cap over there on the windmill while the fight is now going to continue here on mid Kondirev contesting that here from the blue team. No real answer to the mansion just yet. Blue team is going to push this fight as aggressively as they can. Weaver now respawning the soul beast gonna have to go back for that he's very heavily aware of that so here we go looks like mid is going to be the main focus of attention here everyone on their way scourge respawns from blue they probably are going to want to have and that player Ooh, yeah, yeah. Sadly, he probably didn't watch out i mean he was one me two anyways i don't know if he could have held it out for like a long time but yeah. now he might get uh kind of tricky situation like the revenant or like the renegade has to watch out to actually chase the Jedi way more he was trying to do that in the beginning of the game but then he dropped the ball and yeah let's see let's see mid fight is looking kind of stable right now um not that much happening um 
that I kind of looking for the next pickup here while Oron is dropping really low and the Weaver actually dead in the one versus one versus the Solvist. Mm. Yeah, so and that was very nice. Value drop. Yeah. So it was actually like a nice pick to go for the uh, Condi Solvist instead of the. Uh, what was he playing? Um, Minimancer Necromancer? The Minimancer, yeah, the Minimancer, game? yeah. The oh, Minion okay, okay. Monster Necromancer. And honestly, I love that build. I love the minions and I love Lich Form in particular, right? I just love to see that all the time. Now, the question is, is that that is a nice win, but they cannot just have one, though. They are actually significantly behind. This is a fairly slow, grueling game over halfway through, actually, and just 280 points on the board for red. So there's got to be something done here. Like, that 80-point deficit is going to take a while. The D-Cup does now come through. The Nemi are going to take this 1v1 into the corner of. Should be fairly as, but Alfie dies. Is there a signet here from Endrix? Endrix has got to leave the node, I think, and try and revive that somehow. He's not on the... He's not... He needs to be on the ball. I guess he doesn't feel confident in leaving the Scourge. The Scourge may end up dying there. Oh, but yeah, that Renegade dying once again. We're just going to see that outnumber of the map. And the Thief is just going to get so much value in this situation. Here he comes looking for a kill onto the Condi Herald. Can the Condi Herald hold on? I mean, the Rev's going to respawn in five seconds. Maybe the Condi Herald can hold on long enough, but I don't think Glint Heal is available right now. No, no, it's not actually. And this Deadeye should be able to find this kill. Yep, that's going to be it. There's another kill secured for the blue team. So pretty much the problem that the blue team is having right now is that they're actually playing for like three nodes. Like obviously they want to be, they want to dominate kind of, they want to negate the impact from the enemy team to not get any points, but it just doesn't work against the thief where he's like free to rotate. And when, especially when he gets the kill on your Roma, which is the re uh, renegade in the blue team's case. The thief just gets free value and will always get like the out number and then get the kill before any of the respawns may come in. Yeah, and then we immediately see the Weaver there from the red team just get back over there, full cap the windmill. Oh, and there's even another kill coming through. Alfie goes down. Say, there. We're going to see attempted revive there by the Sobies, but no, too much cleave, too much damage, and counter pressure there from the red team. And uh, I almost thought this is snowballing out of control here a little bit, Floody. This is not looking good. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we can kind of see how the Jedi does in the one versus one versus the Conny now. No, I mean, he's gonna get plus one, buddy. Uh, a blue team uh, might be able to just be fine. There should be like, no issues. Yeah, they're about to get mid here. Namia now uh, getting assisted there by the, uh, getting plus in there by the core guardian. Just, just giving a bit of an, a bit of a BM empower there. Barrison like empowering and then leaving. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I'm out of here now. Of course, there will be the renegade respawning there of Alfie. I'm gonna try and push into this fight, but oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to come back now. Like red team starting to have this game locked uh, a little bit. Scourge here, uh, Dustron holding down mid, but Scourge versus Deadeye is terrifying, right? Like this Scourge is not long for this world. The Corgan has to come in to support that immediately. And with that, it just leaves the map in a bit of a tricky situation right now for the blue team. Their Solby's 1v2 is maybe about to die here. So, so very low. Has a bit more evasion, a bit more mobility. It's going to be able to just barely, barely wriggle away there. There we go. There is the escape from the blue team. But is it going to be quite enough there? Nope. It is not going to be enough, unfortunately. There is the kill on the Soul Beast. The cap will remain in favor of the Windmill. Deadeye secures uh, maybe this node here is on, but no, the Condorov is able to note that and intercept that. And Blue, they still actually have mid, so they can maybe come back here, but they've only got four minutes to do it, and that is difficult. Like, in a meta, uh, with this speed, it is kind of difficult to actually come back from this uh, kind of situation. They do now have the two cap, which is... Wait, is that even enough? In fact, I am not entirely sure that it is. Uh, you know, Red team, even if they, uh, no, actually, I think it would. Oh, uh, it actually wouldn't they be. Yeah, kills, yeah, they yeah, they need then... kills and a decap there as well at the least. If they want to come back. They do find the dead. Now that's a key kill actually. Like blue team, the cold blooded killers. They can maybe do this if the weaver actually. Oh, oh, the weaver actually nearly loses node there. If he can't pop obsidian flesh right now, actually, if the uh, the soldiers can actually pressure hard enough um, to force the obsidian, this would actually be a decap and put the cold blooded killers back into the winning condition here. Can he go for it? But of course. Alfie, Alfie is uh, misplaying right now, though. Like, he's been Ooh. sticking around in mid for too long, trying to, like, negate the rotations from, like, Zin. But instead, he could have just plus one far into the alley and maybe got the decap there. So they just kind of um, are undecisive a bit. Trying to not get decapped and shit like that, but. They could play a bit more risky. Yeah, they've got... I think they have to play risky at this point when you're behind and there's not much time left. You've just got to go for it, I think. Blue, of course, are in a situation where they can absolutely win this game if they can lock this down. And, they, and I think positionally, they're actually okay here. Scourge dueling on mid is fine. Endrix here going to come in for the corner. And actually, Barrison maybe getting locked here on the mansion. That's really not good at all. But thinking now as the dead eye goes down, if they can finish that, they can absolutely win this game. They might... Oh, Signet for Barrison. Signet. Very, very nice, though. Big Signet. 
It's actually all run, by the way, not Barristan. I got corrected by Reddit. Oh wait, what? Wait, why? Why is it? Why is it named Barristan then? Where is this? Okay. Oh, and then Alfie actually does. Like, well, why, guys? Why, why are you trolling us with these names? Hey, what, what the hell is going on here? Never mind. Red team. Uh, th that might be kind of the end there. That was a really nice kill. If blue can bunker down, maybe it's good enough. But even with a two cap, red win on a single node here. So there has to be something. Here. Oh, the weaver does die here. And of course, the is there a blood? There could be a blood res from Twitch TV Roy. No, that's not going to happen. Wait, is a kill enough? Oh, no, it's not enough with Emirates. Going they have to revive that. They've got to find a way to bring that player back. Otherwise, this is pretty much going to be it. Oh, and they can't do it. The cleave for the cod over the damage for the it's just too much. There's no decap potential as well. The Weaver bleeding out there on node. But maybe there's a decap potential here from the Solbies on the discussion. No, can't make that. And they really can't afford to lose this node here as well. They need that node neutralized. And I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get it in time. Yeah, Twitch TV, right? Just bunkering down here with the Mender Scourge. We're now seeing the rotation from Duster on there to try and help out with that. But this does leave mid open, which is a very, very risky play. Oh, Nemia is dead here. Wait, oh no, Ender's going mid instead of coming out of the corner. Oh no, this is a bit of a mistake here, I think. Uh, from the blue team. Well, I mean, the game's over. No, it's pretty much over. We see an exceptionally well played game from Roy here on the Mender. Yeah. <laughs> risky pick, you gotta say that. Like, Mender is not something we see in a lot of games, but he made it work. Roy is an exceptionally skilled player, so. I would expect it. nothing less from a Definitely. god gamer such as Roy. A god gamer, my friends. But yeah, so my pick on the last map, where like my prediction actually got uh, debunked, or like uh, actually, I mean the dead I won, pretty much. Wouldn't have expected that, but they made it work. They pretty much uh, showcased how to properly rotate with a dead eye, or like how to not properly rotate with a renegade if you have to kind of chase a dead eye. <coughs> hey, uh, I'm here for my winner's oh. interview. Yeah. Oh, okay. all right. That was. Yeah. You know, guys. Crazy yeah. story. I just woke up from the best 15-minute nap I've ever had in my life. Yeah. You feel oh refreshed, my, yeah. reinvigorated? Oh, yeah. It, that was... Uh, I, I have never had as restful of a sleep as I just had the last 15 minutes. I don't know what it was that, that, that gave it to me, but wow, I can tell you, it was good. Uh, insomniacs everywhere are finding the cure for their, their sleep deprivation, and it is Mender's Um But uh, anyways, I just wanted to chime in for a little bit, uh, a little bit there. But nicely done, Flodium. That was that was very very well casted, funny. I had a question for you though. Um, yeah, go for it. So obviously we haven't seen our other kind of top seeded team here yet. We're gonna see them up next. Uh, the science fair there. I don't know. Have you mm -hmm. have you played against them at all? Are you familiar with that um, team at all? I only played against the squirrels, American squirrels. Okay. That was pretty much like the only American team that we scrimmed against, because they played on EU for some time. Okay. Um, but no, who's playing on the science fair? Update me. Who's playing on the science fair? So I was talking about this a little bit before. Uh, so Urantian is, is kind of one of those players I highlighted a little bit. Oh, okay, uh, as, okay, as, okay, as, okay yeah, it's, it's actually a lot of older players. So it's Urantian, who is not one of the most older players, but um, the rest of them kind of are. So Kpud, Zombify, uh, Countless, and Marvin, actually, is coming out of retirement, is what I've been told. Um, definitely, so definitely. a lot of very, yeah, a lot of strong kind of older players there. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that team. It should be interesting, but I was just, I was just curious if you had any thoughts on any of the specific NA teams in this bracket, or if you weren't really familiar with as many of them, which is Oh, any fun. thoughts? I, I, I thought you asked if they, if we fought them recently. Oh, never, no, never no. mind. Okay. Never mind. Um, I don't know. I think they can pretty much hang on. Depends on how they perform actually on like the global stage, I guess. But I could definitely see the team from Mirage, and like obviously he played in the motor as well, so he can definitely hang. Fair enough. And here we go. Martin can perform on Korgat. The game yeah, is much. getting started. It says leap right into it. now. I think there's a lot. Oh, actually, we see it's not the Dead Eye. It's going to be a Condi Thief, in fact, uh, from the red team here instead. They're going to switch up a little bit, play a little bit of a different variant. So maybe not filling the Dead Eye. I think maybe, I mean, in, in this particular match, do you think there's any particular reason for to go Condi Thief on this map over the Dead Eye, Floody? I don't really think that there's like a big idea. Maybe because like there's a lot of line of sight that you can abuse on this map, which can kind of negate um, Dead Eye to some extent. Um... That's pretty much my only uh, point that I would bring on for like not playing that I. But even then, that I would be fine on this map. Mm, 
they're not playing CPC on these Scourge either, so I don't see why that I wouldn't be played. Not really. Yeah, it's the triple wells, actually, uh, on the Scourge here, too. Ooh, and double Necromancer. Is this a minion Monster? I do not believe it is, actually. It may just be a regular core. Yeah, it's regular core Necron. And this is one that we actually saw utilized on this map, uh, really abusing that Flesh Worm to basically hold this side node, like using the core Necromancer as a side node, but also with, of course, teamfight value and just having that worm in position to always get back to this node uh, as quick as possible. So I think we might be seeing a little bit of that during this game as well. But, I mean, so far, a fairly slow start here. Twitch TV Roy being uh, chased down very, very hard enough, putting the CPC up to defend himself from the onslaught of the Renegade, at least for the time being here. But still uh, very close uh, so far in this team fight. I'm sure, yeah, we're going to see Zin get re-sustained up almost immediately, and they're going to turn it around onto Nimu though. Nimu taking very, very heavy pressure there. But once again, get some fantastic healing and will not be going anywhere anytime soon. And guys, just once again, this is not Roy. Uh, these are players who want me to go get the coin. He goes down. Signet. Yeah, there it is. Good Signet there. Uh, from old Barristan. Fake Barristan, I should say. Not actually the uh, the same person. They're going to try and turn around onto Embrix. Embrix, ooh, they might have overstayed their welcome as well. The Thief was able to disengage fairly easily. And now Blue Team in a bit of a situation where they've got to keep going on this, but they've got to win this fight. Otherwise, they are in a lot of trouble. Meanwhile, okay, Twitch TV just... He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. There's no recovery from that. Revive onto the... They get the, they get the Condi Rev, but the Stomp is going to deny any kind of revival attempts onto the Core Guardian. Uh, you've got to be so careful. These fights, a slight overextension there by the Blue Team. They just didn't have... Their scourge didn't have the scourge into the renegade, so the team fight, the three v three, just completely fell apart there for them as they went for the further aggression. There, are they going to be able to get anything done here? Mm, not really. I don't think they can really kill this scourge anytime soon. He should have a good amount of standard authority. He is just a little bit low on cooldowns, but well of corruption coming back now with the fear, he should be more than capable of surviving here at least until there's some kind of support coming in uh, from the rest of the team. And red team now ahead after that kill, but the nodes still not really doing that much, right? We're still seeing pretty much one node apiece. Uh, we're, oh. Are these guys going to AFK over here, actually? No. Okay, actually, we see the core guard, a core necromancer of down bad. Looking at you, kill. Oh, kills the rev, actually. Ooh, that's free buff as well. That's very nice here. Um, no, the other side, the, we can uh, see the thief fighting versus the renegade again. Oh, and he, he actually got it. That is kind Ooh. of bad. Yeah, that's pretty brutal, actually. There's going to be so much more power. We already saw Blue Team have a little bit of trouble in the fight. They're outnumbered as well. And having both buffs, you know, it's almost kind of like having an additional player helping you out there as well. That is, it's going to be almost impossible uh, for Blue to actually fight into this until those swords and shields have dispersed. That'll be a little while there as well. In fact, if another kill comes here as well, this is going to go from bad to us. Yeah, respawn on the rev into the immediate kill onto Dustron. Red Team getting a nice little... Good signet, though, actually, on the Dustron, but is he going to be able to survive? I'm not sure. If, is he going to have to reset it? I mean, maybe. Condi Thief Spike, here it comes. Can't get the transfer. The sword's going to stomp it. Maybe the... Maybe can they... Oh. Oh. Get the uh, yeah, the stomp is there. Alfie in a lot of trouble here, too. Does get some good healing off. Will not be dying anytime soon. Has a bit of stability there to translate. But the heal skill into it. No, I, anytime soon. No, mind that. How about right the hell now? Alfie falls. Old Barrison stomping it out there with the guard. And a decisive team fight victory. Uh, for our red team here. Now, we are seeing the side nodes getting pushed here quite effectively by uh, Nemo here, but again, this is a power herald here, guys. This is not a condi herald here from Nemo. So, taking the uh, 1v1 into a core necro is going to be uh, painful for Definitely him. Definitely painful for the nerfs to, like, resistance rune. Like, before the nerfs to resistance rune, you could actually take the duel pretty effectively. Even now, you can, kind of. If you get a nice combo, but it's definitely much, much worse now. Especially with the fear of getting plus one, but did I know? Uh, and the Condi, they oh, 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 this Power Herald's not having a fun time, Floody. Oh, no, 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 no. That is bad. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I would definitely pinpoint this to, like, the Red Team just having a much, much better team fight on this map, especially. Um, cons compared to, like, the uh, Condi Sobies, for example. Who is kind of forced to team fight sometimes. But the fact that like the red team has the Kony um, core necro, it's pretty much giving them like a huge boost to overall impact. Like Kony Sobies is pretty much much more uh, single target focused, and now they're pretty much gonna get snowboard and staggered. Yeah, and this is this is like um, oh, there's the stomp out. Like, nah, they don't even get it. 
Uh, this is looking like a much more decisive game than the first. Actually, the first game incredibly close, but red team really cranking it up, like taking it up another level here. There's another signal of maybe here, and it is going to come through, and they're going to have the respawn from the Soul Beast appearing right now. But Dustron dies again. Emdrix falls. Uh, this is very, very uh, good here for the red team. They're going to find themselves and in third mode. Yeah, the Ranger is going to be able to kind of get over to the other side of that and probably force at least one decap, potentially even the full cap over there. But it's triple cap, two, no, three bleeding out with Alfie full again. This is an absolute monstrous game here from, yeah, whatever. They want a 2 zero. They, 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 I think they're about done with this one, uh, Floody. They're done. Like, let's just move on. Like, they, uh, they're, they're out. They are, you know, let's go. Had enough. They do not want to have any close calls like the previous one. And another big... Oh, I think that actually maybe the GG call actually, guys. And that's fair enough. Uh, Nemo not... Oh, actually, wait. No, no, he is actually going to start moving again. Or... No, never mind. Cancel that. We actually do see them continuing to... Oh, actually, wait. Uh, wait. Uh, uh, do we? Do, it's, uh, over, it's over. It's over. Is it GG called? Or, or what? Like, what? Yeah, I already, I already oh. asked. They confirmed. Okay, this right. Is. Okay. Yep, it's GG confirmed. There it is. That is going to be the end of that. GG well played uh, to, yeah, whatever. They are going to be advancing. I mean, we'll just, yeah, just, like fully confirm that, of course, before we actually update the score and all that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, wait, actually. Oh. Yeah, okay, there you go. Roy has noticed it. And that, I believe, will be the game end coming on through. There it is. I mean, woof. That's scary. I mean, cold-blooded kills, they looked super strong um, in that first game. But yeah, whatever. They just adapted. Maybe they liked the map a little bit more compared to Kyle. Of course, Kylo, a much smaller map. Uh, harder them to really leverage their rotations in, perhaps. There, it was more just team fighting. And, well, team fighting can be a little... It's not... I wouldn't say it's RNG. But, you know, team fighting can... It can... It can just go wrong, right? You could just die in a team fight sometimes, right? But there you have it, guys. But all right, here we go. So it is the science fair on the red team. They're on the blue team are going to be the American squirrels. We have seen the American squirrels already. We have not seen this red team before. But I mean, as, as we just mentioned right before that Coliseum match, almost every single one of these players is extremely well known, if not all of them. Certainly names that I think a lot of, especially older players, players will recognize. But that doesn't just necessarily mean that it's going to be a free win for them. Blue team, American squirrels, a lot of their players have been playing more actively in recent times and certainly more actively together than... I think this red team has, who may have just come together kind of for this tournament specifically. So it'll be interesting to see how that expertise, that experience, kind of matches up against actual real uh, recent game knowledge. But let's see what happens here. Side node is going to go to each team. Middle node going to be currently contested. Marvin already taking a little bit of pressure here. This core guardian on the side of red team using quite a few cooldowns. He is going to be forced into the RF kind of early on into this fight. And there hasn't been a lot of counter pressure turned on a blue team as of yet from red. Lich coming out now from Aluda as well. Trying to continue to put that pressure on to the core guardian. Marvin currently just kiting for really all he's worth. Hollowsmith ability is coming out on top of the node. When our lips touch, already going almost into down here. Zombify going to be pretty low on top of that, trying to peel for his core guardian, but I don't think it's going to happen. Literally. Zombify himself might go down. K pod a little bit low there. Zombify trying to go for the red, but the stop's going to be good from Cranox. And already, American Squirrels bringing the fight to the OG players. They're pretty much showing that they got the much stronger team fight here. Like, um, even with like the NG coming in for like a lot of CC and even more like Condi clans to provide, to actually like pretty much negate Countless' impact in like the team fights. The Countless will not have impact in the team fights. That's why we saw him instantly after the kills um, on his team rotate out to farm, decap that. But now they're kind of stuck in a 2v2, which I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I'm not gonna lie. Um, maybe if Countless can make it work, I didn't see the uh, build in play yet, but they're actually getting a lot of pressure onto... Um, is it Dry Dude? I think it is. But yeah. Uh, Meanwhile... The, on the Hallsmith, yes. Hallsmith is Dry yeah. Dude, yes. Now, Yura almost at the decap in mid, contested I know by the you, Guardian. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you've been talking about your, your Mender's Scrapper a little bit, Floody, and obviously we don't know exactly how much of a joke that is, but, you know, do you think that this build that Dryden's playing, it's not a build that we've really seen on a U, right? We've seen a couple of Hollowsmiths yesterday, but, you know, not certainly as many as we've seen on an A, playing pretty much standard Grenade Hollow. Uh, but, you know, Dry Dude here playing this, this you know, pretty tanky side node hollow build, this pro hollow. You know, how do you feel about it? You know, do you think there's a better side node build to play? Mender Scrapper or something else? Or do you think hollow, uh, Grenade Hollow is better? Do you think this is a, a, a strong build? Um, Mender Scrapper is a meme, first of all. Okay, um, okay very good. The pro that Dry Dude is playing is uh, definitely one of the best builds that you can, like, pretty much one of the, uh, I would say, three best builds that you can play for NG right now. And it's something that pretty much the Worms are playing um, on Jar that I'm playing and like obviously Dry Dude is now playing. I don't know what Zen is going to play, but I would assume he might be playing that as well. 
Um, so I'm definitely, yeah, they got a super strong team. They got a lot of viable classes. And you can see it pretty much on the score. Like, they're completely dominating the red team right now. They can't really rotate yeah, anywhere. And I don't know. I don't see a comeback potential for, like, the red team here unless they actually make something uh, work around, like, countless. But yeah, it's a lot of weird picks, especially on Jura as well. He's playing like this dance build that we saw in the recent game, or like in the last game. But he's playing on power with Valkyrie instead of like Condi. So I don't know how big the value from that is, but let's see, let's yeah. see. Maybe it's just not that map. You know, I think Kylo obviously not necessarily the best map as we actually see Cranox being taken out kind of in roads. Marvin going to be able to get that stop. Looks like there's a bit of an outnumber towards Mansion. And Jura doing an excellent job of kiting basically across the entire map getting away from those players. But they're about 160, 70 points down now, so they're going to have to make some serious moves if they have any chance to come back into this Kylo or if they're just going to be a 1-0 straight into Coliseum. But, you know, what I was saying, Kylo maybe not the best map for a bit of a rotational comp. You know, it's, it's very easy to kind of just team fight on one node and get to the side nodes very quickly if that is what you're doing. As you see Zombie going very low around mid, we are going to see Marvin there to peel and heal him out there, so might be okay. Okay, put coming in as well with those ports to help peel for him, but... I think that red team is definitely a team that just prefers to rotate. You know, they're not, they don't really want to go for those team fights as much. And just like you said, you know, blue team does have the stronger team fight comp. So I think obviously a little bit unlucky with Kyle, uh, with Kylo, but you know, we would like to see them maybe try to adapt a little bit more to that instead of just play what they want to when it doesn't necessarily work on a map. Good plus there from k though, to finish that kill on a dry dude before the team fight can get over. Cranax, no chance for him to be able to get that signal as the stomp just comes through first. So this is red team, you know, they, they're they're doing, they're showing a little bit of life. They're getting a couple of kills around the map, but they're not really converting that into anything. They're not getting nodes for it. They're not completely stomping a team fight and snowballing the map back. And that's exactly what they have to do at this point. 250 plus points down. Double cap still on the board here for blue team. Not a single point confirmed there for red yet. Just a couple of kills, and that is not nearly going to be enough for them to come back into this game. Definitely. Um, what we saw from, like, the encounter... I think one minute ago, um, Jura was fighting against the Hollow, for example. But Jura actually had insane value um, with his power build. So I think I kind of like have to take back my statement here of the power build being questionable over like the Condi build. Because like obviously the Condi build is not going to have any value into like Pert Hollow, for example. That is a smart choice from him. Um, the kind of bad thing is that the red team is obviously playing power ref instead of Condi ref. I mean, obviously you said that they like to rotate. But I think it's gonna bite them in the end, as we see them actually win the team fight here. But yeah, I mean, out. they 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 staggered this team fight. I think just going off of that kill onto Dry Dude, and then they were able to convert that in just because they were numbering for a while. But again, I mean, they're they're almost 300 points down. Winning one team fight is nice, but they have to now hold the entire map basically triple capped, or at least two nodes in a decap, as Blue Team have done for so long for the, re the remainder of this game if they want to come back into it. And that means they have to win basically every single team fight from here on out. It's just, it's going to be very difficult for them to do so. They're putting themselves into a better position, obviously. You know, they, now we've got a cap on Windmill. It looks like they're probably going to cap Clock Tower. I really like this decision from Blue Team, you know, to, to regroup now, wait for Aluda to come back into respawn, and potentially allow Red Team to overextend as well, because Red Team have to stay behind to get that cap on Clock Tower. They still have two players over there. Blue team of all five of their players here. Countless potentially overextending. Marvin here, K-Pud here. k needs to be very careful. He doesn't get taken out quickly because that will just be the map swung back the way of blue team yet again. Countless going to be a little bit low here. He needs to be very careful that he does not go down. Marvin here with Signet available, but not a lot of cooldowns to keep people alive. Team fight brewing now around Mansion, but again, we see Zombify finally getting into this node where the rest of his team has been here for several moments already. Marvin going to be very low and completely out of cooldowns, and blue team played this perfectly. They just waited for red team to overextend to move into them, burn all their cooldowns. Now they're bringing the fight back to them. Them, pushing back into Clock Tower. They're going to kill Marvin here. That's the core guard support out of this fight completely. Feedback Reds coming oh, out from Countless there. There's a nice knock coming out from the Revenant on the side of Blue Team, though. Transfusion on top of it, too, but I don't think it's going to matter. Zombify, k going to fall as well, and Blue Team, it's just a repeat of what happened earlier. They, they take another fight. See another downstate coming out. Very nice thing there from Cranox. Stepro, God X, Dry Dude being taken out off to the side. Urantian and Countless trying to get some value off that lost team fight, but I mean, that was. Look, again, that was the best position Red Team has been in, in this entire game, and they just overextended. Durantian and Zombify just, they stayed too long at Clock Tower. They were too worried about Aluja coming in off of Respawn and getting a decap. But they should have been more focused on where their team was, or there should have just been better communication between their team. Because if they had five man pushed into this node, they have a chance to win this fight. If they push in with three into four and then five, and then slowly trickle in their fourth and fifth players, there's no way that's going to work. 
Guardian, obviously, extremely strong support, but once it starts running out of those cooldowns, it's not a hard class to kill. It doesn't really have any momentum, it doesn't really have any movement abilities, so... Marvin getting locked down very early like that, having to burn so many cooldowns to keep Countless alive in a 3 versus 4, 3 versus 5. I mean, that's just a, a straight-up win there for blue team, and the game's over at that point. <sighs> or would you? Would you disagree, Floody? Well, Floody permanently muted, unfortunately. I don't know if... Uh, oh, I, d I was muted. I didn't he's see. just in awe of the game, yeah, dude. He's in I awe of the American squirrels. Yes. American squirrels, more like the American dream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Manifest destiny, man. They're manifesting I mean, this know, win. Some good stuff there from Red Team, for sure, at, towards the end, but they just, they started off very slow. It seemed like they really had some trouble kind of figuring out what they wanted to do. We see them actually almost winning this team fight here at the end, but I would really like to see, I mean, now we're going to see them at Coliseum. Again, a map that should potentially favor, excuse me, their comp a, a lot more than Kylo. Uh, but I really want to see them just play a little bit more the way they played when they, they, they initially, you know, they used their, their roamers to get that first kill onto Dry Dude when he was outnumbered, they quickly got that kill, and then they converted that into another kill, uh, and then another kill, and they snowballed that side of the map. They then won the entire map, and then they just they ended up overextending. So, you know, it's it's unfortunate that they did at the end, but there's definitely some things they're doing right, and if they can continue to, to really double down on that and do it, then I, I, you know, and repeat those good things that are happening, avoid those mistakes, and I think we can see them have a, a stronger game. But either way, this should be a better map for them. I want to talk a little bit about Countless's build, Floody. Is this the same build that we saw the uh, the Quaggins running on their Mirage yesterday? No, no, no. Like, you, the Countless is running, like, pretty much... I think it's like a duelist. Yeah. He can kind of teamfight with it. He's going for, like, the feedback res and stuff like that. But it just doesn't cut it really. Like, they try to play it as, like, a three-note comp. But Countless has so many bad matchups. Like, he maybe has, like, one good matchup into the Conjure, if I would assume. But then versus the Scourge is not good, versus the full Protolo is not good. I don't know, I just don't see the impact from this build. Like, he would be much better off playing a rotational build with, like, Portal maybe even. To, like, debunk or, like, kind of force the blue team to rotate a bit more. But yeah, it's gonna be very questionable, especially now that the blue team reroll to Thief instead of the Necro. Or, like, the core Necro, what they were playing. Yeah. And, and we saw Luda play this earlier as well and do a very nice job on it as well, so, I, you know... Obviously, expecting good things, and and that's something that you know I want. So this this Mirage build, yeah, I'm I'm surprised that we see Countless kind of playing this. You know, it's almost like he's trying to do too many things at once with it. You know, I think I think that the Quaggins have this this idea that they want to use the Mirage as a roamer, and maybe they weren't executing it great yesterday, but the build certainly was there. But Countless, as you said, I mean, he's going for these kind of this almost one v one build, and and maybe that's a little bit better. You know, because he'll have more potential to maybe one v one things like this Condi Herald he's now matching into. But if they're no, trying to get much Good. Go for it. Go for it. No, 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 I mean, it's pretty much like the one matchup that he wants to push, actually. I would assume so. Like, I didn't see, like, all of the matchups, but I would assume that now they're pretty much in a good situation. Um, you see that Drydude might actually die on far here. He's, yeah, he's pretty dead. And now they can pretty much get value. Um, Countless can actually get a lot of value now because he's obviously playing, like, more sustainable build, a lot of um, distort and shit like that. So he can sustain with like even a, a thief plus one, and wait for his power rift to come. But the power rift now went mid, I think, to get some value there. But they're not getting any value versus like the core guard and like the min minimizer necro, like they have, um, the the mana scourge. I mean, like the full life, both of them. It's yeah. questionable. They have to play like three notes, otherwise it's not gonna happen. Yeah, and, and it did seem like they were starting to do that, but then no one really rotated out of mid to help Countless at far when he got plus there by the uh, by the, the, the Revan and the Thief. And we do see nice job there from k actually to get a looted down. Might be a Signet coming out from Cranox on it, but no, Cleave's going to be too fast there. Obviously pretty easy there. He will get In return, Marvin is that, though. They might yeah, Marvin going to go down. Feedback. They knocked it out of the feedback. That's pretty, pretty big. They yeah, get the think, yeah. yeah, Transfuse Res is going to be good there from the Scourge, so Marvin will be back up. But again, Marvin falling here. He's fall he's died pretty much every single team fight that Blue Team have won first. And we can see that happening. Really nice focus pull there, actually, from Countless. Kranach's going to be pretty low. Does still have a couple of cooldowns available to him, but no real pressure on anyone besides maybe K-Putt a little bit on this team. So far, though, Kranach's going to be almost going to be taken out here now in this team fight. Still nice, a second available nice, if nice. anyone else goes down. 
Red team playing this definitely a lot better than we saw them do so on Kylo, but they have been ahead from the start. Stepro got X, Dry Dude not gonna be going down. The transfusion actually screws no. over the signet. Oh no, they've lost that. Oh, a bit of miscommunication there. The step bro got X gonna go get taken the hand out now. Forward. You get the hand res on him, but there's a lot of cooldowns wasted. Signet gonna be burned as well for absolutely nothing. Transfuse completely ruins that. Cranex is gonna be very low as heal, keeping himself and free neutrons alive for a couple more seconds, but I think that should be a kill on the Guardian from Blue Team. They put there as well. Still though, side note's gonna go the way of blue, even if they lose the team fight. It's actually saying that's still standing. Like the uh, NG is responding now. They're not getting like the full cap in mid. Like during the time when they like won the team fight in mid, like the thief yeah. just decap uh, full cap both nodes. And yeah, now he's going and, for and I mean, that's, Yeah, yeah. now he's going for mm -hmm. buffs. And, and Countless just isn't having the same impact on the map that the Thief is, I'd say. I mean, they are still ahead, obviously. Again, you know, these kills, I think, are starting to feed into their points a little bit better than, you know, what Blue Team gained from getting those side nodes. And Countless is going to get back to Lion in time to get that, that or stop that decap. Middle node finally going to be won. And this will put Red Team in a little bit of a, a easier position, I think, than they've been in the last couple of games, or the last couple of moments. Uh, you know, they, they're now able to rotate out of Middle node instead of just being locked into it, trying to either contest it or cap it. But bottom buff, going to go the way of Blue Team Eludra, picking that up. Now there's going to be a bit of a fight here between k -Pud and Dry Dude at the top of the shield. Zombify thinking about con plusing that. Countless now going to be outnumbered, though, uh, over at far. Not bad, not bad. Um, Countless can survive here, I think. Like, that's pretty much the the value that he's creating from like playing this build. And now he's in the one versus one again that he wants. I don't know how quick he can actually like decap that or like win the note. But they're pretty much in a good state right now. They just have to watch out that they don't get screwed over in mid now. With like Marvin being the only guy on the note. But the Scourge Zombifier is coming back in. Um, Dry Dude is still stuck on the shield buff. But they're like in the one versus two right now. They should actually get it. And get... Yeah. I mean, I, it's know, kind I'm, of okay. They can... I'm seeing way more value from this thief here. Uh, Aluda has gotten way more value in terms of being a, a rotational plus one decapper than I think Countless has. Uh, Countless doing a, you know a decent job I think at far. You know he's per, he's pulling some players over there. He's he's been one v twoing a couple of times, but for the most part he hasn't really gotten any kills. He hasn't plus one anyone. And I guess maybe that's not the purpose of his build, right? I mean, you were saying he's he's going for this kind of tankier, more duelist variant of this build. And so I guess if he's getting value in that sense, it's good. But Aluda definitely doing a lot of work on this map. And I think that Aluda probably the one keeping his team in the game right now, considering that they've lost the team fight and they have mostly lost the nodes overall. Uh, going for a decap for sure, now sure. At, at Dragon. I gotta say that the blue team got the decap on mid which is kind of unexpected. But obviously, like, they got a stronger team fight. They might actually get the full cap now. Uh, how's that looking? Like, one tick left for the blue team to get the full cap. Even though they lost, like, all of the team fights. It's kind of questionable, but I guess we can see what the uh, thief is uh, doing now. Oh, they got the kill on Krenok, it's actually really big. They turned it around. Perfect. And um, Countless is winning his one versus one in front, as it seems like. Yep. Interesting, and, interesting. Uh, I mean, as long as, as long as it keeps going, but obviously, you know, I think it's... It's almost, I think when their plan works for Red Team, right, when, when the plan that they're trying to get works, it's a little bit slower uh, to, to kind of, you know, for us to see the results of that because we see them constantly getting decapped here by this thief. And, and again, you know, the Countless holding on to this 1v2, as long as he doesn't die, he's bringing, you know, getting some value because they should be able to outnumber and win that team fight at mid now. Although it's not happening right now because we do see Urantian going for the decap and a free cap uh, at far, or his home, I should say. And the middle fight not really going their way. But Blue Team, I think they're doing a much better job of just... They're they're focusing really hard on making sure that as soon as Countless leaves, they get their home node. They're pushing into mid. When Aluda has a chance to to put pressure on Defar, he does. And besides that, they're really just focusing on those two nodes. And, and it's putting them ahead of Red Team now because every time Red Team tries to you know move out across all three nodes, they end up losing somewhere. And that really starts putting them behind. So they had a little bit of a lead early on, especially because of that team fight they won. But now they're starting to fall behind here. Uh, we're going to see top buff. Going the way of Blue Team and Aluja actually maybe getting bottom buff for free as well. So this next team fight, unless Red Team can finish it right now, could turn around very badly for them with the double buffs. Kranax starting to get hard res is going to be in downstate. The Quake's going to be there. The stop going to be good too. Ryan going to fall down on top of it now. So even with double buffs, just didn't come enough. And Sequoia is going to probably fall himself. So Red Team going to find yet another mid-fight win for themselves. Is it going to be enough though to completely swing the map there? Red Team getting decapped at far. And blue team is Countless still gonna get to the decap on the opposite side of the map now. Hmm, questionable. I mean, like, 
The red team is getting the full cap now in mid. I kind of want to see what... Uh, Loda is still like one was running versus Urantian. That's like kind of a waste of time. But I think he's just like stalling for someone to come into the node and maybe like... Uh, so they don't drop the node instantly. But I don't think that's actually going to happen. They're definitely like in a good situation now, the red team. They're almost getting... They actually got triple cap. Did they? Uh, no, they didn't. Wait, they actually did get Yeah, they did. It's just the UI. Okay, yeah. yeah, triple no, cap is confirmed for them, yes. Indeed. Counter yeah, is now in like a situation where he always, like pretty much, again, wants to be in. It's versus the Scourge. I think that's pretty okay for him. Now, he's 1v3. Can he actually survive that? He should be fine. He got so many fucking signals that he <laughs> can't really die, to be honest. I know yeah, he's good. coming in to peel for him as well. Yeah, honestly, I mean, Countless has been been doing some serious work here at far. He's constantly been putting pressure on the node, pulling players over there. Do you think that there's anything that blue team should be doing specifically to try and counter Countless? Uh, you know, is there something they should be doing better? Should they ignore him? Should they just they try should, and kill they him? They should just really move in Dry Dude to not be in the team fights, um, like the Pretorio did this. Just let him one versus one to Countless because, like, he's not going to get decap versus Countless. On Prototo. That's pretty much the one matchup that Prototo wants to take. And right. they still keep rotating the Conigraph to like back note against uh, the Mesma. And the Mesma is always gonna get a decap after some time. So, yeah, yeah questionable. Marvin is gonna drop really low in mid though. He's in RF right now. Yura is still back noting onto the close note. Mm. Yeah, he's just coming into the team fight now. But as you mentioned, yeah. Marvin already very low in cooldown. So that does force the decap from blue team. And they're definitely not too far behind. Still six minutes left in the game. We're going to see Aluda now coming uh, out, out to try and go for the decap at far. k punch should be able to prevent that decap from going. But that doesn't mean there's going to be a lot less damage here for red team in this team fight. And Marvin already low. Could be blue team's chance to turn this game around. Uh, and, and turn if, if they take If Aluda can play, actually take the duel versus, the, versus k punch here. It could definitely be super fucking good for Aluda. And he almost got the decap. Like one more tick and then it's going to be fine. Yeah. I think it's actually yeah, favored for like... Mm. Should, should it be favored for the thief? I actually don't know. Like pre patch, it was definitely favored for the thief. Yeah, but, I, I, I think it's a little bit harder to say now. I think the rev might have an advantage at this point, but it, it definitely, you know, I'm certainly not the most experienced thief player, so I, I couldn't tell you exactly. Yeah. I think it's possible. Still, Luda probably going to get the decap, though. I think, uh, yeah, your Rantian going to be changing there with K Pud. So K Pud obviously just feeling a little less confident about taking that 1v1. But Luda not going to stay around there for that 1v1 with the Rantian. Just gonna start heading over to buffs as buffs will be coming up in just a couple or they're already up excuse me came up about a minute ago and uh, that'll be again top buff coming up and blue team have done a good enough job of just holding this team fight and again you know we saw the buffs come up both of the buffs were gotten for blue team unfortunately though at the time they got them wait hold that thought kranik's gonna go down again right when the buffs come up transfuse res will get him out this time for free though so they are going to be able to confirm that res under the support guardian still signet in hand so again this team fight now going to be pretty important both these teams in a pretty good position marvin I is think, gonna die here though get he, there, got marvin. Marvin. he gets peeled out maybe Ooh, yeah. it's so close he got so RF in like low. eight seconds five He's seconds gonna, he is getting some fight. heals yeah, the barrier from Zombify keeping him alive, so now he will be able Luda to reset there. Luda on Countless. Perfect. Still coming up, yep. This is definitely a little bit better for Blue Team. If they can find this kill on a Marvin or, or find another kill and force him to burn his signet, they will get ahead. But honestly, this is, the I think, the closest this team fight has been so far uh, this entire match in terms of both these teams not really getting ahead either way. And part of that is obviously, you know, the kill on Countless now forcing, I think, some of these players to move out. Urantian as well having to go into far to try and contest that node into Step Rogue X. We'll have to see how that goes. But still, the team fight not not happening uh, for either team at the moment. Zombify going to be a little bit low. low. Breach going to be just dropped there now by Ryan on the node, forcing them to push off a little bit. But neither team going to have a real advantage in this. Countless now coming back in to the map in just a couple of seconds. But Aluja, again, this thief getting value is going to decap the home node there for red team. Marvin dangerously low yet again. Doesn't have the ARF available. Just burn through it. Kranix go. He's going to go down first. Downstates on both sides. There's the transfuse coming out from blue team, so they are going to start going for that hard res. Eludra coming in. Nox is going to be there, but it's not going to happen. The CC is good and be good. Marvin on top of this. That might be a bit of an overextension. Mm -hmm. There, the knock there from k but is going to be good. They're still going for the res. They're still trying to cleave, Kranich. and they get it. Kranach's up yet again. I can't believe they haven't been able to finish a kill either way. Marvin now, though, in the danger zone for sure. Can't stand on node. Eludra on top of this as well is absolutely deleting him. There's that Reaper buff coming in as well. And that'll be the kill confirmed on a Marvin. No chance for a res. And this is really bad for red team, as they may be in about a position to get the map swung back into blue team's favor. Okay, Euro's going for the power buff now. Oh, he missed it! 
The thief got the fucking power buff. Oh my god, that's so unlucky. The power thing from like the fucking X was off from the Granger, that's unlucky. They're definitely in a good position right now. They could definitely bring this game back, especially with the thief going for like the shield buff now. Countless can maybe contest that if he has blink up. Yes, he can. They're still in this game. Oh, absolutely. Really, really I mean, close. It is going to be very close. Still, They still have about a 30 point lead as well. So they have a little bit of time to work with this. Two and a half minutes left in the game. Blue team, though, with that steady double cap coming in. And, and I mean, it's exactly what you said. Stepro got X dry dude. Now he's he's the one sitting at line node. Obviously, Countless isn't really in a position to push onto that. And I think this is actually okay for them because he's keeping a Luja there, keeping the thief off the map. But he has to be careful. He doesn't just give the buff away. But this team fight probably is going to be what's most important. Right uh, the, the thing here is, though, the team fight, it might not end for a long time. We saw that last team fight, I mean, last almost two minutes, right? And and I think if, if that's not enough time for red team, and they just got decapped as well, that might be game. I think blue team are about to overtake them here. Marvin burning his RF in this team fight. They have to be able to decap far, and they're putting some pressure on it now. Countless is going to go there. Dry dude moving out of it, so they will get that decap confirmed. But the full cap from the thief onto the dragon node... And they just swap one node for the other. It doesn't matter. Middle node, no chance for them to decap it anytime soon. Zombie actually might even go down. I think they're going to lose this. They have the outnumber here as well. Blue team in a very commanding position on this middle node and on the map as well. Urantian locked into a 1v1 with a thief, so he can't rotate into this right now. Countless will come in in a second, but they've already lost so many cooldowns. k about to go down. Marvin is signet available, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. One CC and he doesn't have it, but they don't look at him and he gets the signet anyways. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though, because they have to decap middle at this point. 50 points away for blue team to take this game, and they're all going to start pouring in. Countless is rotated in here. Zombify going to be very low, though. No signal available for Marvin anymore. Drops his breach on top of the node. Is it going to be enough to put some pressure on it? No, it doesn't look like it, and Zombie will go down. Countless leaving because he wants to be able to contest the node, but that means they won't have that feedback res, and I think that itself is going to be game. The team fights just not going the way of red at the end there, and blue team are going to win off of it. Is it even game? They got a double cap. Uh, you're right, yeah. Good. I mean, the double cap, you are right. Countless leaving actually may have been the play. k though, very low. Can they hold on to this? They have 20 points to make up. It's 30 seconds left in the game as well. Count, uh, kills <laughs> might be pretty relevant. Right. Yeah, they get the decap. Oh. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. t was right. It was uh, almost close. Good. Yeah. It was pretty close, but yeah. It's uh, unfortunately with that decap, is not going to work out for them. And a blue team will take it 2-0 into the science fair. This American Squirrels team, I mean, way performing way better than I expected them to, honestly. Into uh, into a team that I thought was going to be... I mean, close game here, obviously, right? But still, the 2-0 definitely uh, speaks volumes there. The invasive sure. species taking over. Goodness yeah. me. Wow. Yeah, interesting game. Like, the blue team definitely has, like, decom right now, which is pretty much... Almost like the meta comp. Like, you could play like various side nodes, but like the core is there. They have the Revenant, they have the Scourge, they have the Support Guardian. Uh, what was the. I actually forgot. Uh, Rift, sorry, which team? Support Guard. Uh, the blue team. I'm talking about American Squirrels? Yeah, they were playing uh, uh, Prod Hollow, they were playing Condi Revenant, they were playing um, Thief. Well, there they were playing Thief. Oh, yeah, also Thief, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Playing uh, the Corn Necro, yeah. Yeah. They have a good yeah. comp, definitely. That is pretty much showing that like a good comp can definitely make people who are like rather how to say it. They are obviously like not as not as experienced as like Marvin or like Zombie Fire or some of them. But they can still make it work, like with dedication. Obviously they've been playing a lot in the past. But yeah, a good comp goes a long way. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean I, I think that the red team, you know, uh, the science fair, they have they have some good things going on there. Again, I think the beginning of that game, Countless, I mean, for the first half of it, Countless was getting a ton of value at far there, uh, even, you know, maybe when he shouldn't have been. But as soon as they moved Dry Dude into there, he had to stop rotating there as much. The Thief as well was kind of matching Countless a bit more for rotations. I think when Countless was able to kind of avoid almost overlapping his rotations with the Thief, it was a little bit easier for him to play. But now, you know, once he started running into the Thief, he didn't have free decaps, he didn't have free, uh, you know, rotations. And and it also was obviously harder for him to rotate into Dryden at the end. But, I mean, the main thing there was just, you know, they won they won a team fight. I think they may have won two team fights that game, but then they ended up just starting to lose them. Uh, and, and, and part of that, I think, was the Thief getting a little bit more involved towards the end with those team fights and also just maybe them playing a little bit better. Uh, I think the communication maybe was a little bit uh, off there in the beginning of the game. For that blue team in some of those team fights, we saw that transfusion pull out of the signet, really unfortunate, kind of cucking Cranox there. But then, uh, they, then they started really pulling it together, and they definitely looked a lot better. 
Exactly. And of course, we'll see the final clash of that next week. We're just getting ready to start our next game. I believe this this is uh, this is Cold-Blooded Killers versus uh, uh, the Science Fair, right? Yeah. Okay, that's exactly yes, what it this is. This is a best of one. Yes. We, yeah, we actually did. Because thanks to the massive population, uh, um, you know, the massive multiplication of teams on the EU, we didn't really have much time to actually look at the open record. We already went to eight hours yesterday, by the way, guys. That was um, a lot of fun, uh, but, you know, pretty intense. That's for sure. Took a little while, but thanks to, uh, you know, like the slightly lower population and honestly speed of some of these games, we have plenty of time to actually take a look at some of these games here. Either way, we're just waiting for the final fifth player here, uh, Channel the Flame, maybe, uh, to be coming in there and uh, joining that team. Yeah, there we go. So just remember, this is a best of one. Uh, whoever wins this game will be moving on to fight the, uh, the, the American Squirrels we just saw lose in the lower bracket finals. Uh, whoever loses this game will be out permanently. Um, but yeah, we've, uh, we're actually, we're getting very close. I mean, as Steve said, we're, we're definitely moving on a lot steadier than, uh, than, than yesterday. Obviously, there's less time overall, less teams. So it's, uh, it's a good pace that we're keeping up. But uh, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got this match. We've got the lower bracket finals. We've got the grand finals. And that is it for the open brackets. And then, uh, then it's just the invitational next week where I hope we see you, Nos. It'll be, you know, looking forward to, to seeing some, some necro plays yep. there from you. And, uh, uh, I'll yeah. try and do all the fun Scourge, Core Necro, big plays that that class yeah. is capable of. A very flashy class. Yep. Well, oh, that's yeah. one way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> All I got to yeah. say about this match right in front of us is blue team is going to need your energy, chat, if you want them to win. Well, I think really, one of the really predictions just... last time was 98 to 2 odds, and they <laughs> almost did it. I mean, that's, they almost did it. That's a big payoff they there, They need right? your energy now more than ever before. Yeah, but either way, let's, well, let's see what happens before the prediction has started. Again, remember, this is a best of one, so... We'll just be staying here for one game with these guys. But yeah, it's uh, Cold-Blooded Killers. A little bit of a lower-seeded team than than some of the teams that they have faced so far. But they're obviously bringing the fight to the Science Fair now. Uh, who, you know, again, we've, we've seen some good things from them. But we've also seen some questionable things from them. We'll have to see if Countless' is build if, uh, is going to work out. Durantian playing a little bit more of something standard. We're seeing Phoenix, I think, subbed in now for the first time. At least that we've seen him on this Weaver build. So he's going to be going for the cross here. And it's your It's going to be Sage Amulets on both of them. As Nemia actually getting chased down right now by K-Pud and Countless off note. It's going to be up to uh, Phoenix to try and peel for Nemia. In the moment, though, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. And Nemia will be brought into downstate. Hard Red's trying to come out from Phoenix, but there's no way that is going to happen. The Weaver can't get that res off. So a quick kill picked up by Nemia, or excuse me, onto Nemia is going to be good. Other side of the map, though, will be confirmed there for Red Team. Mine gonna be uh, not for red, too but... long, because here yeah. comes the man of the hour himself, Countless. Actually, a really good rotation. Secures the early home node, gets the kill, and then pushes into sides while hoping his team is able to sort of hold the mid node. They do have their tankiest classes there. Uh, we see Core Mender Guardian uh, with Core Mender Scourge versus, uh, well, a mirror. So um, I wouldn't look there for the rest of the game. Um, and now we see Countless in a 1v1. How long will he hold the node for? Uh, it's been about two seconds so far, and he's already halfway down. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. Let's, uh, you know, we will see how that goes. And it's gone. He unfortunately has lost the node there. The distorts and the stealth. Yeah, really, it is hard to hold the node when, when half the time you exist, you cannot hold the node. Uh, at least. So, for sure. But he's currently, seems to be you ahead of You know who is holding the node? Urantian. Personally, he's my favorite ace in the sleeve pick for blue team, and he's holding 1v2 while his teammate's dead. Uh, K Kalen, K-Pud, maybe he can come in on time, try and hold it 1v2 and keep rotating in, but no, he goes down, dies for the node. See, it's like a, it's like the duality of tunes right there. That man will die for the node. <laughs> Countless gives it up more so uh, so so quickly. Different play styles for sure. Well, and different builds, of course, but. We'll have to see. I mean, red team going to be able to pick that node back up. Blue team with a slight lead just because of their earlier rotations. And, you know, absolutely, as you as you pointed out, a, a very nice rotation from Countless. But we'll have to see if he's going to be able to continue to do that. I really would like to see Countless try and just rotate a little bit more than we've maybe seen him do in games and not hold as much. Because, as you said, I mean, it's, it's harder for him to hold the node. I just don't think he gets as much value from it. And, you know, there isn't a thief on the side of red team. So he should potentially just, you know, be a little bit unmatched in his rotations. 
Unless they start sending uh, the Revenant to follow him, but it is a Condi Rev, so it's going to have a little bit of trouble there. Emdrix currently going to be pretty low, and it is downstate, actually, getting bursted down there around the middle node. So if they can find this kill and turn it into another one or two, they might be able to find a way to just take this team fight, take the node, potentially. But Red oh, here team comes the Blood Res. Decided. Staff 5 gets taken off. He's at half HP. They're still committing to the Res. The Emdrix God Res is just one little... How does he do God. it? God! How do they get that up? That should not be allowed, but... It happens, Blood Res very strong, and I mean, if they just take their attention away for a little bit too long, it's going to happen, and they've almost actually... Yeah, I mean, the, the fight just has completely Speaking stalled again. Speaking of taking your attention away, the blue team's Korgar just took his attention away from the mid-node and gets cap five, decap five seconds later. <laughs> yeah. They actually did have again. the cap during that. Ooh, Yura actually downed someone 1v2 potentially, and he's making the other guy run away! This man is a monster! Yeah, Urantian really proven his worth here at the Henge. Uh, almost gets to the decap here. He's going to be able to get it now, just chasing Alfie for a second. Gets the kill onto Phoenix. Uh, yeah, 1v2, very impressive. Countless does get the decap at far, but again, he's having a little bit of trouble in this 1v1 against the Condi Revenant. And the node should eventually go to the Rev side. I mean, do you think that Countless should basically just get decaps and leave Nos, or do you think that he does provide some value by staying here? Uh, he's not mobile enough to just get decaps and leave, be worth it. Um, he's definitely a good assaulter. And he can sort of decap it, I assume, fairly quickly with his build, right? That should be the main idea. Um, but uh, he's not much of a defender, that's for sure. Right, fair enough. We're going to see the rotations coming in. Channel of Flame, Phoenix coming in off of Respawn. See K-Pud coming in to rotate as well for Countless. Boss Countless, kill. Kind of, yeah, kind of just leaving. There's going to be 25 extra points on the board for Blue Team, as we see uh, Yura pick that up. K-Pud, though, unfortunately, rotated in to try to help Countless, but he was left behind as Countless rotated out, and that's going to be the Rev picked up now. Middle node still uncapped the entire duration of this game. Neither team can really just, you know, end this team fight, even even with a kill or two on the map. Phoenix now going to try to answer that beast call with a beast of his own on the other side of the map. But still a very close game. Neither team really getting an edge. They get a kill here and there, but they're not really able to confirm, you know, a double no. They're not really able to confirm, you know, and sweep one side of the map. Uh, you know, is there something, do you think one of these teams needs to just try and, like, leave this team fight, or do you think continuing to contest middle node and hoping your side noders can do the job is, is the right play here, Nos? Well, I definitely wouldn't bank it on winning a mid team fight. It, the action in a lot of these games so far has just been a focus on the side note and who's sort of outperforming there. Um, but if a mid team fight does ever end, that's when you'll see one team sort of skyrocket ahead. And I agree with Countless's rotation here, where he's going to sort of assault the Mesmer, and his build should be good at like getting the decap through uh, the pressure. So if he's able to do that while his team holds um, the two v two on home, which it looks like it is a very ending fight that's not favored for the blue team um, because that power renegade is much, much weaker into that Kanye renegade in this team fight. Um, yeah, I, I, they just they just they're just giving themselves a hard time on the name of science and experimenting and they're not doing themselves any big favors with their builds. Who do you think Countless has a little bit more a better chance into the the? Kani I have no idea. I've never seen this build before. I've never seen Mesmer in like since they lost the Dodge. So I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. I yeah. can't imagine much. I it can't. It does seem though as though I mean you know obviously we didn't really see him have much work there with the uh, against Nemia the the Kindy Herald before, but it does seem like Phoenix was able to bunker the no down and Countless eventually leaves it. Not gonna not gonna just waste continue to waste his time there. So he does move into mid, but. I mean, yeah, we, you know, we don't see kind of the opposite of what we saw last game, right? You, you had Jaden on that, that Deadeye, and you guys touched upon it a lot. This, this b very bursty spec, this this class that can just deal out and dish out a ton of damage, although we do see actually a ton of damage coming out in the mid, so hold that thought for a second. Charbra going to be very low, Alfie low as well, but Zombie's actually going to be the one to fall first. When our lips touch, let's see if they're going to be able to get that signal off. It's not going to happen. The signal wasted. The stop confirms the kill, and Red Team... All they need to do is dislodge this core guardian, and it looks like that might happen. He's still heal and RF available, but he's just going to end up dying on node, and I think mid will finally go the way of red team for the first time this game and get it capped up. Uh, but as I was saying, you know... This is worst case scenario for the blue team. They lose yeah. the mid node, and then they lose the home node. Uh, the home node was definitely a losing um, a team fight for them. Um, the Kynes are just finally able to get to the blue team's ranger, and the red team fight... Um, probably shouldn't have ended. You know, their comp there is sort of similar enough. Um, we do see now the fight, sort of a big team fight emerging for Blue on their home node. They are able to get it primarily because uh, the red team Scourge is like, just really hunkered down on mid. He just does not want to leave it. He took so long trying to get it. He even puts a flesh from there in case he needs to go back up on it and pour it back up on it. 
Um, but this is still a fairly winnable game for blue team if they sort of get some kills here um and that and they generate um like a boss kill off it um with a node or something like that uh we do see countless getting outnumbered on far you're going for that boss um and now what they sort of need to do is either take a massive team fight on mid which i think they're currently favored because of the pressure they have on that connie rev after um outnumbering it um so they can try and press the advantage there um, or alternatively, they can just try and sort of stale it and then have countless push into far. It looks like they're opting in for the much more tempting play where you just smork in mid and hope for the best, um, despite having a fairly big comp disadvantage. We see the RF come out for, from M Emdrix. That's one of his main survivor survivability cooldowns being used. The fight going more towards, more towards the node now, so we might see people take more pressure than they'd like to. Um, and they are hard committing to this team fight. We're talking all all five players there. Okay, your rotates out. Does not want to lose the home node. He's been very aware with this node so far. He might be able to come on the node in time. Maybe if he knocks, no, nope, and they get the decap. But alternatively, they do get mid in return. So not losing much, but not gaining anything either off this. Not really yeah, gaining not anything. I think, you know, yeah, I mean, they decapped mid, and obviously that's pretty effective, but we see red team, they lose one player, they immediately split out to the side nodes, which they already had pressure on, right? They get the decap, Yura is not in there in time, Alfie with the, you know, bit of a fast rotation. Wait, Signet coming in, is it going to be good? It is! And Yura gets back up, really, very clutch rotation there from Marvin to get that, that Signet off onto his, his Ranger. But as I was saying, I mean, the side node pressure, even with that Signet, even saving Yura there, is still going to be in favor of red team overall, because Countless just cannot debunk far, or decap far, excuse me. And... I mean, yeah, so losing that team fight, losing their, their core guardian there in that team fight just doesn't end up mattering. And K-Pud now gets taken out. No signal available for blue team, so this should be a confirmed kill. The Scourge isn't here either to help support it. Still trying to contest mid. They might be able to get this cap, but now they're going to be outnumbered here, although Alfie will just end up leaving, so just making this a neutral 2v2. And, and red team easily wins off of one node at this point, over about 130 points or so. And Alfie might actually just get a kill on his zombie here uh, and mid coming in. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. You know, they, they went for that kind of risky play, pushing into that middle fight, and, you know, they, it did start to pay off, but then I think as soon as red team split up and they weren't able to find a second kill, they didn't have enough momentum on the map to, to push in and really get, you know, value onto, onto all the side nodes. So they had to decap far, and Countless just couldn't do it. You can't decap into either the uh, the Rev or the or certainly not the Weaver. I mean, this game is just and just another testament to the Guild Wars 2 hierarchy of what's mat what matters, right? It's sort of like... Um, whatever that hierarchy of needs is, right? So at the bottom, it's comp, right? And if you have the better comp, that's like a big portion. And above comp is mechanics. And above comp is rotations. And at the very tippy top of where you can uh, sort of outplay in this game is jumping puzzles for survivability. <laughs> um, and blue team sort of failed at the very bottom of the hierarchy <laughs> um, with their comp. So it, it, from the get-go... They're, they would just have to do some crazy JP's mechanics and rotation sort of make up for that one. Um, though they do start looking pretty decent on the map with four minutes left in the game, not technically out. Um, Talish just needs to generate a kill here. Someone's got someone's on the blue team's got to win a 1v2. That's what yeah, this I mean is boiling down to. Ooh, k put coming in a plus countless, but Alfie there ahead of him yet again. And countless, look how low he is. He has his blink, but it's, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Marvin there, though, is here to support him. Might be okay. k put now putting quite a bit of pressure on Alfie. Nice rotation there from K-Pud. But, I mean, as you said, yeah, they, they really need to be able to get some value from this. They've got three players over here, and it's just Yura and Zombie now to try and contest mid. It does mean far is open, Henge, if one of the red team players goes over for it. I mean, if they win a fight or two here, if they can get a kill and secure another node, they definitely have time. It's not insurmountable. There's beasts on the map as well. If they can get a beast here, that'll bump up their point value a lot. Right now, Henge completely untouched. Alfie might be the one rotating over to that, so we'll have to see if Yura gets notified and starts moving out there. But in fact, no, it is just going to be Alfie plussing into this fight, looking for a quick kill on Zombie, and that should be a kill confirmed for the Scourge. I mean, a little bit low, actually, but yeah, Zombie, unfortunately, going to be taken out there for the blue team. So it's just going to be Yura now trying to hold down middle node on his own. He's going to be forced to follow the rotation towards Henge to try to hold that off. And now it really comes down to blue team. They have to get kills here at far. Right now, Phoenix and Emdrix doing an excellent job of outnumbering this, or holding this outnumbered, I should say. Phoenix, though, finally, maybe going down, getting bounced all over the place, pinked left and right from the CC, but still, they just can not find a kill into this extremely bunkery Weaver and, and obviously the Core Guardian. Yeah, the red team was doing what the blue team needed to do, and that sort of um, fav be favored or like do better in an outnumbered situation. 
but the red team was able to live longer and kill quicker um, than the blue team was. So we see the map sort of flip back into a favorable um, red one, given the time and points left in the game. You're taking a 1v1. That's probably he's not too excited to do take on Notified and Konyarev as a Power Ranger spec. I don't think that's the most favorite thing in the world for Yura. Blue team does have their one node that they're harking onto, but red, red team's aware of the win condition. They have their Scourge, just AFK middle. He's already pre-marking it. He's probably has a pretty close flesh room set up somewhere. And yeah, it looks like the red team's actually, oddly enough, banking on that mid node. The Kondi Rev sort of leaves that 1v1. This is technically winnable for blue team. Double yeah, boss while holding pieces. a two cap, yeah. it's winning. So they're if you're a, yeah. if the Kondi Rev opts to not decap and go for the boss, then that could be pretty good for the blue team. I mean, Oof. oh, Euro's gonna leave the boss though. He knows Nemo's Maybe there. he can he drag gonna... oh, and kill it. That's a time. Euro play. <gasps> oh, red team oh. got the other boss on the side of the map. Ooh. Yeah, that's game. No, they steal yeah. the boss. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think blue team had to go for those bosses, but the, sure. it opens up the steal for red team, and yeah, that's, sure. that is game, unfortunately. So yeah, middle node easily wins for red team, and and yeah, that is going to be game. I mean, you know, you love to see people trying funky things out as uh, the science fair did, but unfortunately, it did not end up working they, out for them. And they have the what no run. other team has, and that is passion, and I respect that. Yeah, you know what? Absolutely. That is that is some passion, for sure. For sure. But yes, that is going to be it for the science fair, so we will now be moving on to the lower bracket finals, where it'll be cold-blooded killers up against the American Squirrels, only losing to one team. Yeah, whatever to see if uh, Cold-Blooded Killers can keep that lost streak going for the American Squirrels, or American Squirrels are going to emerge at Triumphant and head back for a rematch in the, yeah, whatever, in the Upper Bracket Finals, or excuse me, the Grand Finals. And continue playing. I think this is going to be an interesting game, actually. Like, we're going directly into the next one, which I believe will be, yeah, whatever, of course, versus the American. The American Squirrels putting in the work, grinding out some of these games here. Wow. wow. Going around again. They're, I mean, they're ready to go as well. Like, you know, they're already... Well, you know, prepared to have some big, big team fights here versus the enemy team. Although it may be a slightly different side. Which I think we're are we going to get close to a mirror match here? Um, almost exactly the same thing. Oh, there well, no, I think there is. Is there going to be a hollow one red as well? Uh, or what's it actually going to be here? We'll I don't think so. I think on red, yeah. what was there? Was it going to be a renegade? Uh, maybe I think it was a renegade, right? I think uh, maybe he can relock to something, but I guess we will see. We shall see indeed. There we go. We have the Core Guardian, Scourge, Kondirev, and the Thief, which is exactly what we see here. But what is going to be the choice for the side node situation, guys? Let's check on it. Let's check this out. Let's see what it's going to be. Um, this is going to be a pretty good match. Both of these teams have demonstrated them to be extremely powerful. Yeah, whatever. Having some unbelievably commanding performances uh, a little bit earlier on there uh, versus the Cold Blooded Killers. Of course, let's see if they're going to be able to replicate anything like that uh, just about now. Things are going to get very, very exciting here on the Capricorn. And there, here it is. The Minion Monster has returned here. So, I mean, of course, Floody, Engineer Player, that's you. How do you feel about Minion Monster? You know, you see that you're you're on your Prot Hollow, and you see that the Minions, you see, like, the swarm coming for you. Like, what, what do you do? Is it a run, or do you kill them? You can take the duel, definitely. Um, it's... I don't know how... I like only do it pretty much Mias and uh, Garnet on Mini Monster Necro. So, versus Garnet, I have a lot of trouble. Versus Mias, it's a bit more even. Like, you win some, you lose some. But in the, if you're like caught in the uh, wrong moment by the minions, you're gonna get one shot sometimes. It's just pretty, pretty harsh to deal with it sometimes. But, like, obviously, the Holo can definitely go for like the barrier trade, which is uh, affecting the Corona Blast or Corona Burst. Which gives him barrier on each uh, tick from Corona Burst, which definitely is super fucking strong against the minions because, like, obviously you're gonna hit a lot of targets, you're gonna get a lot of barrier, so he definitely can take the duel. But we will see. Well, uh, we will fortunately, see we actually have a a necromancer expert joining us now, uh, representing finally a North American caster besides, of course, myself. Uh, the Dark Lord himself, Nos, is here. As a another guest caster here for us, Nas, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Great, thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for coming and joining in the fun. What do you uh, What do you think about these games so far? I mean, I love to see the scourge seeds I have planted have been sprouting joyously. <laughs> yeah. Bringing you... fun and excitement to the meta. 
do you uh you know are you a fan of the uh, the menders scourge build i mean i'll give you guys the origin story for the build so as long I was asked not to, too long sure sure real quickly i was asked to the mat yeah. right we scrim a bit the first eu team we scrim i was doing really bad on reaper because reaper you just die and so i'm like okay how do i not throw uh reaper i throw okay scourge pretty tanky so i put it on and then we win a game and then right after the eu team we're facing is like yo what is that build <laughs> <laughs> and then it just took off from there. It was like my wow. third day back, and my team is cracking up because people are just asking me for the meta after I haven't played for months. Right. And here we are. Yeah, I guess Farmer Nos planting the seeds right. of Mender Scourge. Incredible. Wow. No Maybe one else thought of it. Room. Everyone else has blocked Scourge out of their mind, right? Like, you know, this, they, they tried to you know, they, forget the bad days, doing, the dark days. They were doing Condi Scourge, weird stuff. Why why try and kill people when you can live? Well, and also True. kill people at the same time. Top damage. True. Like, it, it's like there's there's one thing that's very good actually, you know. I think I'd say this build is very good for getting your dailies done. Like Mender Scourge is like a very good top start farmer. You get like top damage, top healing, top everything, top defense, top offense, like, wherever you want to be, really. Like you can just get it all. Build does it all, it really does. You know what else helps does it all? You too can do it all if you sec uh, if you secure you can secure incredible value while securing your connection with Surfshark VPN. Oh, I like and that. Right oh. now, you can use code Mighty Teapot or use the promo link that's been passed around in chat for eighty three percent off. And you too can wow. be the best Scourge gamer out there. That's I mean that's pretty wow. good, right? You know that, that is uh, yeah that is big value. I I don't think I'm going to talk for the rest of this cast. I can't I can't I can't top that. That was that was great. That yeah, was well, a good segue. It was definitely well, a very well strong All segue. Right. Though. I guess. I guess with that we should get into the game. Uh, any predictions for this uh, this game, Nos? And then I will I will let you take the floor here. Um, well, one team has Roy on it, and the other team doesn't. So I'm a Roy Ooh. believer. I mean, he popped Ooh. off last game, didn't he? True. True. Yeah, he always does. Are you kidding me? He always does. Let's see. Exactly. Let's see if the let's see if the nodes the scourges are on will be as secure as Surfshark VPN. I have a suspicion that they may well be. Uh, but anyway. We're leaping right into this game here. What are they going to be? The splits looks like a pretty standard split uh, for these teams. They're just going to run at each other on mid. Stealth up a little bit. Might be some crossing going on here. Yeah, we're going to see the Thief and the Engineer uh, trying to intercept the Revenant over here. But however, the red team, they know. They have the information. They're able to deny this, at least the timing. We should see the cap come through here, I believe. No, the Thief actually makes it to deny that. So the blue team will have a slight edge at the start of the game here, uh, at least for the time being. However, the Prowl is going to find himself 1v2, so we may not be able to hold on to this node, at least forever anyway. Actually, no, yeah, there you go. He already gives it up. That's going to start dueling into the Minion Monster Necro, while the Guardian and Necros are just attacking each other here on middle. It's very intense stuff over here. And in fact, it's going to be a complete mirror through three Guardian, Rev, uh, and then, of course, the Scourge, hitting each other for all eternity. Although... This matchup actually can end. Like, this 3-3, I have seen it end a few times. It just takes a uh, takes a very, very long time. Oh, actually, uh, the Thief hit from the red team is actually forcing the D cup on the Bazaar. That's very nice. The blue Thief's going to have to waste some time there. Enabling, of course, the Holosmith to be now actually destroyed by the Thief from the red team, which is a good thing, too, actually, because the Necromancer, down bad, having a bit of trouble into the Prot Hollow, in fact. Um, you know, having to force Lich... Uh, and then try and shove him away. However, with the Thief coming in, things like this. Actually, the team fight on mid is also terrifying as well. Kranos getting incredibly low, being forced away from the node, though. Yeah, I think the true story of this um, match so far hasn't been the whole flashbang going off a minute. It's sort of been what's been happening on the sides. Um, we saw the Thieves try and trade notes with one another, but um, the blue team Thief opted to just uh, full cap, while the red team just opted to plus his minion master. Um, so nothing really has changed in terms of map state. They tried with side nodes, and then it's looking like the Thieves are going to try once again. Now, the Thiefy Thief matchup is generally favored for the Pushing Thief because it's easy for the Pushing Thief to decap uh, the Holding Thief. So that's always a good rotation too. And we see a Core Guard going down in the mid. Stop, about to go through. with Stop gets Malix pulled away. Corruptel going down. Huge cleave. Roy trying to res. And now they took so much cleave in exchange. We finally see the flashbang at mid ending. And we can clearly see the blue team coming out on top. 
Yeah, the American Squirrels. They've been doing a lot of team fighting. They had some practice in the previous game. Uh, so they're very well acquainted with that so far. They've been doing a fantastic job of exactly that. As you predicted, though, the uh, pushing thief, of course, does manage to find the decap. The thief's stealthing up all over the place. They're denying themselves, much like Countless in the previous series, actually. Uh, except with less Mirage, I guess. And anyway, the bell coming up in about 20 seconds. Let's see, what is the response going to be there? Of course, Blue Team are going to have a bit of a positional advantage. They can control the tempo of the game right now because there are some people dead from red, so it's going to be dip more difficult for them to respond. However, Core Guards just mirror each other on the bell in five seconds. There is a thief here as well. However, both these, I think these thieves just follow, I think, you know, this is kind of like, you know, they're copying each other's homework in terms of rotation. They're just following each other around here instead of actually, like, bothering to do anything themselves. But here we go. The bell is going to happen, and I... I wouldn't be surprised to see a massive team fight here, almost a repeat of what we saw in middle, with the thieves trying to troll each other and get some value on the map while a massive fight happens on this uh, particular node. And that is exactly what's happening here. In fact, this is basically the exact same thing. However, it is worth noting that red team do actually have one node completely uncontested right now. And if the red thief was to win this 1v1, which is actually looking like he may well be able to do so, that would be a big win there if he could force that node. Therefore, having it two ticking on the map in favor of the red team with just one there. And in fact, the thing is, this team fight is not going very well for blue either, actually. Cranox taking very heavy damage, renewed focus popped, and he has got pretty much nothing left. So red team looking good here. Blue need to peel for this Guardian a lot, otherwise he's going to find himself extremely dead. Again, I think the story of this match so far has been the side nerds. It's been the Thief, and it's been the Minion Master, and it's been Step Bro got X, right? Because nothing, like the 3v3 on mid should take a long time to end. Um, and that means that a lot of the action is happening on the other nodes. So we saw the blue team made a smart uh, play. He sort of swallowed his ego, said, okay, you're winning this 1v1. I'll just go get your other node since, you know, mechanically he was losing. So he just used rotations to help make up for it. Um, but you're still a little bit behind because the blue team thief is able to then sort of plus or the red team thief is able to plus that other 1v1 going up. And that's why we see the minion master now has the mid node and why the red team will be up a node. It looks like they're trying to sort of hard commit to this mid node fight right now. And there's been one big team wipe so far this game. It was actually really fortunate timing for red because Bell wasn't up yet. And so when Bell just came up, they were also all free spawn. So don't really lose too much off it. And right now it's just going to be a giant uh, sideshow on mid, which I'm, you love shoutcasting, so please take it away. Yeah, the minion monster pushes in here as well, and that could be quite scary in the team fight. All the minions are going to explode all over the place. Cranox falls down there as well. They're going to go for a hand res. Can they actually get him? Oh, no, they can't. The storm is good. Step Bro God X also unbelievably pressured. Might be about to go down here as well. Red team looking to clean up this fight pretty decisively. Blue Thief is desperately trying to keep his team in the game by getting that decap. But Red Thief, of course, there from Jaden doing the exact same thing. There is a kill onto Marvin there. Can they, they actually stop the bell? No. Oh, wait, the down state bell. <laughs> <laughs> Gets knocked off at the very last second, and red team should be able to grab themselves that. Uh, Luda, they're able to just barely wriggle away from that. And the map is neutral, but two players from blue are completely dead there. Getting stomped out there on the Thief Step Bro Godex, suffering a similar fate. Blue don't do a bad job of rotating out onto the map to try and get some value, though, actually. They're Revenant there from Sequoia's went to grab himself uh, the Bazaar. Meanwhile, we actually see Kranuts contesting mid. So it's it's not it's recoverable, but a 25-point loss there is very unfortunate, it's particularly considering the snowballing nature of the Bell. Wait, the Bell and respawns. Back up. Wait, <laughs> This Capricorn can go many ways. It all depends when the team fight ends. And red team got extraordinarily lucky that the one they lost doesn't matter, but the one blue team lost is going to cost them significantly more uh, amount bell. of points. Oh, that's going to be rough. It should get capped here. I don't think the ref can make here. it. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Oh, oh. Double bell. That is devastating. And the game's been really close up until this point. I mean, now blue team's going to have a really hard time coming back because if red team gets another bell, I, I don't see blue team uh coming back whatsoever that is unbelievably unfortunate there uh for this team here that is not great for blue they should be able to get some neutralization here but they've got to win the next fight for sure and it's not looking particularly good for them step bro guys has got no cooldowns he's about to go down is there a signet for crowds there is a signet can he get it? he does get it so 
good recovery there in this team fight, but they don't really have, like, they need to get the Scourge into this fight here as well, or they're just going to get out-muscled in this fight. They know it as well. They're going to try and spread out around the map a little bit, move the Holosmith on this node to shove away the Thief. Thieves is dueling here, but with the Conyrev coming here from Zin, like, this is, hmm, yeah, like, rotationally, things are not really working out right now for the blue team. They're outnumbered on mid right now. The Necromancer, the Scourge is finally now recovered coming into this fight there, uh, but, you know, this is a long road to recovery. They do have that single cap, but it's a 100-point deficit. Another bell is going to be up in a minute and a half so they're gonna have to really control this map and then push that bell as well because as you say 75 point bell will be the goal for the red team very very shortly which they will definitely enjoy and they'll definitely be going for that because if they can get that the game is essentially going to end be almost impossible to recover doesn't look like timer is going to come into play here so there's definitely plenty of time for the blue team to recover but if they keep losing players like step bro god x falling to the condition damage there of the herald and some bit of plinking from the th oh hang on is a lot of about to carry this though can you maybe kill that thief no the thief very wisely disengages gets the heal and will be completely okay for the time being. Oh, down bad. Even actually decapping here. Uh, the minions simply too much for the Scourge, forcing them away from the node. Uh, and that is going to completely bring this game to a standstill. But it is a standstill in which the red team is ahead, particularly with the kill onto Holesmith grabbing the dock. And now they're looking to push out onto the map and secure some kills, potentially on the, the Scourge or, of course, on mid. But honestly, things fairly slow uh, for the time being here. Like Everyone's pretty tanky and pretty uh, well secured in their positions. Things won't be too slow for too long because we do see Bell coming up in 30 seconds. And actually, I think I thought Blue Team did a pretty good job recovering off that big Bell fight loss. We saw them actually up a node because they took a 3v4 Gambit. Um, as in, they risked losing a 3v4 in exchange for having one of their players cap one of the nodes. So they were taking points earlier, but unfortunately we just saw that they sort of got a little bit out-rotated and one of the Necros just wasn't able to hold that node in time and chase. Now we just see an eternal 1v1 happening um, on that top right node on the minimap. We do see Bell coming up, which blue team does have to contest. Unfortunately, the blue team, we see him go down once again this match and it's just a few ticks away. Uh, I bet red team is wishing that Guardian was countless right now because that would be a very free Bell. <laughs> This is a little, little, little to getting a little toxic right now. Uh, but, of course, the Guardians just won't be wanting into each other pretty much forever. Like, Red Team, they're not really super worried about it. They could even give it away if they really wanted to. Uh, but, yeah, with the, the Hollow coming in, it will maybe allow Kranz to leave. But, no, as Zin comes in, that will be denied there. No rotation potential here because they're going to keep that 2v2 stable. He might try and leave anyway and leave Step Rogue Godex 1v2 and try and rotate elsewhere on that. But, Red Team just slowly creeping ahead right now. Like, that endless 1v1 as you're talking about on the Dock has now been moved away there. So that does enable the Thief to get in there and get some work done here. But this uh, free Neutron's getting 1v2. They're taking so much damage. is just barely able to hold on. Might be able to be eventually pressure this node sufficiently to actually claim it for the blue team. Thief gets the decap. is going to move around and try and find a kill. Free Neutron solo has enough barrier there with the Harbinger trying to survive just a little bit longer here. And is not going to be going down just yet. In fact, the pressure on the down bat is very, very high. However, when our lips touch has arrived... In the nick of time to save the day. Meanwhile, the bell that, fight actually is not really doing much either. It's actually a 2v3 because the red team thief rotates into that 2v2 that was going at the bazaar. And the blue team, A, caps the node and B, pushes them away. So this very well might be a timer game because the flow of red team's points isn't looking too high right now. And if the blue team has the awareness, he should be able to easily start pushing that red team thief because you do not want them to start capping any more nodes. And you're not too great as a thief compared to some other classes to be in a team fight. So I, I feel like the blue team thief should definitely focus more so on winning the fights. Or, or I'm sorry, on not going to the fights and just winning the map. And he just sort of, sort of needs to rely on his team not to not necessarily to win the fights, but not to lose them. I mean, the red team is just being a giant menace on the map right now. He's full capping and he's decapping nodes all the while. Ooh, the blue, blue team with a team fight though. Oh, the, the revive is nice there, but the knockback is good from Cranox. And they're going to get the stomp there, so this should be the bell for blue, but they are Is losing the map. It? Is it worth it? I don't mm. know. They need more than that. They're going to need more than the bell. They need nodes ticking very fast with three minutes, 30 oh. seconds left on the clock. And I think there's another bell coming up in 
30 minutes, 30 seconds? 30 seconds. And actually, the Necromancer get kills there. The, the Hollow actually won his 1v1, finds that kill. Could be a maybe a glimmer of hope here uh, for the uh, for the Blue Team. However, oh, the Scourge, I don't think the Scourge can really do anything into this Rev here. Like, they've got to have something else here to get rid of Zin. Otherwise, this will just be just too many points that they can't really afford to have any nodes in the hand of Red Team right now with just the three minutes. They're going to bring the Thief in there to try and deal with that. Meanwhile, they have their own Condi Rev into the scourge of Twitch TV Roy, our very own cast there. And actually the bell, if the bell is, the bell is free right now. The thief looking oh, no. to actually puss in there. Ooh, that hang on. The game right there. They're not paying attention. Oh no, blue team. Ooh. Get another 50 points. It's yep. gonna be doable if they get a magic three cap really soon. There they it need is. to start winning their 1v1s. And then they do have the cap still. Or they they need to get the cap also in Bizarre. They get gonna a fall. No more bells, down 100 points. Two and a half minutes is possible. We just need some 1v1 start ending. We do see Zin go down. There's one node. Now if they can get one more, the red team thief, making sure that they don't lose that other side node. Going to plus his minion master ally. Um, really important that they don't get that node. i don't not sure I like what I see, what the blue team thief is doing. He has to follow and he has to hope that he wins oh. that 2v2 because his teammate's not going to hold out in that 1v2 and he's just going to run away. At this point, there's no more time to start running away. You need to decap that node at all costs. There's only two minutes left in the game. This uh, is not good. And blue team's Necro 2 Scourge Free Neutron's just been hovering the bazaar. He's been too scared to push out and do something. But he's a team that's behind. He has to push out and do something. And the red team thief immediately sees this and goes for the decap. Oh, no. This is a looking like it won't be enough for the blue team. No, not quite enough. They're plussing into the, the core guard scourge. You're, just, you're not going to break through that on Thief. It's just going to take way too long. Uh, well, honestly, you're probably not going to ever get it done there. And that did just allow that uh, node to get forced there uh, over on the dock there. The Thief is able to actually match that and get the decap. But even that is enough. There's only one minute left. So they actually need uh, they need a triple cap now. Uh, I mean, and there's no more bells to get some kind of magic happening here. And yeah, I think the game is actually over. I'm not, don't really yeah, think it's winnable. It is most winnable. certainly like, a timer game. Game, which actually earlier in the cast you thought it wouldn't be but never underestimate the mender amulet <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, oh, red team is just running away with this. But So i got to give a lot of uh, credit there to blue team for able to be able to actually like, drag this out. And they might end up making this game very close, actually, because, of course, the blue team, they are still gaining points now with that single node. Uh, but even with a triple cap, they actually can't win anymore. So, like, the, you know, red team can just AFK. Uh, they can just stand on node and not really worry about anything because it is no longer a losable game, particularly seeing as the blue thief is going to just fall over and die there. Cracks will get the revive, but it doesn't matter. 30 seconds seconds left over that is going to be the end of the game i mean that was a pretty pretty interesting game like very back and forth actually like both teams really fighting for it and a lot of rotations a lot of decaps a lot of slow 1v1s that eventually happen there but it is going to be the yeah whatever team prevailing against the previously undefeated american squirrels on the blue team there so very well played to them yeah, definitely like mike we got some serious contenders here. We absolutely do. What for like some seconds here. Um, I think Noss said it earlier in the game. Like the thief from the blue team, definitely, or like the side notes, pretty much decided the game. The blue thief was always seen to like not rotate properly or like rotate too late, pretty much. When uh, Jaden was always in like the two v ones, like in the outnumber already, and then the blue thief was rotating to like kind of even it out. But most of the times. The uh, side note from the blue team, um, Step Pro Godex, or like uh, Dry Dude, always took so much damage from like holding the 1v2 for, for ages, so they couldn't really recover that. So the blue team's winning condition would be for the Thief to rotate much better. Otherwise, I don't really see them coming out of top here. Yeah, I mean, it's a very, very close game indeed. Of course, it's a different map now. I suppose you could even call it a more standard map here. Uh, it is the Forest of Niflheim. Let's see if the beasts come into play. You know, I'd like to see a bit of beast fighting. That was kind of one of the, my favorite things when, when you, you see dragon hunters, like three dragon hunters in every single game. Like you just see beasts mm -hmm. die in two seconds constantly. Like you just have the dragon hunters. Not even really care about the map, just run around playing PvE the entire time. Always entertained to see in your, PV, in your PvP matches here. But yeah, the teams are, wow. They're raring to go. Like they're already in, yep. right? They're they just yep. they want to get into it. We 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 he, we call that on NA the Cade circuit because uh, he used to do that all the time uh, <laughs> way back in the day. Boss into boss into then you're pushing like a far node. Yeah, it can work. It absolutely when in doubt, can work. When in doubt. 
It's, you know, in, in a lot of respect, some of the secondary objectives, like if you actually think how many points they generate, it can be surprising, right? I mean, even if you look at them. Yeah. Especially in such a slow meta as this, where the points are a lot mm, more valuable. Uh, valuable and slower to get, uh, they start adding up. Yeah, the objectives can really rate me, and particularly in a close game. Like, you know, imagine if the first bell fight, for example, had gone the other way. Maybe blue team is able to actually win that. All of a sudden, you've got a 75 point swing, right, in, in the other direction. And suddenly, all you know, it looks a very, very different outcome course in favor of the american squirrel so we'll see if any people can get there of course knowing when to get beat i think particularly with thieves in play can be really tricky like if when you know when you have that opportunity mm. if there's a thief about the play because the second that you move away from that node boop Ooh. the thief shuts you know oh, and look, then, look at that oh, thief oh, he's running oh, oh, oh dear loaded. here we go the dead eye the game's the one to watch and it's a no thief play here from the uh the, the blue team they're actually going to drop it in favor of um a little that's, bit more yeah a little bit more uh, stain that's a bit more than the meta you see in most cops but let's take a look at the splits looks like the red team's necrily capping their home and the blue team opting for a much safer split yeah red team see. maybe sending cross has three nodes in mind yep as is the plan with red team's thief the idea being is that the red team's dead eye takes a lot of outnumbered situations and should be able to just one shot some things if he gets the right knockdown combo. Yeah, there are some. Pr I mean, I, you know what? I love an ability that knocks down and immobilizes, and you can, do, you know, basically 1500 range and install. I mean, it's a fun skill. At that skill, point, right? it's just BM. You're already knocked yeah. down. You're also a mob. Yeah. The, the mob is just some yeah. BM dark <laughs> It's very, very good stuff. Indeed, so the thief, uh, the dead eye there, kind of just backing up the necromancer, just denying that push from the blue team. So it looks like things are going to circulate here a little bit towards mid, and it's going to be the dead eye looking for maybe a kill onto the horse. But yeah, he's going to go for the cross. That horse has got to be ready, right? Like horse does have some defensive capabilities that can shut down the dead eye there with some reflects and blocks, and that's a good thing. But if you don't have that, yeah, I mean, there's some pretty good targets here in this game for the Dead Eye. But the team fight can have a erupts on mid well. reflect field. That's about it right now. Dead Eye actually has his eyes elsewhere. There's a Rev who sort of rotates in as well, seeing this. Is it that's in not trouble? A great 2v2, yeah. Yeah, it's in a lot of trouble. It does get a really nice kite here using those star for Vades. But actually, this might still be a kill. Yeah, I think it, ooh, it gets the heal. <laughs> really close. Dead Eye turning it around, though, now. Sequilla. Sequilla. No, I, who knows? Who Dead Eye knows? is activating and downs him. Oh. Will Zin be able to make it in time for a cleave? He doesn't have much. He has the Dragon's Breath, maybe into Glint knockdown. Gets the knockdown. Dead Eye activated. Teapot. Dead Eye is activated. Yes. He gets the kill while his teammates running away. One v two. Gets the pull, <laughs> and he should have the cleave because Connie Ribs are great at cleaving. And yeah, this is not looking a good look for the blue team right now. Uh, they might be able to convert it into a second kill as well. Step Bro Godex holding. Actually, is he going to 1v2? He is going to oh 1v2, my. actually. What a turnaround there. That's going to be difficult for Zin to revive as well because he's also. Wait, Step Bro, he's actually a bit caught on that terrain there. No, wait, what, wait, what's happening, actually? Why, you, okay, oh, never mind. Teammates yeah. reviving, come back. It's 1v2. It's Throw City. They didn't even oh, get the decap yet. Oh, no. my. That is embarrassing. Embarrassing. Is Ooh, a... Not a good look. Not a good look. But at the end of the day, oh, they don't really lose too much, right? They're not losing a note off it. Mid is still a clown fiesto, right? There's so minions like everywhere on both sides. They're just going to try it again. They're just probably going to try it again. Push and have the yep. dead eye plus. And, you know, if you look at the score, not, it doesn't really, it's not a, it's not the worst thing in the world for red team because he's just gonna respawn, do it again, and just hope his team doesn't fall wipe on mid. And blue team, they make a bit of a gamble here. They rotate the Revan, so they're gonna try and win this fight quickly, which is never a sure thing with Mender's amulets and minion monsters. Looks like they are certainly pulling ahead here, seeing the Guardian get unbelievably pressured there from the red team. But the thief is going to free decap that and may even go for the full cut before rotating into this fight. But if the team fight collapses, that could be scary. We now see Step Bro God X trying to get over there and to contest that, but I don't think he'll make it in time so it will be a two cap at least temporarily right now uh for the red team and in fact red team is going to go ahead and cap. rotate out and just like to kind of hold the outnumbered fight here for a little while there on mid and yeah no kills came through there from blue so this has worked out extremely well right now for yeah whatever particularly seeing a step bro god x is now under some serious pressure here comes the dead eye the stun the knockback is there or oh, however we do see an escape but no it's not good enough for she <laughs> you can't get away Oh, dear, oh, dear. And the blue team is falling into the dead eyes trap, and they're getting hard mm. memed on mid, and they are completely misrotating right now. Uh, they sent five mid and just lost the whole map off it in hopes of trying to decap some of the funkiest things in the entire meta. 
while throwing in you know some staff autos, some menders axe autos, it's you know it's not it's not enough, and it's not like they are the ones they're the ones with the dead eye who have this big burst out number potential. So they kind of just sort of threw away their evenness there. Yeah, and a nice cheeky little beast there from the Condirev as well. Very nice to get those extra points, even a few extra stats as well. And it looks like Blue Team, they're just not going to be able to win this team fight even. It's just too much to say, too much tankiness uh, from all the, and the, the double Necro and the Guardian. It's just not enough here. And in fact, Red Team even looking to she turn this around and push this fight and maybe even win it here. The Thief, be, or the Necromancer rather, being driven away completely. Being mace auto attacked by the Guardian, like what a way to go! Uh, if that was going to be the way you die, there. Oh, I mean, blue team, yeah, blue double team. Double downstate on mid, double downstate on mid. Is red team gonna have the cleave? Rally the dead eye. Blue team just has one. Dead eye should have this. I almost think. dead. Minion master gets activated, gets a fear, almost fully cleaved, and oof, that he doesn't rally. Wait, oh, oh, yeah, I guess he. Oh, wait, what? What? Wait, what? What? Wait, what? And now the Rev him? is actually going to get away with this? He's got. How does he not rally? What did is he. he... What? Was, was he self rezzing and not attacking and it took too long? That no, must... he was throwing autos. Wait. That is a mystery. That I, you know what? Yeah, look, it's just one of those That's... Guild Wars 2 things. It's a, mm. a big comeback move here for the blue team. Like, can they Blue get team fantastically plays that downstate fight. <laughs> he sure he doesn't rally, gets a note yeah. off it. And now red team is in utter confusion and disarray. And this is the moment blue team has been waiting for to come back into this game. Absolutely. Step Brogas did die though, which is unfortunate. He is going to respawn to directly help into the minion monster necromancer here. At least uh, the, the, the scourge, at least for the time being. So they should be able to maybe get something done here. Uh, the power is actually the power rev in fact here. Uh, it wasn't the con rev at all on the blue team can maybe try and hunt down the dead eye which is what you should probably be doing probably the reason for playing power in the first place it seems able to get that and you know off that something unusual happening on mid they are able to fund themselves in an advantageous situation and here we go the hunt is on for this dead eye actually from the power herald that'll be a massive kill if he's able to find it but dagger storm is going to prevent that at least for the time being but you know he's not giving up actually he wants to try and find that goal he gets a lot of damage actually. the dead eye in trouble here needs to try and hold on however the pressure is big onto the minion monster on the blue team he's going to go down and say is there a revive here from Kranox? put oh no oh no the transfuse actually griefs him there a little bit did get interrupted anyway so i guess it doesn't really matter either way can they get the hand res? They should be able to. Yeah, they do actually find the hand res at the very least, which is always a nice thing to get there. But again, the Deadite getting shut down a little bit here, actually. Uh, a little bit more so than it has been in the in the other games. And maybe Blue Team finding the solution, cracking the code. But it's a little bit late in the day for that. They're going to have to play extremely well if they want to come back in this game. Uh, Blue Team definitely not cracking the code because they just committed five players to mid again, causing the Red Team's Necro to A, get the boss, and then B get their note again so red team sort of making it out on top there so maybe that was necessary 5-4 to ensure you don't throw mid but you sort of need to start playing more aggressively you know start hoping you win the even numbered fight so you can start coming back into this game as uh the blue team because you're down a lot and now the red team is getting another beast we're seeing minion on minion action chieftain utenheim going down Indeed, those beasts getting taken there. It's going to be 25 more points there. The Necro's got a little bit of downtime there on the other side of the map. Is able to go ahead and find that. And just, it's just, again, it's just going to be these slow, stalled team fights. This is not going to be quick enough here for Blue. They do, they are aware of that. They're going to try and move the Scourge on the map and try and find something. The Dead Eye is getting chased down by the Power Herald here from the Red team. Uh, sorry, probably from the Blue team, rather. But... Oh no, it's still looking very, very difficult. Like, it's getting to the stage in the game where red team, they can't really have even a single node, otherwise they're just going to find themselves winning the game automatically. Now, Stepbrogos does manage to actually slide in, slip by on the Holosmith, and is able to force that decap. So, you know, it is a favorable map state right now for the blue team. But 175 points with a, a single node, and while you're already busy losing a team fight, I mean... This is looking pretty clear cut here. I don't think the American Squirrels are going to be able to continue their undefeated reign in the uh, in the upper bracket. And it looks like, okay, we are not going to be seeing our first grand finalist be some invaders. NA throwing out the American Squirrels here, at least for the time the being. The flags once again risen high, defending the homeland. Yes. Red indeed. team, 100 points away from finally making that a true statement. And at this point, I, I think I'd call time of death. It's not looking good. And there's, there's no crazy temple comeback mechanics on Forest. You just have Beast who the red team has been eating away. Yep. And there's another kill here onto the Revenant. I mean, we saw some 
pretty impressive stuff here from the blue team and we're certainly going to see them battle in the lower bracket b i think they're essentially uh, kind of getting to the point where they where they kind of know it's over and they're thinking about the gg it's not even close to a timer game it's been a pretty fast paced game overall red team having some very significant point gain but with a two cap here i mean that is pretty much going to be the final nail in the coffin they are dead and buried i'm afraid one more beast to close out for another 25 points is going to put them within spitting distance of winning this game and well the dead eye is going to be spraying some saliva all over the place there that's going to be the end of that scourge mender's amulet on the mansion there on the, on the mansion this is not kylo on the keep over here in a minion man's necro there like this is looking like some kind of nightmare that is it there's nothing that can be done here the jumping the the kind of counter bm the acknowledgement of defeat coming out from step bro god x i'm afraid they're going to be stuck in the lower bracket, at least for the time being. And it's going to be a fight to get out of that as well, North. There's a lot of pretty scary stuff in the lower bracket. Like, they're going to have to go up against teams they have, I suppose, already beaten. It, but there are all sorts trivial. of abominations down there awaiting. Yes. All sorts of mixtures of builds and comps and things you'd think you'd never see, but you would see in this kind of tournament. And there you go. I mean, look, I, you know, it's, it's just a case of how many, I mean, look, how many Mender's Amulets can you get onto one team? Although, not that many mm. here. And, you know, if, if anything, like, the games on NA have been a little bit more explosive in a way than a lot of the ones on EU. Some of the EU ones can I, really yeah. take their time uh, with actually getting something done. Wow, we're going right into it. So this is, of course, a best of three. Guys, just be aware of that there for both the teams. And, of course, you lot in the chat as well. This is not a best of one. This is the lower bracket finals. So we raise the stakes here a little bit between these two teams. The American Squirrels on the red team going against the Cold-Blooded Killers. So the Cold-Blooded Killers uh, have a potential to actually kind of make it. They uh, kind of got defeated a little bit earlier. But they are now making their recovery. Uh, and if whoever wins this best of three will ascend to the ultimate grand finals, in fact, to face, uh, yeah, whatever in the grand finals. So actually, like the tournament is quickly just zooming towards its conclusion here. Let's see how this can go. It's going to be on Temple here. I mean, you know what? I love Temple games. I don't like to play on this map, but I love to watch games on this map because yeah. yesterday people forget the buff. They don't know what's going on. They run around randomly. They don't know where to go. They get lost on the map, right? And then they just feed, right? It, it is the Clown Fiesta map to end all Clown Fiestas. It is true. I mean, I like to watch it as well. I don't, I hate playing Temple. It's complete cancer, especially if you play like a teamfight comp, obviously. And yeah. then you pretty much have to rethink everything, but yeah. And that could potentially be scary for the Cold Bullet Killers because we've seen them go for like typically a very team fight oriented style. You know, with the side node and then basically four, you know, four big ass team fighters a lot of the time. They may be going for a reroll here. They're staying with the Weaver Channel the Flame. But the Thief on the red team, I imagine they probably want to match with a Thief of their own, actually, for blue. I'd be surprised if they didn't do something like that. Maybe uh, another site. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, hang oh. on. Oh, oh, wait. No, oh, no, actually, it's not that way. Is it that? I don't know. No, they've actually changed. It's, it was, uh, yeah. it's your worst nightmare, which slowed it in. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe the, the, potentially <laughs> the unstable ego <laughs> it can definitely be a serious threat to anyone's gaming career and oh wow it is actually it may well end up being one of the the dreaded builds here so how many menders amulets are we up to nos can we break the record here let's find out Who uh, knows? It could, it, <laughs> still could be condi we'll see if there's any last seconds maybe it was just a teaser of you know what they could pull off if they were threatened enough yes I, I think it, it, it's, uh, well, I mean, it, it can be difficult to know exactly what's going on there, uh, particularly because in this situation, obviously, you are going to have, um, you know, like, you know, you, you want to kind of like hide your build until the last second, then you can do a last minute swap to deceive the opponent, but it may well be a Ventari Revenant here from the Unstable Eagle, it's, indeed. It's like that Scooby-Doo meme when they're about to unmask the villain and out comes a tablet. Exactly. Out comes the centaur. And this is honestly maybe the map to make that work. Like if you if it you know this, we saw yeah, Worms sure. play this um, in the finals here, which was on Temple in the EU monthly AT, and this is definitely a map where you can get away with this. You can have like your support guardian uh, having you know like a fantastic time with the with the rev. Uh, sorry, with the scourge, but you can also have the rev kind of 
in a way doing the same thing has a little bit of decap pressure can hold on in an outnumbered situation quite well but also has good 2v2s and there's probably going to be a lot of 2v2 situations that happen on this map simply because of the size of it and the number of nodes that are going to end up spawning and that is going to be very valuable however it, is it going to be yeah it is ventari actually i think unless my spectator ui is bugged out actually is it condi or no it's, it's condi, condi. yeah it's condi. yeah it's just my spectator ui being weird the rabid amulet so i'm not going with the ultimate troll build not just yet anyway yeah. Yeah, the ultimate troll build on the other side of the map though because if you look at the alley and oh. what he's playing oh hang you on can get more inside on that Oh yeah, he's going full water earth bunker, bunkering down with with the Menders. We actually do still have triple Menders uh, from the blue team. They are not willing to give up that extra amulet <laughs> for the best of three here on Temple. Interesting stuff. It's, it's it, I mean, of course, there was a time where you actually used to play a lot of that build, but you don't typically see like the full bunker weaver uh, these days. Actually, it's not the most common thing in the universe, but I guess they just want to make sure that they really, really never die. And well, you can see that very much reflected in the score here. Uh, finally, now a cap. Uh, for the red team, the American schools grab the single node there and they will just begin this endless 1v1 here until some kind of rotation comes out there from both teams. But everything else is going to be pretty damn slow here, right? We have Scourge into Scourge. We have Core Guard versus Core Guard here. This is going to be a bit of a long one. Like some of these, this 2v2, maybe like the Rev and the Thief into the Weaver and the Renegade. But everyone's kind of tanky here. This is going to take a while for anything to happen. Yeah, oh, risky. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, if the Ellie would have played Sages, I think the 2v2 for the blue team would be much, much better. And now they're kind of stuck with an Ellie that can't decap. It doesn't do damage. It just holds note, but he's decapped. Uh, like, full capped even. Like, he's not going to do anything in this situation. Yeah, he, he is doing what we call hard throwing right now, where you are not only taking up a slot, you're also giving the enemy team a node. And you could even die, potentially. Because Waterweaver, all it does is live, and unfortunately he rolled off the node at one point and got himself full cap, and he's still here. Uh, no one knows why. He is unfortunately not providing a lot of value to the team because you know this is kind of what you know what you you know you're referring to here is that he's kind of not very good to plus because he doesn't do anything. Like if the thief comes in, like it's just the thief. Like, there's no more damage. Like the the Waterweaver is just gonna like tickle him. Like just give him a gentle tickle, not really do anything. So like this node may well end up just stay being capped by red for literally the entire game, and that's the only one they need. They're already up to 50 points, as you can see here. So every everything just stays the same. Then everything is good. And to be frank, what do you do? As blue here, like they can't. I mean, do they? I mean, do, it's time to reroll. It's time to like log out, change the build, and come back. Maybe. Although here's, having said that, here's what you do as blue: you still have two neutral nodes that the water reaver can rotate to and hold, and that frees up your other teammates to try and assault this node and uh, actually do something. So the the blue team's definitely gonna have to activate the rotation skill set right now um, to to come back from the situation. They need to climb the pyramid of needs, as it were. Unstable Ego actually in trouble here as well. A thief comes in here, has a much better time plussing that. The Hollow still had to do some good damage. There is the kill. The pressure is good. The Thumper Turret there, thumping the corpse down into the ground there. It's going to be a two cap right now. Zero points on the board for Blue. This composition is clearly not working out for them just yet. Looks like they are actually taking your advice, you know, like once again. And the good internet connection, allowing them to hear know exactly what they need to be doing right now. Bring in the Renegade here to get over there to try and maybe at least make a 2v2 or potentially swap someone out. Because the Thief will probably not really bother with this. So maybe get a bit of a swap here as the Thief gets chased away. But I mean, either way, like things are not moving quick enough whatsoever for the red team right now. Stillness now up there. Stepbro goes, does he get that for free? No, Emdrix is here. Ah, uh, but this is even worse. Now Emdrix is going to be locked forever. Uh, not able to get into any of these fights and support the team. But we have to just... Jewel versus this Prot Hollow for the rest of the game, which is not really going to be a lot of fun for him whatsoever. Or Nilly actually steals the buff there as well. That would have been quite humorous. But Alfie now ends up dying here too. Cranox stomping it out. And, wow, I mean, these American Squirrels, they, they're they making it work here. One three six to 0 If they get this top buff, that will be an absolute disaster. A catastrophe doubling the point gain here. But, yeah, like we're just not seeing, as Nos correctly points out here, we're just not seeing rotation here. Like, they are not bothering to rotate whatsoever, uh, you know, pretty I'm much. I'm pretty sure this is foreshadowing of, like, the global finals, which are about to happen in the next week. I think people like, will rotate there. Yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> think, I'd hope. I'd hope. <laughs> one team has U players, one team has an A players, you know? Ooh, and one team okay. Oh, yeah. So 500, oh, yeah. jeez. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> I mean, there's always the worms, you know, and they make it happen. They're going to cook up. <laughs> oh, is this the end? 
Is this the end for the 500? Oh, it may well be. Few neutral. Free neutral gets taken over. Signal though. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, it's not over. The dream is not dead. The scourge and the garden reunited. Lost lovers meeting up can, once again here. Can, can we interview the water weaver after this game? Yeah. <laughs> on this thought process here. <laughs> Did they like lose the fifth player and just had like a. You know, like one of those, you know, farming bot programs to just AFK, just like go to a node and just sit there. I don't, I don't get it. Well, I mean, there could, there's always the potential of win trade. Have you considered that? I mean, maybe that's I mean, the thought does, process. Does Surfshark have like a bot feature too? Yeah. <laughs> Not as far, not yet. The full package. Yeah, yeah, like the, the full thing there. It actually runs the bots for you as well through the VPN. I mean, I really like his sword autoing. Like, that's a really cool weapon yeah. to do it on. I actually like the six damage CCs. That's that's more interesting to me, actually. Like, I like the, just the six appearing there. I like it when you see zero, too. Like, Rev Star 5. It's good content. I mean, is this like a straightforward, like, 500-0? Like, it doesn't look like anything's happening. He has like, to be trolling. He has yeah. to be. There's no way. There's no it, way. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Don't underestimate it. Don't underestimate the power of gaming. But this is going to be a pretty free 1-0 here for the American Scrolls. They want to go for the grand finals here, but... Yeah, there's not really much to do here, unfortunately. Uh, for the red team, they're just going to play this out. They're going to keep on winning. Like, one desperate attempt for a, a 2v2 over here. But the Weaver does no damage. Like, 2 v 2 this does nothing. Like, it's it's just not good. Not even going to get the decap there even. So the node is still not neutral. The Ellie, once again, going to have to take this infinite 1v1. I mean, you know, the Condor is having the time of his life. of just killing himself. Oh, blue team do finally manage to get mid. Uh, so no that's signs something. of life. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'd call that signs of life. I mean, maybe like a long <laughs> yeah. dead civilization, but maybe not. I mean, yeah, maybe past tense, but definitely not present. Uh, Alfre is here, could potentially get the buff, but I mean, that's just not going to happen with the scourge of free neutrons here. There's just no way. The Thieves even coming in here to even potentially try and force some action here uh, and go for some kind of cap here. I mean, it may not, I, but surely not, right? Okay, now the Renegade is going to be able to get there uh, in time to deny that, but I mean, I don't know, eventually, like the Thief might actually have enough pressure to get through. Guardian just trolling out. 1v2 here on mid. I mean, this is kind of okay here for Cranox. Like, wasting the time of these two players. Like, they can't really kill him. Like, the Scourge is going to try and get some decaps, but Cranox is going to follow that and completely deny that. Meanwhile, some duels are happening about the place. Like, the ever exciting Weaver into Konyarev is going down here, in addition to Step Bro God X here, looking for a knockdown onto Unstable Eagle, but does not manage to get the troll knock. Chabra coming in too, but I mean, like, there's, there's not really that much to say here. Alfred is eventually going to die. Uh, on the bottom of it. Actually, nearly matches a 1v2 onto the Thief. Chabra comes in there to save the day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's nearly 400 points now. This is pretty much the end. I, I, I have to say I'm surprised. Um, I, I'm, su I'm surprised here, Nos, because we have seen the Cold-Blooded Kills perform well throughout this tournament. Like, this seems to maybe just be a simple uh, strategy they thought would work, but really did not work in any way, I think. would be. I mean, would I think already their minds are already in the next game. Um, cause I think I've just seen the Weaver hit the auto attack at least that 1000 times in a row, which means he's probably like thinking about the next game already. Another thing that's sort of disappointing me right now is his name is Channel the Flame, but he's only channeling the water right now. You should definitely need to rename that when that water is fully channeled. I think you, but, do you think you need to set up a macro for that? Like have loads of name change contracts in your inventory and every time you swap attunement, it changes your character's name. Yeah, and I hear potentially in a community chest you could get some name change contracts, right? Yes, that. Yeah, that, that I'm, I, I, oh, they get the yeah, they got them. You know that is, mm. uh, other name. I'm not sure if there are name change contracts, but there are various other items. I did like you're on point with these segues, man. Like honestly, I need to. Yeah, I'm kicking this. There's a lot. Off. There's a lot in that box for sure. Yeah. Oh, GG called there. Highly. Yeah. No. Yes, and it will be an expanding repertoire of items over time there as well, like a wide array of gem store uh, conveniences for everyone like to enjoy. To, uh, I'd like to chime in here real quick and point out that the uh, the team with more Mender's Amulets lost. So I yet mean, again, hmm. another 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 point towards not just bunkering up, right? I mean, they they bunked so hard they bunkered themselves into forty four points. <laughs> The only you know, thing that I mean, they were bunkering were the enemy team's nodes, though. Well, exactly. Yeah, they were doing it wrong, right? That, I was, listen, I was, I was that's not how you bunker. Bunk, They're no, bunkering listen, the Nos. enemy's nodes. you got to bunker up, your own right? nodes. No, no. <laughs> bunkering sucks, all right? Everyone should put on Berserker Amulet. That's it. Right? Come on, Roy. Even you're repping the Mender's Amulet, Scourge. Come on. 
I mean, yeah. I, well, look, yeah, I mean, I'm going to play. Well, hypocritical good. here, Roy. I'm playing isn't to win. It? Playing to win. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, yeah. See, we play to win here because we're gamers, right? The, yeah. the Weaver has immediately changed to Sage. Uh, you know, like maybe oh. it is. Maybe have we considered the fact that this could be BM hitting us? Because you were talking about how they could be trolling, thinking about the next games. Is this BM? They're so confident 2-0 that they're going to actually throw the first game and then actually go for the ultimate disrespect and just like 500-0 these games, but with actual. Yeah, maybe... I sure Maybe hope Phoenix. so. Maybe they're manipulating the predictions, right? Because no one in the right mind is going to vote for them now after seeing that performance, oh. right? Oh, they want channel, they channel points. Themselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, and channel points dude, are yeah. a very useful currency in the Mighty Teapot Twitch channel, and there's all sorts of different things you could spend them on. When that actually isn't true, though. Is like there? That's that's a chill oh, yeah, too far. They're, they're, they're kind of useless. Yeah. I mean... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's the default ones. I, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's okay. No, I mean that's, you can that's highlight fine. your message, I guess. But. That's true. I mean that that's good, right? You can you can highlight your message as you copy paste the Surfshark VPN uh, message they get posted in the chat, right? That's like the the tr true value right there. Okay, so we're going to see a repeat there. I imagine the American squirrels feeling fairly confident after that uh, you know, fairly easy game there on the temple. Here we are on Kylo. Can we go around again? Now, this this might be a map that uh, the uh, the cold blood are a bit more comfortable. It's going to be very team fight heavy, I think. Uh, there's a lot of team fighting there, and that is something that we've been seeing them do basically the entire tournament. Just go for these big three v threes and four v fours. So let's see if they're able to do a little better here, because this is potentially it. They need to win this and the next game. Otherwise, they are pretty much, well, I mean, not pretty much. They are completely out of the tournament. Of course, they'll have fought very, very hard and found themselves a fantastic third place, third place finish. Everyone here is guaranteed some pretty sweet rewards. Of course, gems, in fact, are guaranteed at this stage. Uh, but, of course, you obviously want more. You want to move on to the invitational bracket where you can win the title. So, you know, of course, they could be winning a title now. But sadly, all the PvP elite has bullied us into removing the title. So you can blame them for that. Uh, but no. In all seriousness, that was probably a good decision. But I think you can still win the community chest in this thing. So, you know, you've got that going for you guys. You can get the community chest. Very exciting stuff here. I'm actually not sure who gets that. I'm not sure if it's just the first place winners or if like, it's the top three. I actually don't know <laughs> how exactly that's going to work. But you know what? We'll ask the teams afterwards and we'll find out. Okay. And now this is not daily AT. This is far better than daily AT. This is the NA open bracket of the Hard Suck Conquest League here. Hmm, yes, very nice. So, just waiting for our teams to prepare themselves here. Still going with the Sage Weaver is channel fame. Unstable Ego. Oh, hang on. Hang on, actually. They appear to have... I, I think they're kind of stuck with the men's Do you think they have to have this? They don't have any other amulets. They kind of ran out. They appear to be shifting them about the place as Unstable Ego is going to be going for the Ventaria. Let's see if they are able to kind of make up for the mistake of bunkering the wrong nodes this time with the Weaver. So, I mean, this is going to be a bit more different than they're going to say, you know what, we're going to troll the team fight with our Scourge and our Guardian. Then probably plonk the Weaver on one node, plonk the Ventari on the other, and then see if the Renegade can move around and kill things. But if they end up losing the map here and losing momentum, they are going to be in trouble indeed. Now, I suppose... If the Ventari Rev is going to go close, if he can hold on to that, like the Thief is going to kind of have a hard time plussing that. And I think the way that the red team responds to the Ventari is going to be important here. Like they need to be a, they need to not greed for the kill, like not this really, really push for that kill because it's going to take such a long time that I think stuff like their Thief might really struggle to get a lot of value into that uh, on this particular map. So I don't know, we'll have to see, uh, we'll have to see how this ends up going here for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, the American Squirrels here, because they are going to have a little bit of a switch up here, but it is still going to be, essentially, three bunkers, in a way, right? And, well, I mean, potentially even more than that, depending on the way you look at it, right? We have the Rev Bunker, Ky well, Weaver isn't really a bunker, it's a, you know, a bit jewel-y, pretty tanky. Guardian, pretty bunkery, and Scourge, pretty bunkery. So, like, three and a half bunkers, and then a Renegade, which is like, well, it's like a quarter of a bunker, I guess. There you go. We're going to get, like, 20, it's 25% of the way there. It's got Dolyak Rune on, right? That... Oh, no, he doesn't, actually. He's got Ruin of the Fighter. He's a rebel. He's going for a different setup, though. Ben, what do we think about these comms guys? Like, who... Do you think the Ventire is going to be a good pick here? I'm not totally convinced by that build whenever I see it play. And, well, let's see if I'll be convinced. But what do you guys make of it? Absolutely. One of the things I like about Ventari, just from, like, a competitive perspective, not necessarily, like, you know, watching it in all its tablet magnif magnificence, magnificence is is that it opens up room for the red team to misplay into it and try and 
outnumber it and kill it, which they might try and do with the thief. And the thief's going to have a very hard time. And another thing I want to say about this is this is a much worse map for the thief, too. So there's not a lot, um, a lot more different like objectives and nodes going on. Would you like to see a uh, relog from the thief? Because the thief can also play the uh, <laughs> the fearsome minion monster necromancer. So they may be discussing yeah. that right now. In Ab absolutely. Oh no, they're ready actually. So no, they are not going to relog. Uh, they are actually all of them are ready here. Uh, so we're actually waiting on uh, the cold-blooded killers, in fact, to determine if we're going to be starting this game. So no relog going to be uh, happening there. I mean, it's exciting to see. I guess um, the thief can definitely have value, but it depends on the enemy renegade um, kind of chasing on, uh, him or not. So gotta see, gotta see. I would like to see the mini monster because it's more spicy on this map. I would say. Um, especially since it can like debunk the team fight in some situations. But um, yeah, but still the strategy it. discussion coming out here. They're not ready to go. They are unprepared. Uh, unprepared. Nas, do you have scrims? Um, I did, but let's just say now I don't. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Um, I guess it's actually, fortunate for us, I guess. Not too unfortunate, because I do actually enjoy being here. So. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There we go. Isn't that nice? And there you go. You nice. love to see A little, little wholesome. A little wholesome sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's going to be a relog here for the blue team. Oh, the Weaver's go gone. That's okay. what I'm talking about. Yeah, the bench is coming out because I believe that was the sub, I believe, actually, Roy. Yeah. Is that correct? So, yeah, that yeah, was the sub. So, back to the bench after <laughs> after <laughs> that game on Temple. But there, he did actually he did put in some work on Forest, actually, in the lower bracket, uh, of course, versus the Science Fair. So, uh, you know, he's not actually benched. He's just relogging. Oh, he's going necro. Ah, on to the necromancer. It's a reaper so far. A reaper. Okay. Maybe is it going to stay reaper or go core here? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it is going to be Ooh. the core necromancer from uh, now, Dust minions one. or fear. It's looking like uh, fear Ooh. necro for now. Yep. On the carrying amulet there, blood soul reaping and curses. Okay. And let's see if they're going to go with that. It looks like they may well be. Although well, he is running into a tent, so it could well be potentially mm. you know, adjusting the build template. Oh, but the response. Yeah. Yeah, is that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we might see some of this yeah, yeah, yeah. next week. Yeah, we yeah, might yeah. See yeah. A little bit of this. A little bit a little of relog action. A little, yeah, a little, a little bit of yeah. swap, swap. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A optimization. And here come the minions. Here they are. It is going to be. I mean, this game could end up very, very bloody. Like, there's not much. There's not a crazy amount of rotation potential, really, from the red team at all. Uh, they, you know, they've got the a hollow, but they're all. Oh, oh, hang on. Wait, they're gonna mix it up even. More. Oh no, no, they just came back. Okay, never mind. Okay, cancel that. Checking then. a few builds. Check yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it is. Exactly, and it's. Ooh. Kind of and Ooh. the blue team's necker. Where did he go? Oh, oh, wait. Did the relog <laughs> into the counter relog it. Let's see. The Might adjustments. Have to think about some rules for next week, perhaps. Okay, what is going on here exactly? Oh, I see. They the, the well, water oh, back in here. Wait, bring the oh, water no. back. Okay. Not the water. Interesting. Interesting. So it's going to be the uh, you know still the sage weaver. At least it's not water weaver. It's you know it's going to be a little Which bit more damage. Which is funny there. because weaver gets farmed by minion master. Yeah, that that seems like a bit of a counterintuitive relog there maybe not the way they want to go about that because this is going to be difficult for that weaver to ever take any kind of 1v1 and they still don't really have much potential to move around the map outside of blue team i, I almost feel like blue team has relogged themselves into getting eliminated out of the yeah tournament. Kind of relogged out of the tournament here right is, is they're is, either uh, one step ahead or two steps behind not sure which one it is yeah i mean well let's see if they are able to show us how big their brains are. Now, of course, they do have an additional side node which they could try and maybe uh, push into the Necromancer, which is the Ventari Rev. But in fact, like, if the Ventari Rev is uh, is intercepted here, they probably won't be able to force the node very effectively into, an, into a Condi Rev, right? I, don't I think... do believe it's Condi. I do believe they swap back. Oh, yeah, they've got, yeah, you know, again, once again, trolled. But seriously, these Rev bugs, man, they're making me look incompetent, even more so than usual. Very unfortunate. But anyway, the Condi Rev duel will continue. All three nodes being pushed by both teams uh, across the board there. Fear Neutrons and Step Bro X. Step Bro God X, I should say, guys. I'm not giving it the proper honorific there. Trying to push into Charbara and Alfie. You as well, like getting a good amount of muscle there. But again, like things are fairly stable for now. Meanwhile, we have the minions. 
surging into the mill node thing with this weaver and this guardian. But yeah, everyone not really looking like they're going to be dying anytime soon here. Like, which of these uh, encounters is going to be the least stable? Like, who's going to die first here, Nos? Like, what's the, what's the call? Who's dying here? And I was just thinking about the same thing. I'm yeah. not going to lie. <laughs> and I actually think it will be the mid fight with the weaver guardian just because that minion master is really solid into a weaver. Um, the Condi Rev matchup does end. Oh, hang on. Um, yeah. Step Rogorex is dead. RF pop. I mean, Kranak's coming in for the res. Should get it there on this thing. Though, but Step Rogorex did end up falling. Is now back up. Emdrix moving in to reinforce this fight as Kranak did the same. Leaving mid. Nice little note. I mean, they must have had some kind of communication that Step X was going to die because he started moving before he died. So the call for help was there. And it was answered by the Guardian. Now going back to support the Minion Monster Necromancer, who was actually having a bit of trouble uh, into the Weaver. Although the Weaver, perhaps having even more trouble, has even more trouble. Is there a Signet there? Should be pretty free, I think. Yep, there we go. Bring it back up. And two minutes in, zero points on the board. What's happening with the Rev? Like, the Revs are just doing nothing here. It's completely neutral. What's happening on this fight? Is there any progress? Oh, actually, in fact, Blue Team, look at that. They're actually going to get away with this. Nice win here by Blue Team, taking out three neutrons there. Step Burger X will not be able to revive that. And the first points of the game almost certainly going to go in the direction of the blue team in fact step bro god x is going to have to be careful himself not to die and he's not careful enough that is the end of that a decisive two kills for blue team and a node capture on the windmill and so begins the snowball as alfie sees and alfie will start rotating into one fight when he gets then rotating into the next fight and winning it now the only question that remains is how quickly can he do this before the red team respawns and start pushing the node that they lost um, actually looking like the red team Necker respawn, not sure what he wants to do, sort of takes that weird gate you never normally take, it's when you're not sure where to go, the one between the one by Treb and the one immediately off spawn, it looks like he just wants to go into the mid team fight, uh, blue team Necro watching respawns very closely, sort of knows that windmill is under no pressure and is going to start rotating into the mid, mid team fight, um, and it looks like he's just going to see a big brawl break out on mid. Exactly right, and th this is, I think you've got to feel a lot of pressure as the red team here, right? Because, like, those points are just ticking away, and this is looking like a very, very slow game. Like, there's not a lot of rotation potential, so they want to kind of win this quickly because it will take a long time to even gain a small deficit back. Like, you know, to actually get 40 points in this game, it's going to take a little while, right? We're already at nearly four minutes in, and things aren't moving that quickly. So they are going to be able to match that node with one of their own, but they need more than that, right, to actually get back into this game. They need to find a kill here somewhere, and if Blue Team is able to just survive, then they will end up winning this game, particularly seeing as they're actually able to secure the mansion by driving away the Condition Revenant from the Red Team. Actually, a little bit scary here for the American Squirrels, getting two capped down in this game. Yeah, but they got a kill because out, uh, one of the revs rotated out to give blue team that side note. And Emdrix is not having a very fun time in that corner. There's minions everywhere. He's getting stomped out, and he's going to be taken out. Alfie pretty low, too. Still close to the core of the red team's fight. Um, sort of him versus the world. And it looks like the world will prevail on that one. And now it looks like red team is going to try and counter sweep this. But <laughs> look at the blue team's necker. He's just waiting uh, with his little sloth staff or whatever he has on that. He what is, is that called ready again? To... Wait, wait, you mean like the sloth? He doesn't have the sloth stuff. He's got or, like the whatever it is on his head. Yeah, the Karka hatch. Kar ah, yeah. Karka, that's the name yes. for it. Yes. Mm. Now, Net forgot about those as well. Although, they kind of got reused a little bit, the models at least. But, Charbro will have a bit of a tough time holding out 1v2, but not won't have to do so for very long. As, uh, yeah, here comes the Weaver. So the two cap will remain. It's a very solid two cap as well. Red team's going to go for a full on push to try and get onto the windmill while holding on to mid there. So this will leave unstable eagle a bit out of the action, but that's okay because unstable eagle doesn't really need to be anywhere exactly. Just holding down those points are going to be good. Are we going to see? It could be a very risky rotation, although not necessarily actually for the Conyer of a red team to actually get in here because we already see the core guardian of Emrix get stomped out immediately. The minions swarming around and Emdrix is revived in another life as a jagged horror there and Charbra falling as well. Wow. This is a massive fight here for the American Scrolls. They want to make this a 2-0. They want to get back in control of this game after having a very, very rough start. They're just going to ignore the Ventire Rev and push these big fights. Screwing those two kills is massive. Red team won't be able to do much. Uh, sorry, blue team rather won't be able to do much for a little while. The Corgan does respawn, but it's going to be a long walk to get back over to that node. Still, Alfie doing a good job of contesting here, actually, and the Minion Mons are going to be forced to come back in there. But with the Weaver, should be able to stabilize this 2v2, at least for the time being. And Emdrix will be able to make it back over to this fight before it actually ends up concluding. Yeah, so not the worst thing in the world. The reason why that happened is because Blue Team was... Uh, 
like Tunnel Vision too much on holding the node. And as a result, they had all their players on it um, while being outnumbered and taking a lot of cleave. And that's why we saw both of their supports sort of die around the same time. Um, in that situation, sort of as a pro tip, you sort of want to rotate players on the more healthy players onto the node that you're trying to hold. And then that should buy your unhealthy player time to sort of regenerate their cooldown, regenerate their health. And then you just sort of swip swap and try and hold as much as you can. Exactly. However, red team going to try and force this fight yet again. Revs dueling on mid while this is going on. And then once again, they're just going to try and kill Endrix. They've found the weakness. They've found the vulnerability. And they might just get another kill here onto the core guarding from Cold Blood. Killers, not enough peel there from the blue team whatsoever. A blood res is being attempted. It actually might land. Wow, how did they get that? That is pretty impressive there for the, the blue team were able to get that revival. The power of the Necromancer, blood the magic. Scourge. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. The blood magic going through. And they almost actually invert this. In fact, they do. The minions, not enough. A good. Oh, oh no. The signal did it get burned there? It, oh, it didn't. Just barely counts the time by Kranz. He's actually left out a little bit. That's going to take some heavy fire, but his cooldowns are looking fairly healthy, so he should be okay. But what? Oh, I thought we are going to need to nerf Renegade again after that. That was absolutely disgusting how much damage came out there onto the Guardian. Renewed focus is going to end getting end up forced in. Red team, not out of the woods yet. They need to conclusively win this fight. Otherwise, the game will remain in control of the blue team, at least for the time being here. Yeah, there's a lot hinging on this fight right now. And I do like what I saw, uh, what I'm seeing Unstable Eagle do, which is push uh, the Kani Rev 1v1 mid, because it's better to fight on the enemy team's node rather than just AFKing on your own node in this situation, because you have the potential to decap him and pressure him off. Um, but it looks like that's not going to happen for quite a bit. But what might happen is Emdrix dying really soon, has his heal, could get interrupted doesn't quite get interrupted, he gets the full channel off RF in 14 seconds, and he's definitely under the lot of pressure. This core guard is not having a fun time in this fight. But I like that he's not on the node, he's just trying to kite and live, all sort of leaving channel the water to sort of hold it. They seem trying to peel for him as best they can, but they're not really getting any counter pressure in this team fight, so it just sort of looks like a downhill battle from this point on. RF does come off cooldown, he needs to still kite, like go into some hidey holes, do a little um, jump puzzling uh, to live at this point because I think he has every county in the game right now. It does manage to clear it. One of the saving graces of Core Guard is the amount of clears that they have. Hanging on for dear life. The Rev accidentally staff fives himself off, has to walk all the way back up. Here comes the Breach, walks right out of it, and they are just kiting, living, doing a pretty good job. Living a bit more than you would expect given the situation. Getting some pressure on the minion master, definitely the target of choice in this team fight due to its lack of stun breaks and mobility. Sort of just a punching bag whose minions will just passively die. Okay, they're turning on the Weaver, not the greatest play to do considering he still has all of his cooldowns, just obby flushes out. Now this minion master is in a world of hurt, shroud tanking, no stun breaks. Has a lot of minions though, but will that be enough? And it looks like Blue Team actually wants to use the rotation muscles here, and they're going to send their Rev to plus mid and sort of forsake the team fight. Ooh, and and they get it. Lives and they get a kill. Really good job. Um, that's one of the great strengths of Renegade, Shiro Renegade, in this meta, is they're really good at plusing things. Here comes, I believe that is a core guard. Staff 2's on, but he won't be able to hold that for long. And now this is a great position for Blue, just with one little rotation. Exactly, like moving around is certainly a pretty good skill to have and I wouldn't be surprised to see this fight here for Red just kind of collapse, like without the support guard, uh, you can't really have that same particular thing as the Rev is able to just outmaneuver, out position there, might get Signet up here, kind of like, oh no, oh, the transfuse no. trolls, the Signet, oh no, you hate to oh, see that res. sort of thing happen. He actually saved Gets it too. Res anyways. Very nice cancer there by Cranax, actually. So they actually preserved the resources. He's used way, to it, it by works, now. So. He's used to it. Yeah, yeah. It happened already this game. And they're going to turn around onto Chabra here. Chabra under a massive amount of pressure. But the peels are good from the blue team. But Emdrix, not good enough for Emdrix. They're going to have to try and do a Miracle Blood Rose. But they're not going to get it, actually. And Chabra this time will not be able to save the day. That should be a kill onto Emdrix. And probably that... Oh, but is that enough to swing the game? Because they've lost the entire map. The Ventari Rev was able to grab mid as Kranix was forced to leave there. Uh, and with the rotation in the, the Condi Rev off the respawn, they're going to get a big cleanup. But there's only four minutes left in this game. They need to get more kills there. They're going to get all three, four Ooh. kills. Is that Ooh. enough to swing this game? It may well be, but they actually need to still really push this. They've got to get the decap on the mansion and at least hold two of these nodes. Some good bleeding here out, so it's going to be a while before the blue team is at full strength. And I think we're going to see red directly push to the mansion. But the Ventari Rev is available and it will be difficult to break through that and with the scourge respawning they may not be able to secure a decap on this node 
You know, that's another Freudian slip, Mighty Teapot. I know how much you love the Ventari revs, but there just are none in this game. Oh, sorry. Condi revs, sorry. Blah. Dude. Freudian slip. I think you're a Mender sympathist. I'm afraid so. I'm going to have to confess. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan. You know, I, I like watching people's pain and suffering, uh, which is, I suppose, a little bit ironic considering the healing power. But, indeed, the Condi are able to hold off there with the Scourge quite nicely. Now, the red team, they are going to push this. They're really going to go for it. I think they do actually win on a two cap. So if it does continue like this, they are going to win anyway, uh, I think. But, well, let's see how it works out. It's just going to be a 5v5. It's the, a 5v5 the, smork yeah. fest. You take Ooh. it away. And Emdrix really having a bad time. They're getting exploded. Look at that transfuso! The entire red team dropped down and the res is free from the Scourge. Love to see that from Chavra. Almost like some heal necromancer action there from playing some raids. And red team, I, I think they actually quite wisely pull away from this. I, I think one of I think they recognize that it will be very easy for them to throw the game by overcommitting to that fight, and they're gonna respond to that. Although they actually need to deal with this elementalist, because actually Channel of Fame is gonna get this decap in for free. Oh slow. Light uh, lack of attention there, uh, probably from Step Bro, uh, Step Bro God X there, not denying this decap uh, from the Weaver, and that is going to be a bit of an oh oh, 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 oh. yeah, that kind of worked out kind of horribly there for the red team. To be frank, they do actually manage to get the kill onto Emdrix there uh, a little bit, but oh, 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 I, 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 I don't really like this. Wishing, yeah. wishing she was Ventari right now. Uh, yeah, I do not. I do not like. What happened there for Red? They kind of completely fumbled their rotation and may have lost the game off that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even if they start coming back, nuding some nodes, there's still 2 minutes, 20 seconds left on the clock. They need more than newts. They need triple collect caps now more than ever before. And I just don't think that's going to happen, A, given the meta, and B, given the current map state. Yeah. It's going to be they can, the they can certainly try. They have one right now in the form of Mansion, but they're just going to have to play hyper aggro and fight on both nodes. And I believe this, if blue team wins, that would be 1 1, right? Yep, I would take it to the third game, which is one of the few that's actually happened uh, during this tournament there. Like, the team's busy demolishing each other, although the games have actually been very, very close in general. So, it's looking pretty likely. 1 minute 40 on the clock. So, even with a decap, I think it's very difficult uh, for Red Team to actually win this game. There's just not enough time left over. They'd have to fully wipe right now, grab the windmill, and get mid if they wanted to win. And, mm, yeah, that's... and then they need a mathematician to tell them. Yeah, if that's enough. I need to break out the motor overlay, and that can tell us and can give us the answer there if they're going to be able to win that. Kind of defuses the hype, I suppose, but uh, that would give us the right answer. But yeah, this is pretty much game over. Like mid is still pretty solid here. The guardian there uh, from Emdrix holding pretty firm with Chabra into free neutrons for, and the minion monster necromancer on the red team. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's going to go to a one-one. Almost certainly, unless maybe like the trebuchet has like the mysterious ability to cap a node somehow, they can maybe go for that. But mm, unlikely. Maybe maybe next uh, next big patch. Yep, that is pretty much about it. Not much else to say regarding this game. Just gonna keep the hype up, and you know what? It's good to see these teams so close together, particularly after the first match. I think you know the first match was, I think, perhaps a little bit anticlimactic uh, for a lower bracket final. I would say, when you have a game uh, of that nature end with more or less 500 to zero. This one a lot closer, actually. Like just a few key mistakes on both sides, to be frank. Actually, like both teams kind of throwing, counter throwing back and forth, and those are the best kind of games you want to see. You want to see that in your tournament. You want to you want to see the teams basically choking the entire time. It's good stuff. All right, there you go. Channel of the Fame is going to get cleaved out. I think Poison will deny the Signet there from Emdrix, but it doesn't really matter because there's only five seconds left, so nothing matters at this stage. Only the next game matters, and it's come, going to come down to it. Best of one on the third map. The blue team wins, and some weird particle sure effects appear. I don't know who pointed it out in the beginning, but like who called it out, like uh, that the blue team was basically like BMing last game, and I think it definitely was a good assumption here. Yeah. And they definitely showed up um, maybe because of like misrotations from your team but obviously like team map was kind of good for them or for both teams actually they can't really say that one team was hard favored listen but... I called it it was the channel points dude someone's breaking in the dough right now yeah 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 they're just trying to they're trying to manipulate the games then and we go on forest will be the grand finale i think we're probably just going to see more or less the same compositions except it is going to be the thief again here and this is definitely a map where thief can get some value uh, you have a lot of freedom to roam around the map quite effectively here 
uh, in this particular map, and that could work out pretty well for them. That we're going to see basically the same thing, though. Although, then again, we they might go for the double necromancer, right? Like we've seen them go for that, but no, the Weaver on his redemption arc, channel the flame, living up to the name this time. Still on the Burn Weaver building. With Unstable Eagle, Alfie, Chabra, and of course Emdrix will be loading in fairly soon. And wow, I mean, it's a best of one. Whoever wins here is going to be moving on uh, to the Grand Finals to face Yeah Whatever. Now, Nos, looking at these two teams, uh, Yeah Whatever, obviously very, very strong indeed. Like, which team do you think uh, would have a, like a, a, the best chance? Like, do you think it's about even, or does one team like maybe have a slightly better advantage, a better, uh, a better play style perhaps, uh, into the team of Yeah Whatever awaiting in the upper bracket? I think the biggest difference we're going to see this game is a comfort factor from the red team, because I've noticed they've played Thief significantly more than they have whatever other comp they're playing with, which I believe was Minion Master. And I don't think we really saw that do much and help them last game. Whereas I think with Thief, they've just been playing with that a lot more, and so they'll be a lot more comfortable rotating around it. And this isn't the best Thief map, but it's definitely far from the worst. Okay, let's see how it goes. They're going to be getting ready very, very soon. You can see the compositions have finally loaded in from both teams. They're just preparing. Of course, there's a lot riding on this. They aren't going to want. They aren't going to want to press that uh, "we're ready to go" button uh, lightly. Or oh, having said that, there we go. Actually, never mind. <laughs> teams always out here to grieve me, man. They're always here to grieve me. But yeah, everything is exactly as it was previously. Prot Hollow, Condition Revenant, and Thief. Core Guardian for the red team with the Scourge. And of course, the same thing, more or less, but with a Weaver instead of a Thief on the blue team and a Renegade too. So, NG Thief crossing All it. All right. Here we go. The uh, As you said, one of the first few best of threes we've actually seen to completion. Both of these teams really want to get that chance to go all the way up to the uh, back to the upper brackets and fight, yeah, whatever. Hopefully this won't be another timer game, but we'll see what happens. Forest Niflel for the final. Red team already going to be able to take that mine node, so going to be starting off ahead a little bit, get those points on the board. And it is going to be Aluda Ryan actually plushing this uh, back on the Thief. And, you know, I actually, I'm really glad to see that. I'm glad that uh, he's going back to the Thief. I think he definitely had a lot more impact. Um, you know, he has more potential to have impact. Obviously, it does mean as well. We might see things go a little bit, move a little bit faster, potentially more kills if there's any pluses coming out. And obviously, if he's going to be going for that double Necro comp there so it is nice to see at the moment mine being held down pretty hard and of course it's going to be on the other side of the map and just being stalemated out with that uh, prod hollow and the weaver as ryan makes his way over to mid looking for a plus again looking for a kill will be hard to find it even on this thief but might be possible does look like he might start moving his way over towards far not going to be far behind those alfie but he will potentially get the uh at least the head start here wait actually a ton of damage on the weaver already i don't think he should be able to get a kill we should be able to bunker this. Dry dude as well, gonna be pretty low. Alfie might actually be able to find the return kill. Step Rogan actually already extremely low. The Renegade burst too much, and that will be the kill picked up onto the Hollow Smith. Oh, but a really good rotation from Cranach to save it lands. Wow, the core guardian saving the day yet again. Yeah, I think uh, this is something that you see a lot with Weavers, actually. Like, it's very easy to get 1v2'd by a Weaver, and when Step Rogodex saw the Thief coming in, he played super, super aggressively, and Channel of Flame just counter-pressured insanely hard, actually, and just took, and Step Rogodex ended up taking a huge amount of damage there, which made it very easy for the Renegade to come in and actually finish that kill. So it was a very nice play there by the Weaver. Unstable Eagle, very, very low on mid, trying to get out there. The Thief on the hunt, but free Neutrons already down so there with the Glen Hill. We'll be able to get that stomp out there. Cracks uh, having to go over there to help the get the signal there on the NG, not able to actually do the same thing here on the middle node. Unstable Eagle, though, very, very low. However, Emdrix is available, ready to go, ready to get some healing here onto the Revenant, and is able to completely restain that very, very nicely. So, very back and forth game so far there. No nodes captured right now for either team. The fight on mid here is actually going to be a little bit scary here for red. Like, the Thief is not going to be able to peel for the Guardian very well. And there's going to be a lot of damage on this Guardian. Uh, the th you know, the Renegade and the Conley Rev is going to be very scary. I think we need to see some kind of, like, either, you know, a lot of kiting or some rotation here to help out this red Guardian. Because otherwise, there's no way he's going to be able to survive this. In fact, he may end up going down here. Stealth is good from the Thief, but it's not good enough. Mid falls to the blue team. And they can even bleed out Cranox fairly effectively. There's no potential for a Blood Res as the Scourges are busy just kind of painting each other's nails over here. Not really doing anything uh just covering each other in sand that's about it 
Uh, yeah, and blue team getting themselves a nice foothold there. And I think in a lot of these games, like having the mid node is going to be very advantageous. Like a lot of these games that we've seen a lot of neutrality on the mid node or the mid node being held by one team for an exceedingly long amount of time. And that's certainly a good sign there for blue team to be able to get that. Uh, and honestly, maybe, it, maybe the whole thing about the BM was correct because uh, the cold blooded killers Looking very, very strong right now. Channel the Flame, unbelievably. Actually, it's very low in corners. It does have Lightning Flash to be able to maybe attempt to disengage that. Is able to get out there. 1k health, but the range damage is maybe good enough. And there is the kill. Can the Renegade attempt some kind of revive here? No, I very much doubt that. So the side node here may end up falling. Yeah, Kranach's going to go for the Stomp. Of course, there is a Vapor Bomb, but no. Just going to accelerate the respawn there by getting out of there. Yeah, Kranach's stomping that out maybe wasn't necessary. Was maybe worried about the Guardian there of Emdrix coming in there to Signet. But now they would not have made it here in time anyway. In fact, might get here just in time for, for Alfie there. I suppose. Uh, and yes, there we go. Yeah, another good rotation from a core guardian with a signet, and this will just continue to stall this fight out, especially because it's on Blue's, you know, uh, respawn. So, Channel of Flame will be coming right back into that. Unfortunately, the value they got from that kill, basically zero because of uh, Emdrick's rotation. Renegades, or rather the Revenants, just basically hanging out around middle node. No chance of a decap there. We will see Aluda. Ryan going for the plus now on to the core Necro over at Far. He will get the kill. This shouldn't be a res. And that will be a node confirmed for Red Team, but now about five minutes, four and a half into the game. Still about 50 points to 60 points here on the board for each team, a node apiece. And I think what we want to see from Red Team here is I really would like to see them just kind of avoid mid for a little bit. Push, push in afar. We see, we see the thief doing it. Although he is going to be a little bit behind uh, Aludra, or excuse me, behind Alfie. So again, it's going to be the renegade potentially out rotating here. But I think that they need to either they need to commit to one of these one of these two nodes. It's, there's just not enough damage spread across here to play three nodes. Fights don't end quickly enough. Side fights don't end quickly enough. One v ones, two v twos, etc. You need there really needs to be I think more committal from these teams. Otherwise, it'll just end up being one node apiece. We do see them getting a decap on a mid as they start pushing more players in. Dry dude getting some value, holding that outnumbered fight at hand. She does lose the node for it, but it's going to be potentially kill on Emdrix and potentially cap on the middle node. If they can get that, that is valuable. And they do get the downstate on the Emdrix now, so it is just going to be the core, excuse me, the core renegade, uh, the the uh, the Condi Herald here on the middle node, alone against two players, potentially three. Sequoia leaving, though, and this might be a little bit early. Yeah, I, th I think they really want to push for that second node. Uh, as you say, Roy, they need to get at least two of these locked down. He is going to come back and then try and get some pressure onto Unstable Eagle. Like, this might just be to, like, free up the Guardian as well. We may see Cranox just rotate out here too. Like, this is something that you've got to be really careful with your support. Like, this is, like, a, an easy mistake to make is having your support locked. But never mind that, actually. They're going to just go for the straight kill there. It's a 1v3. If they could get mid, that would be absolutely fantastic. Weaver taking this opportunity of downtime to actually go for a beast is going to get it pretty much for free. That's a pretty nice little capture there. However, Blue Team is now fully respawned. So so, uh, red team need to actually conclude the business. Unsimple Eagle finally dies. It took a very long time to get that done. And mid it will fall to step, uh, step bro god X. Finds that capture. Yeah, and but this, there, is, we'll to move. this is a very good spot for red team to be in. They basically trade a beast for the map. And I think now what they their game plan should be to hold double notes. If the Weaver just camps far, that's fine. Aludra, Ryan can just, you know, get value elsewhere on the map, potentially look for a plus somewhere. And if he does leave that node, then the Thief should be able to just go and get a free decap. At this point, though, I really think playing around two nodes is something that a lot of teams just seem to not be doing as much. And I think, obviously, you know, it's, it's understandable. You want to get map pressure all around the board. But right now, when you split yourselves up that much, there's just no way that you're going to see kills happen and fights end quickly enough. Emdrix is trapped. Emdrix... A bit trapped, stuck oh. on terrain there, able to there, break no, out. Good. But took yeah. a lot of well, damage. Renewed in one second. Yeah. Chabra going for the wait. res. Use res. Really nice knock on it, though. Yeah, they are going to be able to find the kill onto Emdrix. At this point, Blue Team really needs a regroup. They've lost a fight on the far side of the map. They have two players basically hanging around their home node. This is, again, a very good position for Red Team to be in. And, and I mean, this is this is what I said. They, they played around having two nodes. Dry Dude put some pressure onto Far. He got, he pulled an extra player. They got some kills at mid. He went back into the side of this map. They got another kill onto the middle node. Finding some kills here now as well towards roads in between mid and home. And I mean, this is this is how I think, you know, you need to play against these comps when, when it's just bunkers involved everywhere. Yeah, and another kill secured there by Red. In fact, Charbra not looking too healthy, easy. Kind of running away from the support guard as well. The support guard doesn't come around the corner, but might not be able to make it in time to actually save this Scourge. The Scourge about to fall here, I think. The Guardian may be able to make it, but no, actually, Endrix goes towards middle. Will not be able to support this uh, Scourge or get any kind of revival there. Uh, this is spiraling out of control a little bit here. Red team are going to be able to match this decap here as well. They should be able to deny Channel the Flame. Uh, and Endrix in there. Cranox is in position for that. The Thief just finishing off that kill there. And 
and blue, they need to fix this now. They have not got time for this. Like, these games are already quite slow, and changing their direction is extremely difficult and takes a long amount of time. We need to see some serious moves here from the blue team. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves eliminated from this tournament very, very quickly. 50-point lead with a very solid two-cap right now from the American Skrulls. Pro hollow or mid, and I think that uh, I think they kind of, in a way, took your advice. You telepathically communicated with them there, Roy, because they aren't. They're just saying, you know what? If we can decap far, great. Otherwise, let's just kill stuff and hold two nodes. And the thief is going to do that, and and that is what you, in a way, like thief can provide this like very passive value to your game, right? Because there's always the threat of the decap, the necromancer of Charbra, the scourge, a vital team fight component for the blue team is not feeling comfortable to actually leave the henge. It's kind of bouncing back and forth, very very hesitant, and that means it's basically a five v four on the map. And I oh, know I'm not really you know numbers, Roy. That that sounds pretty good in favor of the five there for the red team. Yeah, I mean, again, you're you're just you're locking down this double node, and it's very difficult right now in you know the current meta to get decaps. Uh, you know, unless in when you have you know three, four players in a node, fights do not end for a very long time unless you really full commit to it, or you know you start bringing more damage your DPS players in. And this thief, look at this, they're they're going to be able to contest these two nodes probably for a significant amount of time. The thief's going to go get a decap, maybe even full cap, and, and the map is just lost. And Emdrix is actually dying in an outnumbered map right now. Not acceptable. Alfie potentially going to go down as well. This is mostly just due to Dry Dude holding a 1v2 at, at mid. I should say, shouldn't really say holding. He does die. So <laughs> technically, they're, they're trading one node for the other. This isn't really a terrible decision. I think it does kind of make it a bit harder for them to hold that double cap, going for side instead of mid and one node. And it does also mean it's a little bit more rotational dependent on the Thief. But... They do end up getting the decap on far into the full cap. Middle hasn't been capped, and they're able to contest it. So, you know, as long as they can hold this, it is a better map state for them. The problem is, though, Krennic's now locked into this 1v1, and we really need to see someone replace him. We're going to see Dry Dude going in too far, so he's going to be able to replace the Thief. Thief should be able to come plus mid now, unless they decide to just go for that kill there with Dry Dude. But Krennic's now does have to be careful, because he will be 1v2 on this, and that means the rest of his team doesn't have that support. Yeah, and I, I think he could just leave to us and like almost concede the node like, because it, there's, a, there's like a high risk of, of dying here. Like I guess the Scourge is here with the Konya actually, so it's a pretty tanky 2v2, so maybe he actually can go for that there. But yeah, with a Thief crossing over and both Guardians away from their teams, I, I mean, yeah, Red Team is just going to have a really good timer as well. Like the Thief going mid here, I'm actually not, I don't think that's really that good. Oh, yeah, he's going to think better of it and move elsewhere there. Yeah, the blue the blue gun like bounce. Oh, it's GG being quarter actually, the Weaver is not moving. So, I mean, that might be just the end of that. The blue gun can bouncing on Unsable Legal going down. Alfie AFKs. I think that may be the call. I don't believe they're not going to play for it. Oh, that's a little bit unfortunate there, but that is going to be the end of that. Uh, I believe Charbra is just valiantly holding on on middle. The Beast now being secured by the Necromancer there as well. Like the BM on the Temple of the Sun Storm. Uh, you know, well, it turns out it wasn't BM and the American Squirrels are going to be able to pull this one off in this finale of the lower bracket. And they're going to be going all the way back up to the top to face, yeah, whatever, who I believe, I believe, yeah, whatever, were, was that? Yeah, that was the team who put them here in the first place with a 2-0. So let's see if they can actually recover that. Although, they're taking a look at actually yesterday's bracket though, Roy, of course, uh, Gold3 Plus did the same thing to the Unexpected Challengers, sending them to the lower bracket, but then the Unexpected Challengers actually reversed it in the Grand Finals. Let's see if we're going to see a repeat of that, or if... Yeah, well, Tevat will continue their straight-up dominance of this tournament there. Come finishing on a triple cap there. Very well played there to both teams, the Cold-Blooded Killers and the American Scrolls. But, look, Roy, we're getting to cross-region already. Like, what's going on with that? Like, they kind of, we kind of spoiled it here. Already cross-region, EU versus NA finals on NA. Well, I mean, some NA, anyway. Some EU. Yeah, <laughs> technically, technically. It is, it is a little bit reminiscent of that. Um... But yeah, it's, you know, it's good stuff. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I will be honest. I actually, I was, I was thinking we were going to see a finals with, I mean, yeah, whatever. I, you know, I'm, I'm not really surprised we see these guys here in the, uh, in the finals. Uh, but I really thought maybe Science Fair was going to pull something out a little bit more surprising. You know, again, a lot of really strong players that were trying something a little bit new ended up not working for them, unfortunately. Uh, not to say this American Squirrels team isn't, you know, a strong, strong team or anything. Doesn't have a lot of strong players and, and just, you know, plays well. Obviously they do. They made it here, so, you know, not not too many surprises. Maybe not exactly, uh, but, yeah, I, I, I think it was, uh, you know, a strong showing from American Squirrels. They're going to need a couple of minutes of a break, which, of course, is fine. They just had a very long 
three matches there. Uh, and you know, and then we'll be going up against yeah, whatever as you as you said, they're, they're the team that sent them here into the lower bracket in the first place. But that's it. We're we're at our grand finals, just about uh, yes. four and a half hours in. I actually, uh, oh. I actually do have a little bit of a, a question, a query for you. We're, so right now, just let the um, uh, you know the viewers know we're doing map picks and bands off stream or on stream, but you can't see it because it's off stream. So off stream. Uh, so basically, what's going to happen is. Uh, the so what we do is it's a best of three. So for best of three is we have a ban, a ban, a ban, a pick, a pick, a ban, a ban, and then there's one map left. So first map that was banned by yeah whatever their top seed, so they get first one. Uh, they banned Kylo. Squirrels okay. banned Temple, and then the first pick by uh, the yeah whatever team was Coliseum. The Squirrels have now picked Faux Fire. So our first two maps are Coliseum and Faux Fire. Obviously best of three we might not get to the third map, but we've got two more bans left uh Addy, in your opinion floody so that means we have skyhammer we have capricorn and i believe uh oh well, actually skyhammer now banned okay i was gonna say i was gonna say what maps do you think are gonna be banned but now there's what do we have we have capricorn and forest i think yes capricorn and forest you, you have any you, okay you think one's gonna get banned over the other mm, that's what would i ban in this situation Wait, who can ban for the last one? Is it uh, the Squirrels? Yeah. Okay. I would ban... Capricorn. Because, like, Capricorn oh, is such a did. big map. Where what the thief difference, thief difference can definitely make a big... Uh, like, can decide the game. So having a smaller map can definitely be better for the team with the worst Thief. Which we saw in the um, previous games that I played. That there was, like, a kind of uh, obvious Thief difference. Ooh. But maybe they can make it work now. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe Let's see it's if they can. Better than. Uh, Devil. Yeah. I don't know. If they can manage to. If they can actually manage to uh, just force a lot more team fights, they could. You know, they, they're more than capable of playing with the double necromancer there and just dropping the thief. Uh, or they can try and shut down the Deadeye a little bit better. Of course, like the, you know, the DP thief, they like, can just chase that around and try and get rid of it there as well. It like, could be a vulnerability there. But they're certainly going to have to change things up because they're going to have to invert this 2 0 situation if they want to actually get this. So we're just going over to the map pick uh, very, very soon, I believe. I, I actually really like this. This is very interesting. And I, I think this really shows kind of the strengths of each team because, yeah, whatever, they pick a map where they they have a lot more freedom to rotate and really abuse their thief, right? As Floody said. And then Legacy, the second pick uh, from the Squirrels, you know, was, you know, it's Legacy. It's a very team fight heavy map. It's a map that, you know, if you can snowball the map and, and you know, obviously you can still get out rotated, but it's a lot easier, I think, to kind of predict rotations and counter them. Um, so maybe that shuts down a little bit of value that they get from that thief. Although there's obviously a very competent thief on the American Squirrels as well. See what happens. And then finally, Forest, obviously, neither team picked or banned it. It was just the map that was left. It's a very even map overall, though. So it is it is kind of an interesting setup of maps we have. We have one very rotational heavy, one pretty team fight snowball-y, and then one sort of even map. And I, I kind of like to see that. Uh, we'll have to see if that kind of plays to one team's strength over the other or not. Uh, but at the end of the day... Do um, you have any thoughts about which team you think has the upper hand here, Floody? I mean, we've seen both of them play. We obviously have seen, yeah, whatever, beat American Squirrels already in a 2-0. Although, you know, some of those games were relatively close. But do you think one of them has a uh, upper hand over the other or not? Mm, I'm kind of torn apart. Um, I would say the red team definitely has the upper hand. Just from, like, player experience, I would say. And, like, from the last set that we've seen, um, they definitely uh, looked more solid. But we see a quite risky, I mean not risky pick, but like interesting pick like Xenius on uh, Mini Monster Necro, which he didn't play before, I believe. So I guess we gotta see. I mean the maps are pretty neutral for like both teams. It could be anyone's map, or like anyone's series. Yeah. It's, it is difficult. I mean, again, I would be inclined to agree that red team here, yeah, whatever. Probably going to be a little bit favored. I, they the, the games were definitely close. I, I, I suppose that is the nature of the meta. Like, the, the meta did sort of snow... The games did snowball a little bit. They were fairly close in the early stages of the game, but then got a bit out of control. Um, so we'll have to see if blue team has just thought about those games and fixed the mistakes and really had a lot of warm-up, a lot of practice in the lower bracket to come out here swinging, come out here really, really strong here. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see how this one is going to go. It's going to be the double Necromancer versus the only, the, the single pathetic one Necromancer of the blue team. Let's see if the green class is going to make the difference here. For all these teams, they're pretty much ready to go by the looks of this. 
And I expect some good matches here, actually. I will be disappointed if it's another 2-0. Like, I'm done with these 2 zeros, right? Can we get can we get some 1-1s one in here, guys? We had some great 1-1s. One 1-1 one one in the lower bracket. Now, let's get a 1-1 one one here, at least. Let's get some tension. Let's get a little bit of excitement for the grand finals. Hopefully, the teams are going to be able to go there. And yes, of course, guys, vote in the prediction, okay? Get your points. And actually, it is uh, not as one-sided as I, you know, a lot of people would maybe maybe expect, actually, considering the 2-0 score from the uh, the upper bracket there. It is about 66 to 34% in favor of yeah, whatever, according to the Twitch chat right now. Pretty interesting stuff there. However, 40 people think that yeah, whatever is going to win, whereas only 13 believe that the American scores will win. So, it is, uh, you know, the amount of people are very favored, in the direction of, yeah, whatever. So, the team's just preparing to ready up here. The player's just jumping around, practicing the jumping puzzles. Ready to activate, and here we go. The game has now started. The final compositions for, yeah, whatever, will be the Core Guardian there. We have the Scourge. We have young Jaden there on the Thief. Xenius on the Minion Lord Necromancer. Is in here on the Condi Herald. Going up against Step Bro Godex, the Prot Hollow Smith. Cranox. On the support core guardian, so go ahead. Here, all the for, way. For the record, from EU. by the way, that's that's not Zenius. It's Hannibal. It's oh, again, never they're mind. Just, they're really, yeah, they're really, they're really throwing us. Uh, throwing us here there, for a bit but... of a meme. There, I like it. You know, that's good stuff. <laughs> it's good but stuff. Zenius is on a different team, so that yeah. would be kind of, uh, yeah. Hey, it would be uh, impressive. Yes, yeah, so here we go. The cross coming out here from yeah, whatever Zin. The actual Zen, as well as Jaden, coming into Sequoia. Chronic's gonna answer that, so it's actually gonna be the core guardian rotating out of the mid fight. It'll be just the Necromancers there. The Scourge uh, left there to 1v1 Ulrun, aka Notorious Moobs. Eludra, Orion, going to be making rotation as well, going for the plus to outnumber Zin here. We do see Jaden still around, though, and it is going to be Jaden not on the rifle data that we're actually used to seeing him on, or the Condi, uh, the Core Necro, excuse me, Thief, but he's actually going to be playing Daredevil here, same as uh, Ryan. So we'll have to see if the mirror matchup favors one over the other. Indeed, both teams trying to go at it there. Maybe a little bit more pressure onto Zin uh, than onto Sokoa here as well. Actually, the Thief's getting some good damage and they're getting some big, big damage. Meanwhile, the team fight is going to start erupting on mid. Like The Hollow kind of gave up dealing with the minion mods. Like, okay, let's go somewhere else and try something. Maybe getting into this team fight. So, one node already ticking away right now for, yeah, whatever. Having a pretty good time over there. Like, the mid fight probably very, very stale, though. I think there's not really a lot to be done here. Not enough damage from either side. However, the 2v2, there is not that. Cannot, the same cannot be said for that as we see the the red team come out significantly ahead there, securing that kill. They're actually looking for the second there as well. The thief of the blue team, desperately trying to disengage. Should be able to get the stealth there and escape. However, that's going to be a fantastic start in this game here for, yeah, whatever. Securing the second node already. Now, blue nearly actually have mid. Um, they were able to, they had to slightly pull away there. Like, the red team had to disengage that a little bit. But Notorious Moves will be reinforced by his team in a timely manner. In fact, no, 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 actually, they're just going to ignore it and run right past him and try and deal with the Hollow Smith one. Once again, who is dealing with the Minion Mansa Necromancer. Here, here they come. But both thieves arrive in the nick of time at the same time to try and keep up here with the, each other's yeah. rotations. Normally, I would say, you know, keeping this core guarding the support inside this this 1v1 against the Scourge is, is kind of a mistake because, you know, you want that core guarding the map to go for that, that Signet res, the support. But Red Team is doing a really nice job of just completely out-rotating any chance of Blue Team forcing a team fight, and so far it's working pretty well for them. They got the pressure on the side nodes, as you said. They've almost certainly confirmed two side nodes here for themselves. And, and as long as they can continue to just avoid that team fight and keep rotating that Scourge around the map as much as they are, Twitch TV Roy, a.k.a. Ma, coming in and out of that middle node, keeping Ulrun alive and healthy there in case he does get pressured, then so far it's working out pretty well. Unfortunately, though, they do lose the Lion node, so that is going to get decapped there. And Xenius is having a little bit of trouble at, at Dragon as well, getting plus now by Cranax into Dry Dude. So we'll have to see if uh, which team can really get their thieves in the right position. I think most of this game is going to come down to basically, you know, how much impact these thieves have, as we've been saying a lot, and obviously... Oh, if one, of, one over the other gets a little bit of a better chance on these buffs, we see now the Thief 1v1 happening around the bottom buff. Ryan a little bit behind now. Zin going to come in as well, and plus that, so that should be the confirmed bottom buff for them, yeah. But, you know, it's, I mean, I think, I think really we're not going to see too much happen on any node until the Thieves get there. I, I think that's really going to be kind of the, the shift between uh, a kill or, or not is when the Thieves get involved. Uh, very much so. Step Rogue X was able to actually get this node, but here comes the Thief and the Lich in perfect harmony. 
Dealing out some mass damage, getting that decap immediately. It's only nine points gained from that single node. And I think red team, they are rotating. They're doing a good job of actually just rotating around this. Like, as you say, like, they're dodging that team fight. And they're just making sure that even if they do end up getting decapped, right, they don't actually completely give the node over. Or they're very quick to respond something like this and deny any kind of point gain here for the blue team. Red team at 69. Nice points up in this game with 60 lead, of course. But... Blue really struggling to get any kind of value on the map here. Like, they aren't winning the mid fight there. Gonna just leave the Scourges to duel each other for a long time. And that could go on for the rest of the game. Like, like quite frankly, like this, they may never leave the mid node unless something else really, really weird happens on the side. It's gonna be a slow paced game. A kill here, a kill there. A lot of 1v1s, a lot of 2v2s, and all these signers trying to survive outnumbered. The minion Mansa was under a little bit of pressure. And actually, the Thief has a big opportunity. Actually, they might be able to find that kill. Can the Americans get they Yes, they absolutely can. They get the kill. Cranox comes in as well, actually. Uh, uh, that's interesting. Comes in there to just guarantee that Simmons is going to... My work here is done. Gets the stomp, okay, for his montage. And then he's going to... Oh, cancels it as well. Going to go for the bleed. And think about that. Bit of an unusual play there from the blue guardian. Just a, maybe a little bit worried that it was going to destabilize. But that is a pretty big move for the blue team. Like, the rest of the map is neutral. If the Condi Rev here uh, on the blue team can hold on here and not die in the outnumber, which will no longer be the case as we see the Thief here, then they're going to reset the 2v2. Now, the bad news is if they lose the 2v2 again then that's incredibly bad. However, if they win the 2v2 or stale the 2v2, they're in a pretty good spot here. Yeah, Zin's Glint Heal gonna be proc. Kranex coming in as well. I think at this point, blue team, they really, I think, should just try and, you know, they've got the pressure on the side nodes. It's basically the opposite of what we saw earlier when red team kind of were ahead of it. I mean, ignore mid or or just completely disengage here. They've already confirmed dragon. I mean, it's the same thing that they should, you know, they did on forest. And then I think ended up winning them the game. Although here you see Ryan going into downstate. Signet available for him though. And the hard res as well. Crown X actually was able to cancel that Signet. So the hard res was just enough to get it. But I mean, yeah, I, I think that you have to just really hard commit to two nodes if you want to be able to start moving ahead. Otherwise, you're going to get into this position where both teams end up with very low amount of points here. We're not even, you know, past 100 six minutes into the game because neither team is really fully committing to two nodes. So fights, again, they're just not ending. We've seen, I think, two kills in this entire game. And again, that was when one of the thieves got a little bit ahead of the other thief, got the plus, got the pressure earlier on, was able to kill one of those, you know, essentially side noters. But apart from that, because we haven't really seen any real full committal team fights, we haven't really seen a lot of, uh, you know, committal to two nodes, fights are not going to end, kills are not going to happen, and one node is going to be the only thing that continues yeah. to tick. We finally see Kranax going into downstate. A lot of damage on him, free neutrons on top of him as well, going to be going downstate. Just as I say, and several players converging at once ends up with a couple of players going downstate. Kranax as well, just coming into that very low on cooldowns, but... This will give Red Team, finally, the cap onto middle node that they've been wanting for so long. As long as free neutrons get cleaved out, loot. Ryan is there to contest it, though. I don't know. They might not be able to cap it. This oh, might itchy. still go un, uh, uncapped. Yeah, for a little... I, I, th I, I honestly think that if blue... I think... Oh, I'd be tempted to say they should actually use the Thief just to contest this in a way. Like, I think giving up mid in this game is is hell, right? You're in hell if you give up mid. And they are going to... Uh, of course, the Thief does need to come and help the Hollow, but maybe the Hollow could have... I think the Hollow could have maybe got away with the outnumber there. Uh, and yeah, now mid is capped. Oh, that is very unfortunate. Now, actually, it is being left open there, but Notorious Moobs will be able to rotate in there and deal with that, at least for the situation. Oh, no, he's going to go past it. So maybe the Necro could actually get a sneaky decap in there. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Ulrun is going to have good visibility and the Necromancer will be able to deny any kind of shenanigans. Step Wait, just give the rest? Oh, they actually got the rest there! Step X is now back in play, but the blue team did lose the dragon for that. They were forced away from the node very significantly. So they now they need to actually do exactly what red team just did to them. They've got to find a kill or kills here. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen here. Oh, the, does the thief actually slides by? And we'll be able to lock the Guardian here a little bit, but already we see the thief come in from the red team. Look for a kill. And actually, actually, a lot of the is actually in a little bit of trouble right now. Needs to stealth up to try and disengage. He's going to be able to do that, but has zero cooldowns. This thief might die here, actually, and does die there. Can Kranox uh, signet that? No Maybe. signet. Available. Oh, he already used no. it on Dry Dude, so he's not going to have it. Thief does port into the hard res, though. Xenius and Jaden, just not a lot of cleave. I mm. think he should not be able to get this RF going to be burned. Yeah, that'll be the kill confirmed. Thief and Kranox actually using a lot of cooldowns. If they stay on top of him, he will have the peel there from the Scourge. He should be fine. Xenius is a little bit afraid of leaving the node here, so he's not going to chase that very hard. Well, he's a Necro. He can't really chase it very hard. But, I mean, again, you know, we don't... We, we see both of these teams, you know, they have they have the Revenants duking it out at far. You know, they've got this 2v2 with now the Core Guardian and, well, the Prod Hall, the Core Guardian, the Scourge at home. They've obviously got some people just, you know, holding, stalemating 
middle node, but definitely killing that Thief was huge because it completely freed up Jaden to go for the plus on a far. They got the kill. This will turn into a, a double cap for them now. Alu Ryan just coming back in is going to get, again, counter rotated on by Jaden after getting that kill. So I think killing, killing the Thief here is probably the most impactful thing they could have done apart from maybe full wiping the enemy team. Exactly. It just completely gives the other thief to move around uncontested. Like what you were seeing previously is that the red thief would push in and try and plus uh, Sequoia there. But the thing is, it will be immediately matched by the blue thief as well, which will kind of negate it. And it meant nothing really would happen. It would be like a fairly slow and elongated 2v2. But this time it ends very, very quickly without any kind of peel from the friendly thief and securing that double node. And once again, I, 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 we see the bottom buff go to, to red. And I think that's very significant in, uh, in, a, in a matchup like this where the fights are quite long and there's not a lot of damage there. Getting that additional 20% damage and potentially also some free stomps is very, very impactful in this game. And red team just getting further and further ahead here. And they're going to have an easy easier time taking these fights there as well like this is very bad for the american squirrels they're in a huge amount of trouble here. they're gonna have to get some miracle one ones the hollow there's no way he can kill that scourge may i think may, can he get to maybe he can like decap middle something like maybe the thief can but the thief will be immediately tracked and in fact getting almost cleaved out in this team fight so not much can really be done here is he gonna survive good barrier there good barrier there from free neutrons keeping the thief at least a little bit sustained and the stealth is gonna be able to wriggle him out of there but if they can maybe decap this, they can start to come back. But, so, Roy, it's, we're at 10 minutes into this game, and there's 235 points. Yeah, it's, I mean, at this point, I mean, the main reason that you see points so low and, and it end up getting closer to timer games and stuff is because it takes so long for these teams to really start committing to two nodes. Again, every single game, it's the same. They, they, they start out in the game by, now we see Ryan getting taken out. Kranix doesn't have the signal available. Chill really slowing down that, that uh, cooldown for it, so... He's not going to be able to go for the Signet. Sequoia now will almost certainly die, and Kronik's not even going to stick around to try and help that Revenant out. Eh, maybe cutting back into it. But when you start out going for those those triple node plays, and you aren't, you know, you're, 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 just, you're not really trying to commit to two nodes because you want to try and stop the enemy team from getting as many points as you possibly can, it slows down the progress because of how long it takes, again, for things to happen. And we saw, you know, as soon as two people died on the map, and then they were able to, oh, a couple minutes later, convert a kill onto the Thief, they immediately started just holding two nodes, no problem. They're about 200 points over their team, the enemy team now. And it's because of how slow it takes for that to actually happen. When it does happen, though, it's very one-sided because what is the enemy team going to do? I mean, you know, they can try to all in for a team fight, but it might not end. And if it does end, it might end up, you know, lo you just losing. And it's so difficult to try and decap two or three nodes with the current uh, meta classes. So you really lock yourself into a position where it's very difficult to come back once the enemy team gets pretty far ahead, more so than I think we've seen in other metas. All run going to be taking out this team fight though, and that should be a kill confirmed. Decap on the middle as well, but they will trade a node for a node. Dragon now going to be confirmed for red team as well as the lion did get decap for a minute, but I mean, still, that's side notes for, for red team. They maybe lose a player, but it's not going to be converted into anything, and, and Dry Dude dies on the side as well. Yeah, there's not really much going on here uh, for the blue team, unfortunately. Like, they don't even actually get the mid node just yet anyway. They may be able to take down the Minimancer, just barely no. Shroud is there, and with the Guardian going back there from all around, I think he might actually be able to make it there in time, in time to actually support this. Should be able to sword port over the wall, maybe in time to get the job done here, but... I, I don't see much hope here for the American Squirrels. Like, should be a Signet here as well. Yep, there we go, there is the Signet, and mid finally capped, but... Three minutes left? Three... Wait. Actually, is the game unwinnable? Like, three minutes? Uh, that's 270 points with the triple cap. Uh, no, it's actually unwinnable. Um, they can't win. It's it's game over, Roy. Like, it's... Uh, the, even if uh, even if red team AFKs, they actually still win. I hate well, to defuse you know, the hype, but... I mean... Oh, it's... I mean... It has to be hype for you to defuse... Yeah, I, I think... I think <laughs> absolutely it is potentially unwinnable, as you say. But... Neither, uh, you know, we're not going to just end it to unless they call G's. Two minutes left. Uh, you know, I, I would really like to see the squirrels play, you know, what they ba you know what they basically did on Forest into uh, Cold-Blooded Killers because they, they just, they started focusing on the two nodes and they were able to win that game. Uh, and it, I think that it, it really, it worked out for them, you know, because they were able to, to get a solid lead from holding those two nodes down. And I mean, that's essentially what, yeah, whatever did here. And I mean, I know, I you know, I, I think, you know, obviously I understand why teams try to go for the, that, that triple node. 
Uh, and, you know, maybe you could say, oh, if they if they just go for an all-out brawl team fight, you know, the red team is just going to out-rotate them. Well, okay, fine. If they out-rotate you, then you take a node and then you push into the other one. Uh, things things don't die quickly enough. Once you held, once you actually own the nodes, you can hold on to them for an extremely long amount of time with one or two players, really. So it's it just doesn't really, I think, make sense to, to start playing, you know, for three nodes at the start. And we saw, yeah, whatever. They got into a position where they were held, holding down two nodes, and they held them down, and, and they didn't really leave them until they needed to counter-rotate. Yeah, I and mean, there was that moment early on where blue team was even like crawling into they they have that lock and as you say like th this this is the thing about the current meta right now you lock your opponent like that's the win condition like you just lock them out of the game by uh, yeah. just like not really giving up any ground whatsoever and blue team they were in that spot for a brief moment right they had a very rough start and then got that kill got the node and held on for a good amount of time but in the end like losing that I mean it, it's almost a bit reminiscent of the the old meta right where you know you had the team fight centered around the firebrand and the scourge when the firebrand and the scourge died it was like oh well. That's not good. And it's exactly the same thing that happened here. Cranox and Free Neutrons both died on mid there. Like, just too much damage from that Condor of obliterating both of them. That was pretty much where the game ended in that moment. Uh, and, you know, they never were able to recover from that. And there it is, 500. So it's not a timer game. Uh, <laughs> but there it is. No, not even close. Yep. Yeah, just, uh, you know, 30 seconds. Ah. <laughs> what is that? But... Obviously, Coliseum was yeah, whatever's pick. We are now going to be going to Legacy, which is the American Squirrels pick. So we'll have to see if they can do something a little bit better here on this map. Uh, oh, that's not, that's not useful. And uh, I mean, you know, we'll see if they can bring it to a third map. Forest, uh, again, I don't think that map necessarily favors one team over the other, but you know, Squirrels, they just, they have to play differently. They have to do something differently. They cannot allow themselves to just get locked out. I mean, you, you said it perfectly. You get locked out of the game. As soon as the enemy team gets two nodes and they just decide to sit on them and hold them, what are you going to do? If you don't try and force a team fight and fully wipe them, and, and I mean, you can try that, but then you probably just get out rotated. What are you going to do? You know, so I, I really think taking the initiative and, and trying to just go for those two nodes, you know, makes more sense and try, instead of trying to, to stop, you know, one team from 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 going and, and getting that third node. But obviously, legacy is not necessarily it might it might be a little bit easier said than done. I mean, if you, you know, try and contest middle node or try and try and push two nodes and go to middle node, it's very easy to contest it. So maybe giving up that third node for essentially free is not the best play. We'll see what happens. You know, hopefully they try something different. It looks like basically same comps, and so it'll essentially be mirror comps, except for obviously the Minion Mancer Core Necro instead of the Hollow Smith of Dry Dude. But we are on the uh, potentially last game of this tournament. If yeah, whatever red team wins this, then that's it for the American Squirrels, and uh, they'll be ending with second place. But they have a chance to come back. We saw them bring it to a a best of three, the full best of three last set. Maybe they'll do it again. The uh, the the best of three. And here we go. They're going to try. I mean, yeah. th this map can be a proper grind fest too, actually. Like, it, it, this is a map that could potentially go the timer, I think. And I think it's even easier to get locked out. I, I'm pretty, look, I'm just going to call it now, Roy. If any team cap, if any team caps mid, they win. You know, like, it, it's over, right? You know, as soon as mid goes one way, it will be very hard to unget mid, uh, I think, for that particular team. There's loads of room to move around. They're very hard to force players off this. And of course, a small linear map. So I think the core guy. I think a really big thing is going to be core guard in rotations. Wait, wait, why? They, oh my god, they actually, are they not going to give mid, right? Okay, no, the thief is actually going to be able there to start forcing notorious moves to actually rotate over here into this team fight as the red team tries to push in there, intercepted by Cranox, of course, and free neutron. So it will be just starting out here with some good old three v threes. The thief going to immediately leave to match the mid thief. Actually, in fact, in fact, it is going to be a full cap in fact there for the American scroll. So thief one v one, of course, will probably get neutralized just because of the stealth spam. Uh, in this situation there. Meanwhile, we have the Holosmith here from Step Brother. It's trying to hold the 1v2. Not able to do that for very long, though. The damage coming out from Zin is actually too much. It might be the kill. Oh, it is the kill. Maybe Step Bro got it's pushing his luck a little bit in the 1v2. Ends up falling. However, mid is still captured. So the points will actually be exactly even when that kill comes through. I wonder if there's like any problem now. There's no way they could get like a very ch Is he going to sell for us here? Oh, I, oh, no, <laughs> no. I, I don't think so. I just... I'd be pretty surprised if we see that. But, I mean, look, you know, you see the situation, right? Middle node gets this capped very early on because red team basically leaves it up. Wait, red team winning a two versus three right now. Jaden mm. coming into the last second, but the Necro's already in down. So Xenius and Ulrun, Jimmy Hannibal and Ulrun, actually winning two versus three? They get the kill onto the Scourge? I, 
Uh, I'm not I, sure I, uh, really what happened there. That should not have happened, but nonetheless, it did. And red team in a very commanding position now. I mean, obviously, the point's going to be very similar here, but it's not going to take very much for them now to get into a double cap situation. We can see uh, Sequoia now dies because the thief chasing him off node. Side nodes confirmed for red team. And this is exactly what I mean. They, they more or less ignored mid. They set up the... Now, obviously, this, the, the Necro dying two versus three, not something that should have happened, right? That, that's that's just an un, unknown factor. That's that's not something that should have ever happened. But they set themselves up into a position where they were in a you know very good position to get those two nodes early. They more or less completely ignored mid, just having their thief mess around there a little bit. But he started rotating in as soon as you know he, he realized that there was not really reason to be there. And they, they were ahead of the game at that point. Blue team got mid, but that was all they got. They lost kills in the map. They lost the node earlier. They lost the pressure they had on the waterfall because of it. And I think that's just how you have to play in this meta. And now, at this point, blue team, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. They're triple capped out of the map. And this, I think, is not going to be going to timer unless blue team starts really changing up yeah, how they play. I, the red team will be barreling towards 500 points. I think that was just a catastrophic opener, to be frank, Roy. Uh, the, yeah. You know, the Guardian got trapped on middle, separated from the Scourge. Like, the full team fight of the, of yeah, whatever, was they were to push into the waterfall fairly effectively. I, I the, yeah, that was just a complete disaster um, from uh, from the from the from what, the blue team. What they're there. doing here is good though. I like this. They send four players home. They're now outnumbering. They get the kill on to Olrun. There's going to be the uh, transfuse res. Hopefully they can knock that. They do get the knock off of it, so it's not going to be continued to res. We do see the rotation from Zin, but it's going to be a little bit late. So they've now started shutting down this team fight. If they can find a follow up kill onto Ma now, the the scourge is already at half health, and they should be con they should be continuing to go for it then they will get value. Now, they do outnumber the side of the map, and they do give up a kill onto the Thief, although I think that was just a 1v1 from Jaden. But if they can if they can swing this team fight and, and then turn that into swinging the map, they're, they're now going to get Waterfall. They really need to find a follow-up kill onto Ma, though, because Olrun will be back in time to help save him if they don't get this kill quickly enough. Do, there's the down state. Zin not going to be able to do anything. Now they have to turn this into a cap. They have to turn this into a snowball if they want to come back into it. But this is how you set it up, and that's exactly what they did. They, 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 they outnumbered their home node, now we see Dry Dude contesting this, but it's going to be plus here by Sequoias to confirm the node for them. And hopefully we can see them do it again. Yeah, it was a nice little, it was a good thing there, because they basically just like fully regrouped and re-pushed. That's exactly what you need to do in a game like this. It's very difficult uh, to make a comeback, but unless you actually do a full regroup, it's just not going to happen into a meta like this right off the bat. So blue team definitely played smart there. And actually the Scourge getting a lot of value here, getting that free decap, and we'll probably be able to hold on as well. There's some good kiting spot here potentially uh, here as well. However, that doesn't mean the Scourge is out of the team fight. But then again, so is the enemy Scourge and the Thief. So blue, they've got an opportunity here, actually, in my opinion, right? If they can actually get the kill onto the minions, so say, do is there a signal from uh, is there a signal? There actually is. Oh, but it's not needed because they get the straight up hand res there as well. Guardian corners are looking good here as well for the red team, and the window of opportunity is maybe starting to close for the blue team to actually find additional kills, particularly with the thief. Oh, that is a backbreaker of a decat right there. Step bro, God X, not able to track that quite as effectively as he would have wanted to. Now he's going to be left in this very slow one v one versus a conjurer. Yeah, they do give up a kill onto the Necro in mid, and now Olrun is going to potentially have to RF and give up the no. They do do that, the stealth as well from Jaden. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's probably not, you know, it doesn't end up being valuable because they need to get points at this point. There's about a two or 100 and 150, 160 point difference or so between these two teams. And playing for triple node at this point, again, as we've said, is very slow. You don't gain a lot of points from doing it in this meta, unless, of course, you, you are triple capped from the start. So, you know, they have a lot of catching up to do. They have time to do it. Nine and a half minutes or so. Definitely a lot of time. Definitely enough time. But they're going to have to start double capping at some point if they want to really, you know, completely shut red team out, I think. Uh, they could hold one known decaps, you know, for the rest of the game. It's possible. But I just, I, I think that's going to be too much of a risk here. And it might end up not being enough. Dry dude can't die here as well. Like, he mustn't die. Yeah. Otherwise, this is a disaster. And he's, he's pushing for the which is correct. I think he kind of has to. But where's the thief? Where's the blue thief? He needs to be here now. Cranox gets it, but it's too late. Can they get to the node in time? No. Oh. Yeah, that is unfortunate. They're very, very unfortunate indeed um, for the blue team. Not able to actually deny that cap. Of course, the Scourge is kind of just twiddling their thumbs. They're actually not even playing the game. They know there is absolutely no point. Honestly, I think I mean, they've got to at least try, try and fear each other off the node, maybe, or something like that. That might be something. Because like, hey, this is an important game. Uh, but red team now just maintaining their lead, keeping it exactly equal thanks to the waterfall cap there. And blue team not even bothering. And this is where the mid node is kind of backfiring. They're kind of trapped here. Like, where do they rotate? Do they push over to where the Scourge 
Surge already is for the red team? Or do they try and take out the Waterfall there and get that decapped? I mean, they're going to have to do something and they've got to do something quickly because they've already 8 minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Uh, I mean, you know, outside of Lord, like, they're going to struggle with the point. It looks like the play is going to be pushing into the Scourge fight here. Uh, with everyone here and trying to get something done here as quick as they can. They're going to leave the Rev 1v2 on mid. And I think, no, the Thieves are actually just dueling each other, going at it here in the roads, kind of distracting each other to get each other quite nice and pressured and following each other's movements. So this team fight is where it's going to come down to. If Blue can win this, they can get back in. But if they lose, then it is pretty much good night for the American Squirrels. Yeah. Uh, you know, team fight now brewing up around Corey is the first, uh, well, maybe second real team fight we're going to see this game potentially if it ends up actually going anywhere. But it looks like Dry Dude's starting to leave. Ryan maybe thinking the same thing. Cranox are starting to get a little bit under pressure. And with Dry Dude leaving, this is an outnumbered fight now for Red Team. They're not going to give up the node completely, but they have to be careful they don't lose anyone. Cranox starting to get very pressured there. Jaden putting a lot of pressure on him. Ryan going to try and prevent that and peel for his guardian, but it's going to be a little bit too late. There is potential for a res, but the stop coming out from Xenius is going to be good. Hannibal, that is, and they're going to be able to shut down that Guardian. Oh, that Corey as well. Very Tolman. impactful. And now Thermite, the last survivor of this Quarry Massacre, should be able to get forced off. And again, Red Team put themselves in a position where they now can double cap. I'd be very surprised if we see them put that much effort into getting mid, although, oh, really good decap from Ryan on the Waterfall. That's going to be pretty big value, but that probably does now open them up. So you're getting the full decap onto mid, potentially kill onto, onto Dry Dude as well, and they can just continue to stagger this blue team and uh, and stagger this map. Ground yeah. is back, though, so... I actually really, I really like the idea of what Blue Team was trying to do there. They were trying to swap Dry Dude out for the Rev into the team fight, but it didn't happen fast enough. It left Cranox too exposed without any more peel from the team, and he ended up dying. Then the Rev dies as well, then everyone dies, and they lose the game horribly. So it, it, it's... It was a good idea, but it just it, they just didn't have enough time to actually pull it off. They didn't have the right players at the right place uh, at the right time, and they got punished for it. And I think that's kind of like, in, in a way, that's the story of this game. Like, I feel like this has been, it, like, a surprisingly rotational game. Like, Red Team has simply had their players where they need to be and essentially out-rotated uh, the American Squirrels here, like, fairly convincingly in the first game and the second game as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, they, they definitely have, I think, just, just pretty much out-rotated. I mean, Zinn... Now just going to be essentially AFKing around Waterfall waiting for a little bit until he starts rotating out. You know, they're going to confirm those nodes. We see the exact same thing with Maw on Quarry. They're not full committing to middle node. They are contesting it because they have a kill, and obviously they can contest for a while, even with three players, even out outnumbered, especially on a big node like middle uh, on Legacy. So, I mean, they're fine. And at this point, it's yeah, it's absolutely looking like it's going to be another 2-0 for, yeah, whatever, into American Squirrels. Uh, you know... I think American Squirrels, you know, it's a team that we've been talking about a little bit today, obviously, as, you know, they are here in the second place, potentially, for this tournament. You know, they, there's some really good stuff, like Floody was saying, he likes to see teams like this come up that, you know, weren't necessarily, you know, one of the stronger, more well-known teams before, but they obviously still have a lot of work to do against a team that just clearly has a better game plan and is better at executing it. They need to be able to adapt mid-game and really say, okay... You know, the first two minutes, we lost this node, or we lost this fight because of this. We can't do that again. We have to change something up. We have to be able to go through the rest of this game, uh, you know, changing it up. And, and, and they haven't done that at all. They've basically just been playing India out whatever's hands. Not only this game, but the last game as well the entire time. And this game is about to end. Two non-technically timer games that we see here in a row. I think it just speaks to, to how much, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, whatever is just, is just really sticking to their game plan and playing it well here. Yeah, that's uh, that's about it, Roy. And you know, I completely echo that sentiment. And I would certainly hope that some of these teams stick around. And I know some of them will just form up for the tournament, right? Almost like a semi-pug thing and play for a while. But I would love to see these teams develop, right? You know, like you know, today's squirrels are tomorrow's worms. You know, like that's how it is. Uh, you know, like all these teams True. come up. Uh, from different locations and different starting points and certainly a very strong performance here by yeah whatever almost certainly going to end up being the champions of the na open bracket they'll be moving on to uh meet their fate in the invitational to try and get a little bit more or was a little bit more uh glory later on in the pvp scene here but you know i don't, i hope it isn't the end of the road for the american squirrels they're it's certainly a very strong roster they gave us some fantastic games here uh today uh, in the tournament, and they have definitely uh, distinguished themselves. Eh? You know, people will now know the names of the American squirrels. But yep, this is going to be GG. Well played, Blue. Do manage to actually get themselves a kill onto SC Xenius. 
AKA Hannibal, okay? Like, you know, it's, I, you know, you can see how that would be a sensible nickname for a character, you know, like for Hannibal, right? It's Xenia's Hannibal. You can kind of see how that makes the, it's the same name there. But there it is. That is the end, and that is the end of the tournament. Uh, yeah, perhaps, perhaps not quite what we were looking for, but it is the end we have, and what an end it is. Congratulations there to, yeah, whatever, and very well played to all of the teams that participated, of course. Absolutely. Did you say that is it? Uh, that is the the GG well played. That is uh, we don't need to go to our third map, our third game there for this final best of three, and uh, we've concluded the open bracket, which means we have nothing left but the top of both regions. Next weekend will be the uh, the regional games played on Saturday. We've got a bit of a haul there. Looking forward to those games. Uh, we've got the EU regionals to find the top two from EU, and then the NA regionals to find the top two from NA. Sunday, the day after. So a week from today will then culminate in the cross-region matches that I think we're all so very excited to see. USA versus French Worms, maybe. The long-awaited match. Oh, but I, yes, think that, yeah, that that, is, I think uh, that is a very, very much long-awaited match uh, between those two teams. I mean, I think players are always excited to see the clash between the EU and NA. There's a, you know, there's a there's a bit of trash talk, you know, like here and there, like uh, on that uh, on that level. You know, there's a little bit of banter here between the two regions. And I think I love to see that. It's always good to have a bit of competition, have a little bit of fun uh, with players messing around with each other there as well, which is good to see. But we're going to see what those words are going to be backed up by next weekend. So right off the bat there, guys, we're going to be starting at around 4 p.m. UTC. Wait, actually, ooh, do, do, no, actually, no, we're good. My clocks don't change until the week after next week. Aha, yes. Wow. Right, I think. Okay. Or is it? Or is I it a know. bit more? You, it might you be more than that. Tell me. I've got no idea. I don't keep track of this. <laughs> okay, so we're good. Like, you know, the clocks are not going to be trolling us whatsoever. I don't think so. Someone in the chat will point it out after the delay comes through there. But it will be at 4 p.m. UTC next weekend. I believe we're going to do that on both days as well. Obviously, we're going to handle a lot of the EU stuff as much as we can first to make sure it's not too early uh, for people in different areas of the world. But... Okay, what a tournament that was. I think we had some really, really good games there. It's always interesting to uh, see all the different styles of different teams that play in different regions there as well. But also, I think the NA, the NA lads gave us a proper show. Everyone's like, oh, NA, it's dead. NA, Omega, little right. But those are some fun games, guys. And I love to see NA showing up. And they, in my opinion, they absolutely did, right? NA is a region that doesn't really get as much of a spotlight as it should, in my opinion, in the PvP scene. But in the other scenes as well, actually, in, in, the, in the more hardcore areas of the game, you don't really get that new episode. Oh, oh, wow. Are we just, you know, getting a getting a bit of a look there? Okay, I like I it. I was just stretching. Yeah, a bit of, bit of stretch. I mean, look, it's important. You've got to, you know, keep yourself loosened up, you know, maybe nice, uh, nice and limbered <laughs> up, guys. It is very, very good indeed. But, okay, uh, yeah. Love to see all the NA teams. Hopefully, you guys all had a lot of fun. Big shout out to those teams there. And of course, I do want you know it would be remiss of us not to mention this. Of course, right once again, we had some wonderful administrators helping us out with adminning the lower bracket and making sure that everything ran smoothly. Had a bit of a bumpy road at the start today with a bit of you know a few people getting lost. Need some more directions there. But overall, another very well, very well executed tournament, if I do say so myself. Uh, I think we have done a fantastic job here. You know, going to. Pat myself on the back there. There we go. Uh, and yeah. we will continue to execute things of this nature. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I yeah, just to echo that, I mean, obviously, big shout out to our admins again. Thank you very much for all of your assistance yesterday and today. Shout out to the teams for mostly making it easy enough on us and getting these matches done with relative ease, I would say. Uh, you know, obviously, thank you to the teams also for just playing, participating. Love to see it. Hope to see you guys more in the future. Um... But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I hope hope you guys enjoyed the tournament. Again, I'm really looking forward to next week, next weekend, get those cross-region matches, get the invitationals. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see how those go. Obviously, shout out as well to Floody and the Nos for showing up and, and casting. I enjoyed that very much. It was nice to listen, kind of just sit back and listen to Nos to give us his uh, his input there for a little bit. That was, uh, that was very good. The wisdom and, uh, of yeah. the Dark Lord. Oh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And we might even get to see him play uh, play next week. But yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you have any final words for the stream? Because other no. than that, I think that is just going to be about yeah. it, I believe. Yeah. Again, thanks to everyone who came out, watched the stream, participated in the tournament, helped us along the way. We'll see you all next weekend. 
I can't wait for a, a really great 15 hour stream. It's going to be awesome. Oh, I'm it's going to be epic. It. It's going to be uh, epic. Yeah. You guys have a good night. Keep on as always. Yep. Thank you. Take care. See you guys later. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for watching. Be sure to buy a Surfshark VPN, follow, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Oh, and actually, one more thing before we go, guys. The prize pool for this is actually still running. So if you won right now, send me your gold, and you might actually win oh. more gold than you send in. Because that yeah, that may be how it works. I'm not guaranteeing that, by the way, but you could try. So send I, gold yeah. over, okay? Um, yeah, to my team at 2093. I, okay, I and failed math basically every year of my life, but I don't quite think that works out to be true yeah it will you know look i'm i'm trying to bait people there roy do you mind buddy oh, okay I'm, yes no i mean teapot's right yeah 100 percent. i never failed math and he's 100 percent right i can confirm that yeah thank you that is exactly what we love to hear so yes and also you can go check out the match arena then if you're interested in stuff about the tournament do x mesh mark h c l in the chat guys oh yeah actually like for the record we i think i we have around sixty thousand to eighty thousand gold i'm actually not sure how much we have but it's in that kind of ballpark. So lots of good stuff there. We have 2,000 US dollars for the cash prize pool and 36,000 nice. gems with some other assorted thingamies provided by ArenaNet. So we'll be hyping that up during this week going into the next weekend, guys. We hope to see you all there. So without that, with that, that all now out of the way, guys, get those Twitch commands going there to get all the links and get involved in the Discord, get involved in everything. And that will be it, guys. Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you all tomorrow, of course, because I'll be back. You can't get rid of me that easily. A wonderful evening, my friends. Thanks for watching. Say hi to the next stream for me. And of course, guys, enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night, my friends. See you later.